And we're back. Welcome back to World's Toughest Mudder 2023. Live. Our second stream, we have to break them up into eight hour chunks because of YouTube. Four hours of the single greatest events in OCR. Thanks for finding us here on the second uh, second stream. Like like Fran was saying, YouTube restricts us to about eight hours per live, so we have to break them up into pieces. I'll give the official uh, reason. Sure. Um, YouTube, you can you can actually. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, you can actually live stream for you know 24 hours plus. I believe you can just keep on going. Okay. But after 12 hours is what I've found that you can't um, download it. So say something happens and we have to, like last year, one of the streams got uh, blocked completely, like worldwide because of the uh, national anthem, I believe, sure. Jimmy Anthem, which might happen again today. I don't know. So to put it back up, I had to download it, get rid of, cut that piece out, and then reload it. Oh, sure. So we keep it under 12 hours. So basically YouTube. Yep. Grr. 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 But anyway, thanks for finding us over here for stream number two. If you've been watching with us the first eight hours, jump in on the comments. Let us know that you found us, and we'll give you a shout-out there. So we're watching Everest here on the main screen. A little bit of uh, funky monkey, or not funky monkey, but spunky monkey we're oh, calling it this year. Seeing Katie Knight go through. Who just went through? Uh, Katie Knight. Katie so. Knight just passed through in fourth place. Hey, let's look, let's look at the late. Let's start. You know what? Yeah, let's start out with the leaderboards here. Callie Schweikart back into first place. She was in first when we started the race. She yep. kind of dropped into second for, for a bit, lap or two. She's back in first. Stephanie Bland was in first. She and, and Chris Glossby has been steadily climbing up. Yep. And Katie Knight in fourth right now. She was, I feel like she was in second or third. Those, those top four women have They've all kind been of been sharing. Around. Yeah. And yeah. again, it's very early. It's only eight. I'd say it's very early. It's eight o'clock at night. The race is one third over. But uh, I don't know if I told you this before, Fran. Mm -hmm. The race doesn't start till midnight. So the the top four women, especially, have done well for when the race does begin to uh, to get going. So we're eight hours in. In two hours' time, we'll be at ten hours in. At five hours in, we made some pretty radical predictions. It's three I'm hours ago. Looking forward to seeing how we're going to be doing it. Um, uh, at 10 hours in. So the rule of thumb is that whatever mileage you want to hit at the end of the 24 hours, you need to have 50% of that, half of that, by 10 p.m. the night before. So if you want 100 miles at noon on day two, you need 50 miles at 10 p.m. on day one. And we're at 8 o'clock. We're two hours from that, which is one, you know, more It's more than one lap, but less than two laps for the, at these guys' these guys paces right now, right? So look, 7.45, so that was 20 minutes ago. Callie was at mile 40. That's right. So, so we need two Callie. hours to go until 10 p.m. Oh, Callie, I need you to get in here. I need you she... to finish that 45th lap. Let's have a look at what her lap times have been. Now, Chris Ruglowski in second place right now, she ran 100 miles last year. Her last lap was 116, Callie, and her lap before that was 115. So she, it's... she's running a one hour ah! 50. So she did in, in an hour. She she could be back here because twenty minutes ago she crossed the line. She'd be done at say nine p.m. Nine p.m. forty five. She'd have forty five miles. Uh yeah. Ten uh, fifteen. She could no, have fifty. I'd say in an hour's time. Nine oh five. Nine oh five. She'd have. Nine oh five. She could have forty five. So we're saying ten twenty. She might have fifty. Yeah. She's got so so she got an extra hour and a half to finish that last lap. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Really? Okay. And if and if Callie, it's, so it's it's achievable for Callie. Also for Chris, still. Also for Stephanie. Chris and, had one slower lap. Uh, lap seven was one thirteen. Oh yeah. What are, oh, I'm sorry. One thirteen. Uh, her lap prior to that, lap six was one o four. Then what? One thirteen and then one o three. So her laps are currently faster than Callie's. Significantly faster than Callie. So, so Chris must be losing time in the pit, then. I don't know. Seven. Okay. Oh, she's been catching up, though. I think her laps have been more consistent. 
shall we say, of that. How about Stephanie Bland's lap time? Which what is what's one what's one lap time for Stephanie Bland? Uh, last lap for Stephanie was one twenty seven. One twenty seven. Oh, that's gonna be harder. Yeah, prior to that, one oh eight. And Kate, uh, what about Katie Knight? Katie Knight. Uh, 121, uh, 120. previous lap 110, previous 106. I think we'll be lucky to get to 100 mile of women. So right now, Callie and Chris, and again, we're early. I'm not, not saying anything. I'm just saying it's possible. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Callie and Chris, it's absolutely possible. <clears throat> it Stephanie is. and Katie, a little more difficult for those two. I think Chris will have a number in her head that's bigger than last year. Well, and I, I have a lot of Chris faith in Before Chris. the race started. Yeah. And I asked Chris, that sometimes elites are like this. They don't like to... Kind put of, the mockers on it, as my dad would say. They don't like what? To put the mockers on it. Put the mockers on it. Just like, yeah, that's, that's true. Fran's dad says that a lot. <laughs> Some people don't like to say it because they don't want to jinx themselves. They don't want to say it because they don't want to tip their hand to their competition. Um, some people don't want to say stuff because they don't want... <laughs> Once you say it, it's out there, yeah. it lives, and it's a real thing. You have to do it. So, but she did not want to. So we asked her, like, "Hey, what, you know, you ran 100 last year. What's your goal for this year, Chris Rudabowski?" She's like, "I got a big number in mind," but she was being very cagey. And I was like, yeah. "Does that number have three digits?" She said, "Yes, it does." I said, "Is the last number a zero?" She said, "No, it is not." So I don't think she was talking about 115. No. So, 105 is going to be a reach. But, we covered this before. I'm not betting against Chris Roglaski. I'm not. I believe in Chris. I'm a Christian. Chris. <laughs> uh, and Callie Schweikart, she's right. She's literally beating Chris right now. She so is. Chris has a shot. Callie 100% has a shot. The, the advantage is Chris. Chris has done it before. Now, Callie's run the race before. Yeah, but she's but not she's got never, that many miles. She's never run 100. She's never, she's never won like Chris has. What's the difference between Callie last year and Callie this year, then? You know, well, one is she has a year of experience. She's run the race. She has the experience under her belt. Callie's also done, done well in ultra events in Spartan this year. She has experience winning races. Uh -huh. Even if they're not 24 hour races, they're six hour, eight hour races. Um, and just. I, it's hard to quantify, but, but the eye test, like, she looks stronger this year. She looks, yeah. when she's running, we see her almost every lap. We see her running through here, and she looks, she looks fit. She looks strong. She looks, now, Chris, when Chris runs through, she has this kind of trot to her. Yeah. Where it's almost like an unbothered trot. Like, she just doesn't, she just doesn't really, I, don't, I can't think of a way to say this without sounding rude. She just looks like she doesn't care. But I think she just, she's just so chill unbothered. about it. Yeah, unbothered is a better way. She's like, yep. Bah, 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 I'm not saying that other athletes are bothered, but no, you're right. Chris does have a very, I've been here before and I'm going to do it again kind of uh, confidence. Well, that's the thing with Chris. You just know she's, she, I kind of just have faith in her because she knows what she's doing and she's got that grit to do it. You know who else has that same unbothered date? Tyler Vehrman. What's that? Tyler Vehrman. Ryan Atkins. Ryan Atkins. He, <laughs> He cares. He, he wants to win. He's an absolute competitor. He is we a show it. pony. But he he is unbothered when he runs. Like yeah. Like like I'm sure there's there's like a duck you know like calm on the top but paddling like crazy underneath the surface. I'm sure there's stuff. But he is unbothered when he runs. Yeah. I was one in 2018. I ran a bunch of toughest mutters with him with him at the same time as him, and tough tough mutters on a five mile loop course also. He passed me so many times, I started to recognize the sound of his gait. Right. So Ryan, Ryan Atkins is one of the greatest ever, one of the greatest endurance athletes, always your athletes ever. And Chris Roglowski has a lot of shares some of characteristics. You recognize athletes by the way they run. And sometimes it can be difficult when a pitch is poor. You're just like, I don't know who this is. And then even when the pitch is poor, you're like, oh, I know who that is by the way they run. I have a slow-mo of Ryan crossing the fifth line the lap. And it's, it's like a little, like, I, I won't know about it, so, but it's just like the casual balance. Look at that technique on that, that's nice. So for our women, I guess to summarize, two of them have a good shot at 100, and two of them have an outside shot at 100. I think that's fair. 
I'm sticking with that. I say two women have a shot at 100, and two women have a shot at 90 and above. I'd say four women have a good shot at 90 and above. Oh, four women have a very good shot at 90 and above. Two women have a good shot at 100. One woman has an incredibly good shot at over 100. Which can show the party that's happening just outside our booth right now. There is a World's Toughest Butter Champion dance party outside of our uh, broadcast booth right now. But we're not invited. They could Amelia stand in front Boone. of the finish line camera. Toughest Butter. But. Amelia Boone and DJ Fox are dancing with uh, Javier Escobar. Carlos. Uh, Carlos yeah. Piscatello kind of killed the party, it looks like. He always kills the party, though, doesn't he? Still seeing a lot of people out the course in shorts, uh, just in their bibs if they're guys. Really not kind of getting into the wetsuits yet. You know what? If I was running right now, I feel like I'd want to put a wetsuit on, but I don't know if it's cold enough. The way, here's the thing that's good about wetsuits. I'm getting feedback from 200 miles. Oh, Who obviously know more than The thing than that's we good do. about wetsuits is that it protects your body from getting dragged against ropes, getting knocked against the wall. I mean, but also what they have to take into account is you're saying, and I would say the same thing, if I was running right now. Right. Well, that's very, very true. And I don't care about my body. No, I but mean, we're also, I'm also very, very, very slow. Yeah. Yeah. Javier Escobar and DJ Fox tight something, you'd be okay. yeah. saying that they don't care so much about the damage to their body. That's a tomorrow problem. Like well, you said. I'm talking about how slow I move. Yeah. I need the installation to keep me warm because yeah. I go so slowly. We're not moving very fast back here, and we're getting cold, so... Uh, Slowly. Most, some are going very fast, a lot of athletes are going a lot slower, but we're seeing overwhelmingly most athletes yeah. wearing fewer clothes. You can hug people as well, you know, and that'll help you. Where's Carlo? Carlo is dancing. Oh, okay, so there's a dance party going on, and I was going to say, Carlo, are you getting footage of that? He was actually in the dance party. <laughs> Atmos. There he is. They've shown him a few times looking happy out there. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the world three time World Sounds Better champion, Amelia Boone, on the right. That is um, World Sounds Better community member, Cassie Hellyer, on the left. That is Carlo Piscatello in the middle, <laughs> creeping off a camera. Were you guys dancing in front of the camera on purpose? Oh, I mean, it was, a, it was a, you, you, you framed it perfectly. <laughs> So, we got you on there. Sorry, good. Good, good, good. Sorry, I missed the footage. Yeah, no, no, that was awesome. We know what's coming through. So my legs. Stop, stop, we need it, uh, Go to eight fifteen on YouTube, like the, on the stream. You'll find it tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> There's DJ Fox. There's a shot of our booth. There's us. Hi. Fran, looking at it. Oh, and they can finally see all the computers we have in front of us. It's good fun. That's amazing. How many miles of World Toughest Mudder is within 10 feet of here right now? So many. Amelia, you've run 300 and... Oh, no, 400. I've probably done 400. that many because I was injured for... 90, 90. You've run 90 twice. Or 90 no, and 85. 70, no, no, 75, 75, 90, 85... Fifty, whatever that is. Add that all up. That's four hundred and seventeen. You are so good at that. Um, TJ Fox, two, yeah, one hundred and five and one hundred. No, one hundred and five. One two ten. Javier, you got lifetime. Thirty-five. Thirty-five and sixty-five. That's hundred. One eighty. I couldn't even find my super. Three hundred and eighty lifetime miles. Carl, how many times you run fifty? One fifty. Yeah. 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 I went fifty, fifty, fifty-five. We got like I've run. Uh, I ran fifty once, and then with all my other years, I think I've run a total of seventy. Hey, have you ever podium? Oh, twenty eighteen team podium, third place. That's a true story. Have I ever told you about that? Yeah, no. I, I was. I didn't know that. I had no idea. I was barely beaten by Ryan Atkins' team by like thirty-five oh. miles. Barely, barely. That was 2018. That was the ice year in oh, uh, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And people were just like, first of all, only like 10 teams signed up. Yeah. And then two teams didn't show up. Right. And then two teams quit like after two laps. Right. And then two teams did more miles than us, but didn't do a lap after 8 a.m. <sighs> so we literally just didn't stop. Yeah. And by, by attrition in front of us, yeah. we got third place. We were like one drug test away from second place. <laughs> we did really good. 2018. That was our year. One drug test. 
I just, I just remember. I, 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 no, no, yeah, no, I, no, I, story, I, I don't get to talk about that before. enough. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah, I know. No, he's never retold the story. I've never, ever heard Carlo retell the same story. Ever. Ever. Probably because I don't listen to him. So, in our in our booth right now, we have DJ Fox, Amelia. And there's 10 miles at Hot Laps. Counting hot laps, there's definitely a thousand and ten miles <laughs> in here in the booth. I just tried to put the um. There we go. Oh, okay, you're not on the screen. Oh, he's Javier, you gotta jump in. No, 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 I'm not jumping in. I okay. Just want to pose for a picture. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, we're, not even on oh, we're pretending we're on. Um, oh, I don't. There you go. All right, now your microphone's on. Javier Escobar joining us in the booth. Um, you need to. We're come pretending. To the right. Oh, oh. He, he's just posing for social media. I'm just posing for a picture. That's all. So yeah. I, so I look important. It's a little too early to get silly. I don't know where I'm supposed to be looking. Where are we looking at? The camera's just anything. Oh, God, he's so fast. I'm getting concerned. I'm concerned. Well, Will obviously has not been taking any of the problems. No, obviously not. Can you imagine not everyone on the other side of us here? It's like you just realized the security was down at Jurassic Park. Yes, I I'm getting a lot of criticism from the World's Toughest Butter community on my photo posing here. That is. They say I look yeah, like I just noticed that the security system at Jurassic You know Jurassic what we need Park to do? Failed. We need to go and look at the challenges. Oh, absolutely. And that's where Jason is, I think. Um, do you Jason, want to go down are you there, doing the challenge? We, uh, are you down at the... Um... Is that Jason's camera there? It is Jason's camera. Jason, okay, should we come join you? Give us a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah a bit. Yeah. It's going to be a tough People are struggling already with that. Oh, wait. No, Jason, where are you right now? He's doing Legos. I don't know. No, that's, not, that's, that's, that's the penalty. penalty. At some point, we um. Oh yeah, he's there. Uh, that's the penalty for Everest. So the penalty for Everest is if you fail at Everest, you have to do a long run, and then at yeah. the end of that, you have to put your hands in ice water for thirty seconds, I believe. We do have someone here and who then, I think would be able to pass one of the challenges at Race HQ, yeah. which is the challenge. What am I doing? Eating hot sauce. <laughs> you mean the easiest thing in the world? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, there's the ice bucket. They have to stick their hands in there for thirty seconds before they construct the Legos at the Everest penalty. Sixty seconds? That's what I was told. Oh, sixty seconds. Exactly. The frozen hand Lego oh. penalty. So you see, they they have a little step by step direction there. They have to make a little man. It looks like, and those are. Those are Lego yeah. patterns I had to make when I was like 12 years old. I did that when I was 12. Well, they're running early. world's toughest mother. Be silly. Okay, those are not just basic. Those aren't just, I mean, that's actually, you're making something. That's a pretty What do impressive. they have to do at the Lego table? Um, build Lego. So it's the penalty for Everest. If you fail Everest, you got to run a bit. You got to stick your hands in ice water for, for the penalty about a quarter mile long. And then you get to an ice bucket. I showed it a second ago. You stick your hands in the ice bucket for 60 seconds. And then you build Legos. Oof. The, uh, the World's Toughest Butter Champs um, and that's the are not for a fan Everest. of the Lego penalty. I mean, it's a good one. Uh, Amelia Boone says it's okay. But it's a good her one. face doesn't miss, say that. A couple, a couple years ago, the penalty for Everest, if you failed Everest, is you had to run the mini mutter course. And, That's so cute. And it's it's adorable, but it's like a mile long. Yeah. I, like I've run around it many times with my child. It has a barbed wire crawl. They're timing them. They're timing them for a good, look at that, 50 seconds, 50, 60, yeah, 60 seconds it looks like. They've got to get their hands cold. And honestly, their hands are going to warm up pretty Although her hands look big. Look at that. Oh, shoot. Yeah. They do look very swollen, that could don't be, they? Maybe that's just from the lighting or something. But I, from I the think wet suit, maybe? she maybe. needs some, uh, some salt when she gets in. She does. I had a friend that ran, ran with Eric DeMessage. Every single time he ran World Stuff's Butter, his hands, he got the sausage fingers. Mm. It's not uncommon. Do you know what happened to me? And I didn't realize until afterwards. And apparently is a thing. I noticed that the... Yeah end of the marathon i my whole body was swollen so like i was looked at and this is a really bad thing 
I looked at pictures of me finishing a marathon. The first thing I thought was I look fat. And I was really disappointed in myself for thinking that because I was like, that's your first marathon, mate. But it was the first thought. And then I realized afterwards, I was like, hang on. And I compared a picture of me at the start and a picture of the finish of my face. And my face was really swollen. Like, I'll, I'll show you in a bit. I'll find them. But like, sure. Like, super common. Apparently, it's a thing. Yeah. Um, finish line photo of my first marathon. I looked lost. <laughs> I was literally looking around, started crying. I got really lost at mine. The, the medical looking at the fish line and they weren't sure if they should not because i was like crying and i was kind of staggering around they're like this is this guy okay he's a grown man but he looks like he needs help what was with the crying it was just emotional you know uh, i did my crying like at mile 25 i was just glad to be done i was it was it was tears of joy slash relief to be done there we go how about him so that was my face before okay and that was my face after Stupid, but swollen. Look at the eyes. I feel like we need to share these with the, uh, or not. Oh, it looks so ugly. So we're looking at a man in a there. Field. I'm trying to see what obstacle we're at. We were at Everest a minute ago. Uh huh. Jason's pointing. Yeah. Everest. Oh, oh, Jason's pointing to where the penalty, the penalty loop is. Starts there. Goes about a mile and a half. Or mile and quarter, rather, over there. And that's where the ice and um, Legos are. Shane says, this reminds me of 2021. Europe stuff is butter, except they had to walk. On Legos. On Legos. Did you walk on Legos was the penalty? Uh, for the penalty of electric shock therapy. Ouch. El uh, Europe stuff is butter. Hazards. Christian Brown Johnson crossing the finish line right now. CBJ. Let's have a look where Nikki Caramba is. Give a quick plug for our Patreon page. If you want to support live streams like this and uh, become a member of the OCR Report, we would love to have you join us at patreon.com slash the OCR Report. For less than $5 a month, you can support the sports you love. Do they get a sticker? You know what? Shoot me a message on Instagram. Become a Patreon member. Okay, so here's two ways to get a sticker. One, watch the entire 24-hour live stream. Two, become a Patreon member. Shoot me a message on Instagram at the OCR Report. Do you know what I made Tell for, me. the, for um, OCRWC? These little glitter patches. Look at that. And I really wanted to make one for here, but I had so little time between the events and traveling to the States. Sure. I think we should make that a pretty fancy Patreon yeah. reward you Do can't it. see that but it's a very it's a very glittery patch and is uh, <laughs> what's the rhinestone tier i don't know <laughs> dustin asked in the back. i made dustin a jacket covered in rhinestones oh boy covered in rhinestones uh it was pretty glitzy wasn't it it was more popular than me everything's more popular than me <laughs> People saw me not wearing a midnight So, per live results, Chris Rogowski reached swinging tips 21 seconds faster than Caroline, taking over first place. So, that is Chris sliding into first place. Like we kind of said, you know, we've been saying she started off slower, but she's just been making her way steadily. It'll be interesting to see what her next lap is like because she had a slow lap. Just a random slower lap, which maybe she, I don't know. And uh, then she's been really speedy after that. And we were going to check up Nikki. So Nikki was last seen, Nikki Caramba was last seen at uh, Spunky Monkey at 8.07. So it was 20 minutes ago, quite a way back though. Jenny so, Overstreet was seen at 8.21. So here we go. Time. Start to finish. We're going to watch a guy run up Everest. Oh, and he's doing it. He's soloing it. So that bar is like a foot and a half taller, foot and a half higher than the rest of Everest. But you don't have to reach over the lip to get to that bar on the far left there. Some people say it's easier than doing the lower version of it. Uh, Jason uh, sailed through both options yesterday, didn't he? Jason's taking us to the penalty entrance of... Everest, if you fail Everest, this is where you go. Oh. 
Let's have a quick check in on the men. We'll come back to the penalty here in a sec. James Burton. Seven his... men, nine, 45 miles. So James came third. through three minutes ago, as did Christian Brown Johnson. They're kind of quite close to each other. There's about an hour between first and seventh place right now. Mm. And again, we're looking at the penalty for Everest. Just have to tell if our cameraman is running or walking right now. <laughs> Hi, Jason. He's running. Thumbs up from Jason. Oh, they're watching Blair Witch. <laughs> <laughs> It feels later than it is. You know what? It got so dark so, so fast. fast. It does feel late. It's only 8.30 here locally in Texas. But it's as dark as it. It's not going to get darker. Like four, I mean, hopefully we'll see some more stars. Some more stars. I'd love to see some stars. I can't really see them from where we are in our... There's a lot of light going on around here. But I imagine when you're out running that course, if you're to be sneaky and switch off your headlamp for a second, you'd see some pretty yeah. amazing stars. I would recommend it because it's got some rules, but we still got uh, our camera up at, at Grappler there. I can't see a lot, but you see it's busy, it's constantly
All right, guys, we're back. Thank you for hanging around. There's a bit of power issue across the whole event. A lot of people lost a bit of power. All the technical guys are doing their technical things. Oh, oh, gone again. Gone again. Um, I think you're still live. Okay. Let me know if you can still hear me. Um, okay, so I will carry on talking. I don't have a picture, though. Um, I will pull up some results on my phone and have a look what's going on with them. So somebody mentioned, slight update, Chris is now over two minutes ahead of Cali as of lap nine melting point. Indeed, Chris went through melting point at 8.33. Cali went through melting point at 8.35. And let's have a quick look at the men. Michael, Scott. Lap 11 start at 8.35 was when he was last seen. So it was three minutes ago. So we missed that. Uh, Joshua Fiore last seen at lap 10, Spanky Monkey at 8.30. So a little bit behind. And Tyler Veerman, lap 10, melting point at 8.38. We can hear you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's good to know. So I'm not sure what's going on on screen, but um, you can hear us. So that's good. No idea what's happening here. A couple of... Um, power going out a few times this is our world's toughest motor also so 24 hours i mean it's a lot night. easier for us not so much for jason jason's doing us. both versions <laughs> yeah can't wait to see his miles at the end of the night Still yep well it's it's night ops that's why we're watching this uh -huh. hell yeah like, so the screen is dark do you remember when you see black bits out in night ops no oh. that was probably in, oh, in like 2012 2015, I think the last year they did that. There's a Black Ops Vids, where like, the person who got the most loose. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sprint Lab is for the one person who is the one fastest first lap. They used to off Tough World Summit's Mother used to have a bib for the man and the woman who ran the most laps during night ops. And I don't think there was a prize for it. It was just, no, it was just the black bragging bib. rights, the cool black bib. Cool bib because yeah. like not that many laps now. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They've got about twelve other replacement bibs for it now, but but no that bib is retired. You're that's a good call. Yes. Pulled that one out of the archive there. I hadn't thought about that in a while. You need, if you need some deep cuts from Tough Mudder knowledge, I'm your gal. <laughs> One of my favorite pictures of World Stuff's Mudder, I think it's from 2012, it's somebody holding up a piece of ice nice. from a water obstacle that they're in. in the, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Like, yeah. I tell people, and I, and I tell you if this is true or not, you had to break the ice yes. to jump into the obstacle. Yeah, 2011, we had to, you, there was a thing, an obstacle called Jesus Box, that you had to break through. Yeah. Because it was so that's a true story. I'm going to continue telling that story, even though I was not at World Toughest Mudder in 2011. I don't think yeah, I did. Kids these days have it easy. Yeah. <laughs> in my day. They're all crawling. We're watching. In my day, we had to break the ice to actually get into yeah. the water. We haven't had ice on top of the water in a, in a long time. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Awesome. Then Altimos just giving you guys. Then Altimos, um, great guy, by the way. Remote oh, correspondent for the OCR guy. report. Yeah. Austin Azar. <laughs> Overtaken oh. Tyler Veerman for third place, nearly a four-minute lead. So I got asked by somebody to look up Scott Sebastian and Molly Sebastian, but I'm seeing nothing for them. However, if you do want to check the results for yourself, um, go to uh, Instagram at the OCR Report. The link there is um, links on one of our stories, but also it's on the Tough Matter website. And it's probably easier at this point to Google it because we'll have so many stories up right now. So yeah, we had a few power issues there. Uh, we're back. We're back, back and rolling. Back, uh, Watching a little more funky, spunky monkey here. Smells like horse feed. What is it? 
so much history. Um, we had someone asking for the women's race results. Did we, able to, we have to cover those recently? Let's a quick look at the men's because we've seen uh, a bit Our of first 50 miler. Yeah, like Michael Schott is the first 50 miler of World Stuff is 2023. Wow. Swedish guy? Danish. Danish. 50 miles in 8 hours and 33 minutes. 50 miles in 8.33. And he's Danish. Joshua Fiore is probably. I would say in the next few minutes, we'll see. Well, let's have a look through. where he was last seen, huh? He, he finished 9 at 7.33. We see a spunky monkey last at 8.30. So hopefully we'll see him soon at Waterhorn. And the women? Callie Schweikart in first place with a four-minute lead on reigning champion Chris Roglowski. Callie's last lap, she finished at 7.45. It's 8.42 right now. Callie, what are Callie's laps looking like? Chris went through Melton Point two minutes ahead of Callie. So Chris, the so last out on we course. saw out on course, Chris was in lead. So officially, when we see who crosses the 45-mile mark first, we talked about this before. We'll step some You either get five miles credit oh, no or you miles. get zero. So we... Uh, not that it doesn't count, but right now, if the race ended right now, Kelly Schweikart's ahead for all intents and purposes. Oh. Stephanie Bland in third, also with 40 miles. We have six women. Hannah Carta is moving up the leaderboard. Look at that. She's in, Last time we saw her, I, I feel like she was in ninth or tenth. She is in sixth place with 40 miles at 8.35. Hannah finished fifth two years ago. She finished fourth last year. Um, she has the capacity to podium this year. Are they doing the leader bib? Somebody asked. Say one more time. Are they doing the leader bib? I believe so. They don't. They usually break those leader bibs out until the morning. Okay. So they'll give those leader bibs to I believe the top three men, top three women, nice. so that we all kind of know who we're watching for. Um, they don't ch change them. If you are in third and you get a leader bib and you get displaced, if you're in fourth, you still have that bib. They're okay. Not gonna, they're not going to take it away from you. And that's that's actually talking about cool bibs. That's a a bib to add to the uh, collection if you're an elite athlete out here. So you get to keep it. Good question, Rosalinda. Absolutely. I mean, I would. <laughs> I would too. Anyone in the Anyone for Jason? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so somebody asked uh, to see Scott and Molly Sebastian on the on the uh see what the results were but i'm not seeing either of those um rosie i'm sorry about that it looks like shane checked as well and also isn't seeing them you can have a look at the results yourself perhaps we're making a typo if you google world stuff is motto 2023 you'll get the results coming up sorry no i'm so sorry hey People forget they've got head torches on and they look you in the eye you're like, ah, blind! I get so dramatic. <laughs> Call them heads lamps here in the, in the colonies. It's a head torch. We call these polystyrene. My, my styrofoam cup full of tea, freshly brewed. Thanks Welcome to the, to uh, the, the English here. continent. Continu Filling you up with tea. But be careful not to knock it over when I switch cameras. Uh, there we go. Rosie Sebastian. I see a, a post from Scott while ago saying he's part of the Divas team. Is Molly as well? So uh, it's a team. So yeah, they're, they're not coming up as individual results. They're coming up as team results, which we're just having a bit of a... You can't really swap things. But when we can, we'll have a look at the team. Standing, we've not spoken about teams that much. My queen, Callie Schweikart, going to be taking home this dub. I don't know what that means. Well, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Show me that one. So, got to explain this to you. Thanks, because I'm old. Uh, my queen, Callie Schweikart. That's short for Caroline Schweikart. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, she says her queen uh -huh. because she's a big fan of Callie Schweikart. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
going to be taking home this dub. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What that means, dub is short for W. W is short for win. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right. So now, you might be asking, why'd they say dub when they could have said win? Like, what do you do with all that time you saved? And well, then no you'll time see saved because it's the same amount It's of the same syllables. But it's short for W, so it's actually half the syllable. So it's just, it's just really cool. Oh, no, absolutely. And you can tell how cool it is by the way I explained it. Well, I can tell how cool it is that you know. Uh, T is amazing. Yeah, it's my favorite. Hope there's a worthy cuppa. Broken Bubbles, I promise you, yes. I know you're from England. Because there's not an American born that's ever said the word cuppa. Cuppa. Cuppa cha. I hope so. We're introducing him to Earl Grey. My favorite. Earl Grey? Earl Grey. Captain Picard. Star Trek. Earl and that's, Grey. Hot. Earl Grey from the UK, not American Earl Grey. I, I bring it with me. Captain Picard was French. He had a, uh, a wine... We can talk Star Trek later. Let's okay. talk World Stuff Let's Butter talk for World now. Right now. There we go. We've got the camera on Everest still. Devilishly W tricky. commentators... W short for will there. Actually, no, win. But Hopefully it's win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Noel, is, Noel is having fun tonight with the comments. Noel Medina, funky Noel Medina on Instagram. I, no, I don't know him. your exact tag, but I follow you. We do. I've just been uh, I'm liking comments on his on another. There we go. Funky underscore called hi. Uh, oh, there's the She's here. She's there. She's everywhere. Hey, let's do a check-in with our, our YouTube viewers. How many of you guys are still here from our 24-hour challenge? Who's staying all 20, up all 24 hours with us? Let's have a quick look at the teams as well. We said we would do that, didn't we? Let's do it. Come on. I press the button. I'm actually Minnesotan, but I may go. have spent some time in the good old UK. Broken Defeat bubbles. Black. Have a cuppa on us. Diva Black still in first. Crasian Divas in second. Cristelli Fitness in third. Those three teams have clearly positioned themselves ahead of the rest of the field. Yeah, maximum um, effort, 25 miles, coming in 15 minutes afterwards. They got after two lap lead. But this, on. this happened last year. Um, there was some clear leaders, and then everything changed with the teams overnight. It can change overnight. People get what, what's what's different about the teams versus the individuals is the teams can break up. And then that team is disqualified. That team to, to qualify for the podium, or even as finishers, they need to stay together as a team uh-huh. for the entire. They need to finish a lap as a team after eight a.m. or after seven a.m. tomorrow. After twenty, what, twelve plus eight, twenty hours of the race, they need uh-huh. to stay together. So if they decide to break up early, or if someone gets injured and they can't do that last I lap, suppose together, if you've got. Um... Does the whole team have to do the last lap? The whole team has to do the first lap together ah. and the lap. Now, whatever that last lap is, if that last lap is an 8 a.m. finisher lap, or if they're going to keep doing laps and they, they're like, you know, we'll hold off and do our last lap together as a team at 11.30 and finish by 1.30, but they have to finish a lap together as a team. So if, they, if they're pushing it, they're like doing two minute at a time, two minute at a time, they have a four-man team, and they say, hey, we'll do our last four-man lap right before the start line is if they don't if they don't get all four people on the course for that last lap before the start line closes, they're not able to do a finisher lap as a team. They are disqualified. Right. You have to do the first lap and the last lap together. So the way to mitigate that danger is you do a lap together, all four members at like ten thirty. And then if you have time you do another one. All four tip members together. Okay, so you just keep going. So together. you definitely got a finisher lap as a team at, toward the end of the race. It, dep- it honestly it depends how close it is for these. And at that point, you have to all four run, carry on running together because it's your last lap. Yes. Last lap. So, but you can do a, you can do two last laps all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you so, can't do like a last lap at ten thirty and then two. If you send go two out. more out. No, no, no. You're right. Um, not seen much movement. Oh, Chris Rogowski just passing uh, a few minutes ago. Spunky monkey. Uh, everyone else is at melting point still. Uh, Spunky Monkey is uh, obstacle number 16. We'll next see her at Mudderhorn. We'll next see, uh, yeah, next see her at Mudderhorn. And after that, it's kind of quite speedy to the finish line. We've got a lot of our crew here. Rosalinda Lira says she's still here. AC, I am. Noel Medina looks like he's going to sleep. Noel, wake up, buddy. 
can't remember. No, I don't know what time zone you're in, but it's like 8 o'clock. Worst case, you're on the East Coast, man. It's 10 o'clock there. No. Come on. Um, B. Wood, still here, dying to know how the wheelchair team is doing. B, as soon as we know, we will find out for you. I don't I don't know the bib number of our wheelchair athlete. But no, we'll, I mean, if they're an official team, we won't be able to find them by name. But if true. anyone knows the bib number, yeah, that would be great. We'll look it up if they're not an official TC team. TC Cross here, I want my stick. <laughs> Listen. There How many stickers am I going to be buying? Really, here? really would work for stickers, patches, that kind of stuff. Loving the words, dub, cuppa, torch for headline. Oh, Rosalinda, let's not uh, let's, let's not encourage, encourage this behavior. Uh -huh. So we were chatting with Chris before talking about what people work for. Sure. And there's no uh, golden carabiners here, but there are challenges for patches. No, that's an interesting. I wouldn't say it's a massive change, but it absolutely is a change this year. In the past, there have been, um, well, they call them challenges, golden carabiner challenges. And in the this is the first year in a long time that everyone is on the same leaderboard, open contender and elite contender. If you sign up in the open wave and you run the most miles of any man, you will win prize money and you'll be on top oh. of the podium. And th now in the past few years, that hasn't been the case. You had to qualify to be a contender or an elite contender to get prize money. So you don't have to qualify in order to win. Exactly. That's crazy. So, well, it's it's great because, and Giles was talking about it a little bit, anyone from ultra running can, or anyone from CrossFit or who's a good runner, if you, or who, anyone can sign up. And if you run the most miles, following the same rules everybody else does. So what's the point in qualifying? So elite contenders and contenders, they get a couple perks. Uh, it's, you know, it's past the point now, but when they sign up, the elite contenders get first choice of pit spots. Then contenders get next choice of the pit spots. Then the open gets to choose their pit spots. So they each have like a day head start on each other, mm -hmm. the category. Um, also, the uh, start shoot. Elite contenders were invited to the front of the line. They got oh, to yeah. load in first. Contenders got to load in second. So they're right behind them. And then open behind. Okay. Now you saw how how jammed up it got for the open wave going over those fence crossings. Uh -huh. That's ah, a big that's perk a huge, for the yeah. elite contenders. But yeah, so talking about carabiner challenges in the past. So previously, open the carabiner challenges were only available for open category because they were changing the dynamics of the race. So elite contenders and contenders could not do the carabiner challenges. Because what would happen is you would do a, cha a carabiner challenge, you earn a golden carabiner, then while you're on your on your next lap around, you can use that golden carabiner to basically it's your ticket yeah. to buy a course bypass where you're able to bypass some obstacle. Now it didn't it didn't reduce the distance of the course. You would still it would maybe it would you would there's the, you're going off you're missing a mile of the course, but you're doing a mile on the golden carabiner route. But what yeah, you're missing obstacles, obstacles. <laughs> and, and potential penalties from failing those obstacles. But but you can see how that would um, drastically change the dynamic of the race, right? So any open wave athletes who are using carabiners, oh, we're looking at uh, well slung. This one starts starting at the far side. You have two uh, rings to swing. Then you go to a lache bar that swings, another ring, and then two bananas. Oh, there's a, uh, well, you can, there's a little Oh, oh, the stool. The I'm sorry, I brought the stool. Uh, yesterday we did this, like, it was fine up until the bananas. I'm sorry, up until what? The bananas. Uh, obviously, when tired and wet, it's more difficult. I found the bananas really tricky, even with two hands. It was kind of, Jason did it and ended up skipping a banana. But how that, whether you'd be able to do that in the middle of the night, who knows. Yep, so you see this, this stool. From the stool, they go to the next, the final ring. Two bananas after that ring. Jason was able to go from the ring, skip a banana, and go to the final banana, and then hit the bell. But it took him four tries, probably, to do it. Yeah, true. These that's athletes the beauty of the hot lap to be able to learn what works. To play with. These athletes, they get they're there. Most of them have never even seen this obstacle. They've got one. so they're they're doing the best they can on that one shot. The safe. Well, that you see that athlete just failed there. He's going to have to go do the penalty. The safest way to grab every, every, hold. every hold you have. If there were rings, ring would be absolutely fine, but 
it's a difficult bet. Yeah, you notice the guy sitting there on the left. That's the, I think the ideal strategy is you stand on it, you hold onto the ring in front of you, and swing and get momentum between the stool that you're on, the floating stool, and that final ring before you reach for the next banana. It was, um, I don't remember what the subscript was called last year. It was part of the gauntlet, I believe. But I remember finding that stool a lot tougher last year, and I'm not sure why. I don't know what was on either side, but I found some, maybe it was good. They didn't have the bananas ring. here. The bananas were on no, Funky Monkey. No, they were on Funky Monkey. But yesterday, trying that from a bar, I think with both hands on the bar, I could hang for longer. Sure. With both hands to get my feet safely onto the platform. Whereas last year, it was possibly going from a ring to the platform, unbalanced, and then ended up kind of falling backwards and swinging around a lot. But these um, banana holes are really tricky. Our picture here is a little bit jumpy, but we're hoping it's coming through for you absolutely fine. Joey McGlamory generally leads the wheelchair team. Shane Alice is still here. Samantha Thompson is still here. We did. Not fine, but. So 9 p.m. in the pit area. Everyone's still awake. Stuff is still happening. The next, oh, we have a failure there. The next few hours, people are going to start fading. Uh, pit crew are going to start taking naps. Some of the athletes are going to start going to sleep. Now, Which sounds like a dangerous game. Gen oh, it is 100%. Like if you if you start sleeping on uh, during the race, I I can't. I oh man. Once you start sleeping, it's it's tough to get out there. I, I do. I mean, I'm not running, but I just know how from my work, how I work in general, it's easiest to keep to stop. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to swap the cameras here. We've got Justin at Augustus Blue. Now, generally, if it's your first, if you've never run World Stuffist, or if you've only run a few times, oh, here we go. This is the new Augustus Loop. Mm. Now that that cargo tube that you see the guys entangled in there traditionally that in the past that has been a plastic tube that gave you a sense of claustrophobia or yeah. being contained and inside that plastic tube you would just kind of oh someone's oh they're jumping in the water inside that plastic tube you would just kind of climb a ladder not a ladder exactly but handholds i'm not saying water pouring down i thought that was supposed to be water there's there, there's there's uh there's well, we were able to see it when it was moving okay so they've changed Augustus Gloop from that tube to a cargo net based uh, transportation device. Um, we went we'll we were on there yesterday. The at the, we'll, we'll talk about more about it when we get a clear picture there. Here's Mutterhorn. Are we going to be taking any naps? Uh, hopefully not. I mean, uh, I've taken quite a lot of, of uh, cold meds, which last night kept me awake. So I'm pretty sure they're going to keep me awake again tonight. I have a hard time sleeping the night before World Stuff is Mutter. And whether I'm running it or whether I am, you know, working media here with the live stream. So I don't know. Last year I did. I got. I started fading around, I don't know, 2, 2.30 last year. And I was. I could feel myself dozing off. So I did duck out. So we'll, we'll see what happens. It's only 9 o'clock. Yeah, I've already got a sticker though, so I don't need more. So... I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Do not make me laugh. That's when the cough comes out. So we were saying earlier, both of us have been quite sick lately. And I was like, oh, this is going to be good. I'm going to be relying on Will to talk a lot. And so Will yesterday was like, I've been sick for weeks. I was like, oh, no. I've had this cold for like two weeks. And you know what they say with like colds versus fevers? They say you run a cold and lift a fever. So I've been running. And it, it just hasn't been fixing. You don't run if you've got anything below your neck. You said you had a bad chest. Oh, is that the rule? Yeah, head colds, you run. Anything below when it's in your chest, you don't. Really? So when do you lift? Neither, you just rest. You what? You just rest. Oh. Poorly, you just My wife rest. said the exact same thing. So, you probably listen to your wife. She sounds really smart. So I was running for like a week, and I'm like, I don't know why I'm still sick. I'm running every day. Yeah, that's why, buddy. So then I stopped running and I started getting better. Oh, Shocking. That's crazy. I know. But oh, Mike's behind us putting on his onesie. 
So we've not seen um, Chris hit um, what a horn yet. Morgan Schultz, Charlie Schweiker are going to be pulling off this W. W is the long way to say dub. Or the long way to say win. Both, both are longer. Mm, um, Morgan, I wonder, what do you do with all that time you save by not spelling out win? Well, she had to press shift W. I wonder what be quicker, shift W or W-I-N. Yeah. Kind of about the same. Uh, hopefully you can see what's going on. Screen's frozen for us a little bit, as is its wont in the middle of the field. But I'm assuming the picture is fine because this kind of happens a lot. Oh, yeah, I think the picture is currently on Augustus Wood, which is great. Yes, it is. So it's nine o'clock, just past nine. Um, Machine's operation is opening up. And then we've still got one more uh, obstacle to open at 10 p.m., which is Dingleberries, which Chris seems to think is going to have a lot of problems. Yeah, so operation is finally open. Operation is a... Uh, it's tough for me to say when the classic World Toughest Motor Obstacles began, but I think of it as a classic World Toughest Motor Obstacle. It's a skill-based obstacle, but if you're not skilled enough, you're going to get electrocuted. So, basically, operation, you walk up to a wall, mm -hmm. and in this wall has holes that are about four inches wide, and on the edges of these holes, it's metal. And you're given a long pole. It's about the same length as a, a pole you'd use for a swimming pool. And it, but instead of a little, to clean, a, like to clean leaves out of a swimming pool. Mm. But instead of the net at the end of it, there's a hook. Mm. And you have to carefully stick this pole through that hole. And if, you, if the pole touches the edges of the hole, you will be electrocuted. <laughs> and you're like, well, why am I sticking a pole through a hole? What's on the other end of that? Mouse well, house. About hole. six feet past that wall that you're sticking the pole through is another wall that has hooks or screws or nails. Yeah. And it has, you know, those like round plastic hooks for a shower curtain. Mm -hmm. They'll have a bunch of those up there. Oh. And so you are using this pole and do you remember, do you remember the child's game operation? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is what you're doing. But instead of touching the side and you get the big red nose that lights up, you touch the side and you get electrocuted. Yay! And here's the fun part is you're standing in three inches of water uh, right next to everyone else doing this obstacle, standing in the same water. So you get shocked. So if you get shocked, they, they get, get shocked. shocked. And they if get shocked. You get shocked. get shocked. Bonus. <laughs> so you're trying to fish, using this hook, this pole of the hook, you're trying to fish a shower hook out, and, and then you feed, you feed it back to yourself, and then you give the, to, to successfully complete the obstacle, you give that shower curtain hook uh -huh. to the volunteer at the obstacle. It's a terrible obstacle that is so much fun. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Like, that's just open and there's still one more obstacle to open up. Yep, we got one more it's with Dingleberries. Nine o'clock. Dingleberries is a tough obstacle and a tough penalty. So we'll see that. We'll see we'll talk about Dingleberries when we get to it. But I'm excited to see Operation and uh, we're going to stick a camera out there in a bit. Let's have a quick look at the man because I think there's been a few more men coming through. Am I bothering you? What? Oh. Am I bothering you? Oh, no, yeah, no, it's okay. Oh, sorry. So there's a guy who says, okay, social media is wearing an American flag uniform. His name I cannot remember. An American flag uniform. He said, if you guys are, no. He said, go find my bib. And I was like, okay. Is he a problem or is he in trouble? Is he, is he a problem or is he having a problem or is he a problem? So this is the men's leaderboard. We've got four men uh, with 50 miles, and it's nine o'clock. 50 miles at nine o'clock. Um, so look at the fastest if we do mile. some quick math, 50 miles times two. Hold up, that's a 100. Uh huh. And the fastest. So. Okay, Carlo. So I would say all four of those guys are on pace for 100 miles. 
the fastest man so far has been doing about his last two laps have been 101 and one hour so we so who's, see who's, that, who's done 101 in one hour? <laughs> who's sorry? So Michael Scott, the the fastest male. Sure. His last lap was 101. He so he's running. He's still running one hour laps. So we should be seeing him come through at like 9:35, maybe. Sure. So at 9:35, he could have 55 miles, which means at 10 o'clock he could have 55 miles. Now, operation opening up is def definitely going to slow some people down because mm -hmm. that's a. That's not an obstacle you can just like blow through and go through fast. No. If you are experienced at it, you can do it smoothly, but it's still going to take some, especially if you don't want to be shocked, it's going to take some time. But yeah, so I would expect his lap times to drop by at least a couple of minutes just based on operation alone. Mm -hmm. And then what else opened at 9 o'clock? Good question. I, I don't know the answer. When a team goes through operations, all three of them have to do everyone has to get a hundred. Oh. Every single person on the team has to yeah. I remember that one. Chris Glosky, yeah. 45. Okay. Chris Roglowski, what now? 45 miles. Chris 45 Glosky. miles for just, defending champion just Chris Roglowski. We just missed that. Just ran through. Chris is the only woman to finish 45. She literally just came through. So it said, I, care, I cheer for Callie as much as the next guy, but I just woke up for a bit. Yeah, you toddler. Isn't Chris slowly but consistently closing the gap? She's doing more than closing the gap. She has taken over uh, first place. Her lap seven was 113. Lap eight was 103, but lap nine was 140. So she sped up, then she slowed is down. Is that Callie or is that Chris we're talking about? That's Chris. Chris's last lap was 114. Uh-huh. But Callie's last lap, which is not the lap she's on now, sure. was 116. 116. I still think they're both on pace for 100. I hope so. I want to it. And I'm not writing off Stephanie Bland or Katie Knight um, yet either. I think they both have, they're going to need to maintain strong lap paces the whole, whole rest of the race. But they have, they still have a shot at it. Uh -huh. Not even now, it's a decent shot. So it's 9.10 right now, 9.08. We're going, when, when you get to 10 o'clock, we've talked about this uh, earlier, but the rule of thumb for mileages is whatever your goal mileage is for the race, you need to have 50% of that by 10 p.m. the night before. So if you want to run 100 miles, you need 50 miles by 10 p.m. If you're a regular guy and you're trying to get 50 miles, you want to have 25 by 10 p.m. And that's... That's a rule of thumb, but it's it's a pretty good one too. It's when I'm planning out my mileages, that's that's what I'm looking at. I, I feel like if I can get, if I want to get 50 miles, if I have 25, maybe 30 maybe. by 10 o'clock, 10:30, then I feel pretty good about my chances. That must feel pretty nice if you were to have 30 by 10 o'clock. Like I'm over halfway. Just I don't remember exactly where I was time wise, but I remember on my last lap or next to last. I remember my next to last lap. I was, we were, we were going through, because again, I'm trying to get 50 miles, not a hundred like these guys are. But I remember thinking, I've got a chance. I just need to keep doing what I've, I, we put ourselves in a good enough position where I've got a shot. And then on the last lap, the last obstacle that year was coach's corner. It was set up underneath uh, Mutterhorn, but it actually wasn't, it wasn't Mutterhorn. The last obstacle was, um, birth canal where you crawl Oops. under yeah. uh, a lot of heavy water. Anyway, I'm coming out. I finished. I'm coming out of the last obstacle and I stand up and I'm running with a friend of mine, Nate Swanson. And that's when I look at, we look at my watch and it's like 1152 <gasps> and we have like three minutes of running left and we can see the finish line. It's a quarter of a mile up ahead. Yeah. And we look at it and I'm like, Oh my gosh, Nate, it's happening. Like we're really going to do it. It's, oh it's really it's happening. It's so close. That's so exciting. Yeah. And that's, that for me, crossing the finish line was amazing. But for me, that moment on course yeah. where there's no obstacles left, it's just literally jog it in and you're done. Super emotional. I'm getting emotional thinking about it. That was my greatest, like most, I don't know if I told you, I podiumed in 2018. <laughs> this was better than that. This was the most emotional <laughs> moment I ever had on course. Oh my gosh, Nate, we're going to do it. It's We're doing it. It's really happening. Yeah. It's a great, great moment. Clinton Jackson gave him a 50 mile bib. Across, oh, I love it. It's an amazing. He is actually getting a little emotional now. Yeah, that's great. Eyed. It was a. Uh, that's the guy. Love this race. I can see why. 
Aaron Rost Grindstaff chimes in. Love the coverage. Makes me feel like I'm there. Great job. Aaron is a past World Stop a Smutter athlete. She finished in second two years in a row. Wow. Pulling up those years. Excuse me. Finished in third in 2021, second 2019, and yeah, second also in 2018. So three podium finishes in a row. That's nothing. Not too shabby there, Aaron. Aaron has a new baby and a baby on the way. So Aaron, we miss you out here, but congratulations, and uh, hope to see you. Hope to see you soon. Aaron, what's uh, as we were talking earlier about the difficulty of World Stuffers Mother versus having a baby? How do you feel about that? You're talking. You're asking me, or Aaron? I'm asking Aaron. Oh. you know what? Aaron is one of the. There's a handful. Like, I mean, there's not. There's obviously a lot of moms that run this race, but Aaron is probably as well qualified as anybody to answer that question. Yep. We've got two views there. Of uh, I'm getting really confused. This is Funky Monkey uh, with. Yep. Jason out there in person and our static camera as well. Let's go, Kevin Melton, Marines. Loco for Liberty, Kevin Melton fan. I'll quickly look at the girls, see if uh, Callie has got to Mudderhorn yet. If so, we would be expecting to see her soon. Not yet. You know what we should do? What Someone just commented here talking about Chris's position relative to the men. Just for fun, how many miles does Chris have right now? Um, she has 45 miles. Where would that place her on the men's leaderboard? So she has 45 miles in 9.06. And that would place her... Uh, Top 10. It would. No. No, 18. Okay. Which just surprises me. Yeah, it is surprising. A lot of men that are doing a lot of miles. Yeah. Last year, Chris finished with 100 miles. That would have put her in 25 16. That would have put her in sixth place. She, would, she was the slowest. But. I say the slowest. 100. She ran 100 miles. <laughs> but the, uh, the five men all finished their 100 before her. But we've still got a lot of the race to go. Goes wrong, fingers crossed. She's just going to keep going all night long. Of those 18 men, 17 men that are in I, front of her, how many of those are going to keep going throughout the night? So that'll be an interesting thing to keep an eye yeah, on. Yeah, she's. Uh, let's say she's 18th overall right now. Like I, we, There is no overall lead, leaderboard. There's a man, <laughs> male leaderboard and a female leaderboard. But if there was an overall leaderboard, Chris will finish. I would... I say this probably. She finished sixth last year. I, I expect her to be in the top ten yeah. when it all is said and done. Same, which is pretty cool. And we're not writing off Callie yet. Chris doesn't. It's, it's, there's there's no stretch by which this race is over. Callie <laughs> and her are within minutes of each other, within a lap. Absolutely. Callie slowed down a bit. She's not got to Mudderhorn yet. Okay. She was last seen at Spunky Monkey at eight fifty six. Chris crossed the finish line. At 908. Have we had a Trevor Psycho sighting lately? <laughs> no, we haven't. Trevor. Trevor. Trevor Psycho's um, nine laps at 9.15. Oh, so he went by 20 seconds ago. Oh. We just didn't see him. I, you know what? I probably saw him subconsciously. You know, like, he passed us 20 seconds about ago. That guy. He's wearing a, he looks like a pirate tonight. Why? He's wearing a bandana. I mean, that's very stereotypical of me, not to discriminate against pirates. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he had a parrot on his shoulder. I mean, I think we can discriminate against pirates because they're pretty bad people. That is the definition of a pirate. I mean, if you're rocking a headband, I'm not going to criticize you for it. No. But you did say I'm not going to stereotype pirates. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if our audio is picking it up, but Clinton Jackson is literally serenading the athletes as they walk in. 
be singing the Facts of Life theme song. We actually can't, I don't think we can share the song because it'll copyright strike us on YouTube. Allison Walls, Chris is going to keep gaining on people. She's a beast and won't slow down when others do. So this is Jason. Hi, Jason. Oh, let's turn Jason up. We'll turn us off. So this is Jason at Coach's Corner, but we can't actually hear Jason. Um, we've tried turning your sound up, Jason, but we can't hear you, unfortunately. We would love to be bringing that music. And there is Coach. There's Coach. Coach Team Mud Honey, Kyle Rotan, Railton, leading the party all night long. He's talking, but we don't know what he's saying. Uh, yeah, this is pretty cool out here. We've, we've got coffee, and um, I'm I'm going to be DJing all night long, and uh, I love you, and this girl's got really great arms. That is and, 2016 um, World Seventh Better Champion Stephanie Bishop next to him. She does have pretty great arms. She does have pretty great arms. No, you don't win World Seventh Better without great arms, I guess. I saw Coach yesterday as we were walking around. He was giving me a pep talk, and I was like, um, I'm not actually running. <laughs> and he was like, all right. Coach, well, Coach is uh, – you know, there's, there's guys that when you spend time around them, like they're like energy givers, right? You can mm -hmm. spend some time with fake energy. You can spend some time with people that give you energy. Coach gives me energy. Every <laughs> time I talk to him, I, I walk away with more energy than when I got there. I like that. I like his mustache. You like the mustache? Yeah. It's kind of his trademark. That, it's uh, yeah, he's got, a, he's got a little That is a mustache, solid uh, handlebar mustache. Logos on, on Coach's car. You oh, I having wish a... we had the music here. We'll try and get it to you. We don't. We don't know how because oh, we're not so technical. I remember seeing Coach, it was probably one of his first events at uh, Tough Mudder in SoCal. And they had kind of two, you had the start shoot where everyone goes in there right before you start the race. Mm -hmm. But they were also herding people into the warm up area. So you'd go to the warm up area for a while while the start shoot was getting a, like a pep talk. Then they'd send the start shoot out and then move the people from the warm up area into the start shoot and then move into the next group from the waiting area into the warm-up area. Okay. So I, Sean Corbell was doing the start shoot, and Coach was doing the warm-up area. They had him on an elevated platform. Nice. And he uh, he does his thing where he, you know, gives, gives some motivational words, but also so he's up there in super short shorts, <laughs> super tight T-shirt, high socks up to his knees, high, like, nice. white crew socks up to his knees. He's got the uh, sunglasses on. He's got the hat on. Not this hat, not the bucket hat. This may be the <clears throat> the first time some people have seen Coach's eyes because he's always wearing those sunglasses. And uh, he does his warm up. He has. His... <coughs> he's doing his hip circles, and you, know, you put your hands on your waist, and you just kind of <laughs> make giant circles all the way forward, all the way back. That's his, and he'll tell you that's his favorite stretch or favorite warm up. Like it legitimately is. It just kind of looks funny and translates well to Tough Mudder. 
And then these is guys that a kiss and stretches and some exercises, and then he sends you off to the to the warm up area. But Coach has been a presence in the community since I want to say like 2014, 2015. It's great to see him out here still. It's rocking. great. This is another kind of thing that has developed yeah. organically. His uh, his handle on Instagram is something like Coach the DJ because <laughs> he is a DJ. Like that's side of his. He worked. He like who could that be running past, hollering and screaming? I don't know, but he had less shoes than the average World Toughest Motor athlete. <laughs> Raymond Vincent, our barefoot runner. How many miles for Raymond Vincent so far? Have a look. Clinton calling him Raymond the Wild Thing. Uh, laps six. So thirty miles done for Raymond barefoot, barefoot on the most cactus-ridden course I have ever seen. A World Toughest Motor. Uh, Cali has finished lap nine. At 9.22. Literally Kelly just finished. Schweikart. Kelly. You know what? It's it's tough to describe this. It looks like an explosion on screen here. We see literally every athlete. Every athlete cannot finish a lap without us seeing them. And yet we miss them. Stephanie Bland, very three often. seconds after. Tell me, say that one more time. Stephanie Bland uh, finishing three seconds. Lap nine. Three after Kelly Schweikart. After Kelly. And, and where are they in relation to Christopher Glossy? Uh, Christopher Rogloski. Um She's at she's on lap ten, snogging dirt. Uh, literally a minute ago. So same time that she was going through obstacle four, they were crossing the finish line. Do I have? So the she's time? a good mile and a half ahead of them, probably. Nine oh six. Uh, yeah, they're like fifteen minutes behind her. Okay. So top the top three women are all within fifteen minutes of each other. Chris in front, second and third, about fifteen minutes, give yeah. or take behind. Callie uh, Katie Knight was last seen at Spunky Monkey at nine seventeen, so not that long ago. So She's Katie's just... kind of dropping back and mm -hmm, forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I think normally we'd say, Oh, it's not a big deal. But with Chris Rogoski there, it is. I have a good question for no, <laughs> there's Jason having some coffee. <laughs> the man, the myth, the mustache, coach. Immortal, the coffee sponsor for World Stuffest Mutter this year. Immortal with a D. Immortal. And uh, they've got hot coffee out there, I believe, for everybody, for the athletes, right? And cold right? coffee. And cold coffee for during the day. You got a little dance party going that out there. That looks like a fun obstacle. And it is actually an obstacle. Watch. See the athletes going under there? Uh-huh. It's an obstacle. Let's have a quick look at the men's. They got the, look at these. These are pit crew members out there just having a good oh, old time. That. Swinging their glow sticks. They got, we used to call those Siloom sticks when I was a scuba instructor. You use them for night dives. Quick look at the men's leaderboard. We've got a few men having gone through 50 miles. Tyler Vermin going through about 20 minutes ago. And not far ahead of him. Austin Azar, three minutes ahead of him. So Michael Schott in first place is the only one of those top four men that has not run 100 miles at World's Toughest Mudder. Ooh, that's and he's leading. Do you think he can hold on through the night? I, f I feel like we've been saying it for... If I told you we've been sitting here for nine and a half hours, would you believe me? I'm just surprised this trail mix is still going after so long. It's It seems silly to say it's early, still. Mm -hmm. The race starts at midnight. These guys are still positioning themselves. They're literally just trying to keep up with each other, just trying to oh, stay fantasy. within range, oh, within fighting range, oh, within shooting range of each other. Until midnight starts. Midnight is when we heard Amelia Boone, three time World Stuff Motor Champion, tell us midnight is when it gets real. So for them to get to fifty miles, they'll be at fifty five or sixty, maybe even before midnight. That's that's definitely fifty five at least. Well, we're expecting to see here we go. Let's, we show, were you, expecting let's show you to inside see Coach's Corner. Michael Scott around um, 9.35, I think we said, didn't we? So that's not gonna happen. As he has Funky Monkey at 9.25. Here comes our wheelchair athlete for uh, 
That's going to be Miles. What? B, uh, B. Wood was looking for our wheelchair athlete. Yeah, they are. They're coming through right now, about 926, finishing their third lap or their fourth lap. That was their fourth lap. Nice. That is pretty impressive. So half an hour, we're going to be revisiting our right. predictions. So half an hour, yeah. So if you're just joining us, we talked about it earlier. If you have a goal for a mileage, whether it's 100 miles or 75, whatever your goal mileage is mm -hmm. to have done by the end of the race, Tim Rivetti keeping us on track. The race starts at midnight. We have not said it 12 times, maybe. Oh, she's talking it's about 12 now. 13. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so if you have a goal... A lot of people, their goal is 50 miles or 100 miles. Whatever that goal is for the end of the race, you want to have half of that completed by 10 p.m. of the first day, of you know, 10 hours into the race. So, so 10 hours into the race, but the race can go on for how long? 25 and a half hours? 25 and a half. So you still have 15 and a half hours afterwards. So that shows how much people slow down over the night. It's dramatic. Plus, it's not just slowing down. Well, first of all, everyone does slow down overnight. But even once the sun comes up, you're still tired and you're still sore and you're still much slower than you were during the daytime yesterday. Uh, but also, there's a lot of obstacles. The last obstacle still has not opened yet. The last obstacle doesn't open until 10 p.m. So all those miles you were able to bank between, hopefully, between noon at start and 10 p.m. when the final obstacle opens, mm -hmm. you're going to be going a lot slower just due to volume of obstacles that are now open on the course. There's 20 obstacles per lap that these athletes are dealing with. So, everyone, well, it doesn't matter if you're at the front of the pack or the back, it's going to be doing, doing Let well me just lap. tell you something here about the guys. Tell me. So, Michael Scott passed Spunky Monkey at 9.24 on his 10th temp, lap. No, his 11th lap. He's finished 10th. So, he's on his 11th lap, passed Spunky Monkey at 9.24. In fifth place, Isaac Sanderson passed Spunky Monkey at 9.14 on his 10th lap, so a whole lap behind uh, 10 minutes after. So, to say that one more, way, <clears throat> one more way, the fifth place man is one full lap behind the first place man. Yeah. Okay. That, that shows how fast first and fourth yeah. are going, I guess. Right? That's five, five places, yeah. But the men are going fast. You know, if we're looking, Chris Roglowski was in 18th the last we saw. Yeah, she's still overall 18th. She's not passed anything to change that. So that goes to show if there's one and five, there's a whole lap difference. All those men on uh, lap there's, 10. They're Chris starting Roski's to spread out a little bit. Lap. Right? Yeah. But there's a lot of them. We've got a lot of men doing a lot of miles tonight. Yeah. And a lot of women. Like, I'm lo looking at the top five men, top five women. It's only like a lap difference, it looks like, at least the raw numbers. Top 24 men um, have done ten lap, nine laps. Top now, 24 men are on their 10th lap. I don't know if that's going to hold up the whole... Like, look at it right now. Michael Schott with 50, Christian Klossky with 45. First place, first place. Fifth place man, Sanders, Isaac Sanderson with 45. Fifth place woman, Nikki Caramba with 40. There's literally... This is just a raw number thing. But essentially, a lap difference between the top men and the top women. That's now, close. That's very close. Now, like, if you were to to play that out, do we think there's going to be two lap, you know, two lap difference when it's all said and done? I feel like it'll probably be three. We can look at past results to see kind of what, like last year. Last year, DJ Fox was only one lap ahead. First place man was only one lap ahead of the first place woman. Chris Inside coach's corner here with Jason. Jason, just so you know, we don't have your audio coming through, but we do have your picture. And it looks pretty great. It's like a disco crime scene. <laughs> Thumbs up from Jace. From J Dog. No, Will shakes his head. Don't do that, please. 
but just to see like the spacing, the final finishing spacing last year, first place man, 105, first place woman, 100, mm. 10th place man, 90, 10th place woman, 75. Big difference. Three laps. Let's go back two years, 2021, first place man, 115, first place woman, 90, 25 miles. 10th place man, two years ago, Connor Brown with 85. 10th place woman, Sue Harvey Brown, no relation that I know of, 50, so 50 miles, so a three lap difference. And look at looking, I, I don't want to recite all these numbers to you because it'll just <laughs> make your eyes blow as it plays over, but generally it looks like there's about a 15 mile, 10 to 15 mile difference between the top top position men, top position women, you know, required, like fourth place to fourth place, seventh to seventh, etc. So 10, 10 to 15 miles. And right now they're, they're on pace for that. They're five miles apart right now, almost halfway through. Did we, did we put this comment up already there from B-Wood? So happy to see them. Yes, we did. Uh, so someone asked in the uh, comments, looking for Edgar Montenegro. He has done five laps. Um, he was last seen on lap six, melting point at 9.23. He's doing fine. Steady, steady laps, just getting a bit slower each lap, as people do. Sure. And yeah, and, and if you're watching your athletes at home and you're like, why are they slowing down? I promise you, everyone is slowing down. Well, more obstacles are open. Um, they're wetter, they're muddier. More people would be doing penalties and people are getting tired. There's less people out on course human. right now. It's 930. People are, some people are like, you know what? I'm going to take a little nap. I'm going to mm. take a little, this just as a little treat. It seems and early to take a nap. It does. Could, could you sleep? Oh, then again, if I'd run 30 miles, maybe I could. It there's going to be less people on course to help you over obstacles. Mm. So you might come to an obstacle and you need to wait for someone stuck to stuck longer. Like you'll literally stay. Oh, there's no stand block there. nest this year. That was really fun last year, wasn't it? Yeah. No block nest on course. And that's, that's kind of a surprise. It's, that's kind of one of the iconic obstacles. Um, Which it's difficult to do on your own. It really is. Yeah. But even stuff like Everest, difficult to get up on your own. Uh, Matter, Mutterhorn, difficult to start mm. up on your own. They have really oh, done it up up there at coach's good. corner, huh? That is good fun. That's fun. Whoop, 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 whoop. You got to dance before they let you in. Coach helped design that. You see the guy on the right with his hands in the air? Mm -hmm. His name is Anthony. Anthony has been coming to World's Toughest Mudder. This is his third year. He comes to World's Toughest Mudder, and this is a true story. Mm -hmm. He comes to dance. He, all night? All night long. He started in Laughlin two years ago. Three, well, yeah, two years ago. Um, he said, I'm going to dance. He met coach somewhere and he basically coach brought him and he's like, I'm going to dance for 24 hours. And coach is like, all right, let's do it. That's crazy. And he, he lasted like 22 hours before he had to tap out. That was the first year. 2022, he came back and he said, I'm going to dance for 24 hours. And he was at coach's corner and he danced for 24 hours. When you say dance for 24 hours, does he take a pee break? Does he eat? Does he drink? I think he, I, maybe he. Probably, probably like we broadcast for twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. Like we might, you know, duck out and grab something, but we're we're essentially broadcasting for twenty four hours. Love the uh, love the footage here from Coach's Corner. So yes, it is a dance party, but it's also an obstacle. So Callie's last um, lap for information was one thirty one, and Chris's last lap was one fourteen. Callie is doing hour 30 laps. Chris Rikloski is doing hour 15 laps. So Chris Rikloski is putting 15 more minutes, of, 15 minutes of distance between them with each lap right now. That's like, that's one lap for four hours difference. So, oh, so in, in four laps, she'll have a Almost full, a whole a full lap. lap. She'll have lapped, him, lapped her. I think that makes sense. I'm actually maybe in five laps for an hour 15, uh, 15 minute difference. Yeah. No, but you're right. That's if, if, both those paces hold. And again, they're probably both going to slow down. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the guys are doing. Michael Scott, his last lap was 101. Speedy, speedy. Josh Fiore, his last lap was 107. A little bit slower. Looks like Coach has a co-DJ back there. Oh, that's Stephanie Bishop. Austin Azar, his last lap was 105, so faster than Josh's. At what point are you not going to make up the time well the good thing is they don't have to worry about making up the time yet because so the race will start till midnight 
That's correct. Now, they are going to start thinking about it pretty soon. Um, 10 o'clock is a time we've talked about a lot. And mm -hmm. it's time they think about it also. They know, hey, I want 100, so I need 50 by 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we that, like right now we're talking about Chris pulling away from the field, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She literally, it literally too early to even say that. Chris could have, um, most athletes, it seems like they're not, especially the elites, are not putting on a wetsuit yet. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and honestly, I wonder if we will see them put wetsuits on. I bet you the, the leading field, like Chris and Trevor Psychos, Austin Azar, those guys, Michael Schott, they may not even put wetsuits because it's warm enough. 55 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. is warm enough running. You don't need it. I mean, it's fair. We're saying she's pulling away too early to say that. But also going by that, if she's not the one who's going to take the top spot, we're not going to see 100 miles. I would say, because at nine thirty-seven, we're thinking we're thinking second place down is slowing down enough so that they're not going to make a hundred. Yeah. So, so right now we think maybe, again, early. Uh -huh. But maybe if any if any woman hits a hundred this year, it's got to be Chris mm -hmm. again. Could be wrong, uh, but one just... of the funniest things people in the this is super common, especially for first timers. Um, and this is, this is, it's just, it's just a funny thing. People are like, oh man, I was on pace for a hundred miles and then the obstacles opened up. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I mean, we were all on pace for a hundred miles, 45 minutes into the race, but Chris actually is on pace for a hundred miles. Mm. She's done it before. Now here's a question I would want to ask her mm -hmm. if I could get inside her brain right now, I would want to ask, is it easier or harder the second time. And you know what? This is a question I might ask. Who should I ask this question to? Psychos, maybe? Maybe DJ Fox? Is it easier the second time? I don't mean like the sixth time. I mean the second time. You've already done it once, so you can do it. know what it entails. But you know like the price you have to pay physically to get it done. Is the second time easier or harder? But for these people who are running for this amount of time, if we're talking about the difference between one lap, five miles, you know, we're saying that we're saying it's the difference between 95 and 100 miles. Sure. Is it that much more than having to push and put themselves through? Like that's already. This is a question like you and I really, like, we really can't even answer it, right? Yeah. Because we're never. I'm never going to know. <laughs> I'm the difference. never going to run 100 miles. I, I will never. I promise. I'll never know the difference between running 95 and running 100. I would love to run 100. In fact. I'll never know the, the the thing of I'd love to run 100 miles, mm -hmm. and in fact, I've kind of like gets out kind of out there as an ultra running goal someday. Someday, I hate that word, but I haven't done it yet. Yeah. So the difference between running 95 and 100, I have no idea. Said a couple of comments about the flashing lights. Hope you've no epileptics watching, and a huge favor before putting on the flashing lights. So the DJ, can you do a quick warning? Photo sensitive seizures uh, um, is all absolutely hadn't even thought of that. So yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, be a good call. We'll, uh, we we'll will make do that. sure any time we put on Coach's Corner that we are giving a warning before that comes up. TC Cross, ask Amelia Boone. I could ask for TC. That's a good call. Never run 100, though. Um, she may have run 100 in an ultra run, like a traditional non OCR event, but she's never run at World Cup. Now, she, obviously, she's won the race three times. Maybe if you talk about it twice. in terms of uh, winning, what sure. it takes to win. Because. I mean, I don't know, like, the 100 miles for Chris last year was huge, we all loved it, very emotional, really good fun, but each course is a new course, and what you're doing is competing against the people who are out there and the course. Kind of like what Callie said, there's no point in me talking about miles, I'm talking about placement, there's a miles change every year. That's true. And that's not to take away, let's get, let's get rid of Coach for a bit with uh, the flashing lights, um, if everyone's eyes are broke. That's not to take away from um, Chris's achievement of 100 miles in any way, shape, or form, because we still know it's absolutely insane. But is the question, what does it take to push yourself more than the person behind you? Is it easier to do it the second time or not? And what's interesting about last year is not that Chris didn't have to push herself. Obviously, she had to push to get to 100, but she didn't have pressure to win the race mm. from behind her. Second place woman last year was... 10, 10 miles behind her was 15 miles. Oh, was it? Katie Knight with 85. Oh, wow. I thought it was 90. So the only pressure Chris had 
you know, the last, you know, six hours of the race, maybe mm. four to six. Eh, maybe that's not maybe that's three or four hours. The only pressure she was feeling was pressure internal to get 100. Mm. A question here about Tyler Vermin. Is he OK? Uh, he passed by on the last lap. He was passed on the last lap by Austin and looks like he's been in the pit for 35 minutes. Um, Great question, Glenn. Can't see that information of whether he's still in the pit. I'm not sure if we Has get, he gone out on the next lap? I'm not sure we have a starting time. I don't sure we've got a, a map where it says starting time. Ah, Michael Scott, lap 11. Michael Scott just finishing right now? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 55 right. miles, which is kind of... Oh. We, we were expecting him at 9... So we expected Michael Scott to come through about 9.35 and he came through at 9.42. So go us. Yeah. Fist bump. Well done. Um, I'm going to, you know what? We know where Tyler Veerman's pit is. I might just go walk and over and uh, do a little recon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Uh, right, so I'll you guys right are stuck with me shortly. Uh, behind uh, Michael is Josh Fiore, who was last seen at lap 11 melting pot at 9.33, which is 10 minutes ago. As we say, we kind of know when, we kind of know when people are going to be crossing the finish line soon, when we see them at Mudderhorn. But I am looking at the results on my phone. So we kind of do also miss it a fair amount. Let's have a quick look at the ladies. Chris Roglowski, Christina Roglowski, uh, lap 10 swinging tips at 9.39. Uh, nothing against Coach's Corner. Love the man, the mystery, the mustachio. Uh, they saw the comments. Read the flash warning. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jason's left there anyway. Uh, when we go back, we'll make sure we give you a bit of warning that it's happening. Um, just absolutely. Oh, look at someone there doing um, a chicken wing on the, on the hoop. And he just missed. Tough obstacle, this. Tough obstacle. So Will has just gone to check on Tyler Veerman and he's just come back. He looks cheerful. Well, I think I'm doing better than oh, no. Tyler is. He's I didn't have the heart to wake him up oh, and ask how he's doing, and... but he's asleep. Oh, little guy. So we saw him, Fred and I saw him right before the race started. He has a very minimalistic pit set up. So he's just lying just... on a top hole and has he even got a blanket? No, he's literally just, he looks like he just laid down and went just like fell is asleep. Is he alive? No, I did, I did make sure he was breathing. Okay. He is breathing. He's... Should somebody find him a blanket? He, I, maybe, I don't want to, I don't want to wake him. I don't, I know, what I just... we cannot do as members of like the media and the broadcast team is we can't Help. affect the race. Okay. So... Um, but yeah, I fair. do know he's alive. It's not that cold, and it's not that cold. It's you know, we're, I'm sitting here in shorts and yeah. a light jacket. Um, he is laying down. He has a sweatshirt on, and he has he's okay. in his shorts, okay. and he is his eyes are closed, and he's breathing. His headlamp is um, next to him on the table, so he's he took a choice to take rest. He's, put he's, a take, he's definitely taking a break. Okay. Um, I, I didn't have the heart to wake him up and ask him if he's okay. I mean, maybe if he's not going to hit the mileage goal he wanted, he's taking a little break to get him through the whole night, which is good. What he said was he wanted to get to the point that is really difficult and keep going. And maybe he got there. Maybe he got there, but if he gets up after this and starts running, I think that's the point that's really difficult. I think it's it's hard. It's it's harder to, to stop. stop and restart than it is so to just keep going. I agree. So I agree. yeah, so not not great news for Tyler Veerman's race, but he he uh he looks okay. I'm not sure if there's any injury or what if it's a, maybe a stomach issue or why he. I'm not sure. I don't know why he stopped. I'm gonna say though, I really respect when people. I know there's a big uh a big part of the. Oh, I don't know what the word is. Uh, there's a big thing in OCR to kind of just keep going. Sure. Uh, sweat is just pain leaving the body. You know, I, I'm not, yeah, you've got to have enough of that grit to push through hard things. But I do think there has to be enough sense to be able to say, this isn't healthy for me. Sure. And I, need I think it's good for regular humans to see elite athletes also go, hey, yep, it's okay to take a bit of a break sometimes. 
Here is cage crawl. This is a stress-inducing obstacle. Now, you see how that guy came out um, on his stomach. Mm. Oh, so he went face. He went face down, which there should, there should be more water. If they're able to do that, uh, there's not enough water in there. Now, those guys are face up. That's the, way, that's the best way to do the obstacle. You know the secret for this obstacle, if you're watching at home and planning out how you want to do it? Mm. on the live stream. We're just having a quick chat here. Um, as much as we love Coach's Corner and as much fun as it is, we're not going to be able to show you that again. So doing a um, doing a trigger warning is fine for those at home if you've got time to switch it over. But we are also showing the um, live feed on a giant screen here at the event. And the flashing lights coming off that are so intense. And so for anyone here who sees that, it's a problem for them as well. So we um, we won't be visiting there whilst the lights are going. So thanks for flagging that, everyone. We just, uh, just, just didn't even think about it. Any updates on where Scott Sebastian's whereabouts? Uh, if you can tell me his team name, we can see if he's in the top 10 of the teams. Uh, but otherwise, I'm afraid uh, we can't search his name because he is uh, a team member, not an individual racer, I think. Yes, that was Scott and Molly Sebastian. They were members of teams, right? Let's have a quick look at the team update. If he's one of those teams, he's in the top 10. If he's not, he's not. Let's take a look at the men's top 10. Do, 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 do.
So we have one man who has finished 11 laps. Michael Schott is not quitting. He's not, not quitting. Obviously, it's too early to quit, but he just keeps going and keeps going. He's pushing it. Josh Fiore was last seen at Spunky Monkey at 9.46, which was like five minutes ago. Okay. You know, with Tyler Bierman at, out for now, uh -huh. um, we have some new new names there popping up into the top ten. Mm. I mean, Tyler kind of started a bit further back, and then he pulled it out. I hate this obstacle. It makes me panic and cry, but I do it. I assume you're talking about cage call, which you've had on screen. Yeah, I can see why. Some Samantha, there. I don't know if you were listening. Or, oh, yeah. Samantha, you've been with us all 24. This used to be my least favorite obstacle, cage crawl. Mm -hmm. Looking at in the background there. I'll, I'll talk about it more after the women's. Christina Ruglaski. Top I'm four sorry. women. What's that? I said Christina Ruglaski. Well, that's not a song. It's your jingle. It's Christopher Mendoza. You did on all, a podcast I did with you. You sang Christina Ruglaski. Oh, because... You know why? You know, I'll tell you exactly why. Because Christopher Mendoza wasn't doing races, and I didn't have any excuse to use his name. So you're right. We put Chris. I forgot about that. We put Chris Roglowski to the tune of Christopher Mendoza. Mendoza. So I've got the cheat wrong. Christina Roglowski. Like, it's got the same syllables, the same meter, as I, they I've say. I've got more for, like, a 90s commercial. <laughs> Christina Roglowski. That's kind of the uh, the grocery store version of it. Yeah. When you're, when you're shopping at, uh, at Lucky's or Safeway <laughs> or... Uh, I'm trying to think of a UK grocery store. I can't. Tesco. Tesco. Thank you. So, so Christi Christina Roglowski <laughs> in first place. And that was 9.06. So that was, you know, 20 minutes off an hour ago. 40 minutes. No. 50, oh, God. My math is terrible. 11 minutes. <laughs> this is going to get really tough after daylight savings, honestly. We're going to go. We're going to. Really if you're wondering how we're going to handle daylight savings. We're not. Traditionally, there's a lot of everything is time based in the world's toughest matter, right? Well, yeah, because it's you it's start a 24 at 12, hour race. You start at noon on Saturday, you finish at noon on Sunday. Uh, you have until 1 30 to finish your last lap. You have to finish a lap after 8 a.m. on Sunday to be a finisher. All those times are an hour off because of daylight savings. It'll be finish the lap after 7 a.m. The start line will close at 11 a.m. You have to finish your last lap by 12 30 p.m. It's the exact same amount of time because Which of daylight is savings. It's still a like 24 hour race. I'm not going to lie. The one day, the one day that I don't want an extra hour, because last year after this, I didn't go to sleep. We stayed, we tidied up, we packed everything away, kind of went back to the hotel, showered, went out for dinner. I mean, by the time I went to bed, I think we've been awake for like 42 hours. The day that I don't want an extra hour is tomorrow. I want to go to bed. Yeah. They, uh, that's how they get you. And it's all about me. So four women with 45 miles, four women with 40, and then two women in the top 10 with 35. So yeah, so Samantha, I was talking earlier about how cage crawl, is a, it can be a very stressful obstacle, right? You're in, you're, mm. you got water past your ears. It's kind of creeping up. It, it gets into like the corner of your mouth a little bit, into your nose maybe. And you're like, I just want to breathe. So for <laughs> me- It's pretty good breathing. The, the way I finally got over that is I was with my brother. My brother and I were running a Tough Mudder course, a regular Tough Mudder course in Arizona. And we got to the obstacle and we decided we were gonna race. And so we just went for it. And then when we're we're running for it, we're, we're not running, but we're like, you know, going as fast as you can, yeah. pulling yourself through, literally kicking with your feet, trying to swim on your back. Then uh, I don't remember who won, but it was me. <laughs> so then we decided, hey, let's do it again, and and then we did like I don't we did it three or four times just because it's on a regular tough mudder course. You just there is no kind of it, I guess. Yeah. And and it, honestly, like you do it enough times, and you just kind of forget about the stress of it. You're just I'm trying to win. I'm trying to beat my sibling. Then it's uh. Do you know what I really wanted to do last year when we did the hot lap was the um, I don't know what you call them, the dips uh, where it was near Statue of Liberty, so Augustus Glute, sure, and then there were like inflatable things on the wall sure. under. we, um, underwater tunnels underwater tunnels uh because and i'm sure i mentioned this last year a tough guy that was the one obstacle i could never do sure and they they're a lot different at did tough you run guy. tough guy <laughs> that's my story isn't it <laughs> yeah i run a lot <laughs> but that was the obstacle i couldn't do because i mean they're it's a really narrow pack about as wide as your shoulders and sure. then 
the rest of it is boarded over. So there's always a fear that you're going to go the wrong direction and not be able to get out of the water. And sure. it, it would kill you because Mr. Mouse doesn't really mind if you die. Um, and the water is absolutely freezing. And there's no big gap. It's just boom, boom, boom. And, and I can't do it. I couldn't. So last year I was like, I'm going to do this, even though it's not safe, even though it's boiling hot and these are inflatable. And then we got there and people were like, don't disturb the alligators. And I was like, oh, heck no. <laughs> there is nothing scarier than alligators. So I, I didn't manage to do that. But yeah, this is sometimes there are just some things that scare you. And you know, you're know, alive by prehistoric monsters. That you can't live your life by this rule because if you did, it, you'd die. But generally, <laughs> if something scares you, like, hey, let's lean into that. Like, why does that scare you? Let's Now, if it's like, hey, standing near the edge of this building is scary, stay away from the edge of the building. But something like, like the uh, the teeter-totter obstacle, yeah, um, mm -hmm. melting plate. I was like, I do not want to do that obstacle. Mm -hmm. But we're going to live stream for 24 hours, and we're going to talk about that obstacle. So I probably better do that obstacle. Plus, it's scary. Trumps. So I uh, Samantha Thompson says, maybe I'll try that next time. I didn't sure. really get to try. I didn't try any water obstacles yesterday on purpose. Um, I know I've spoken a few times. I don't love water. It's not water that's the problem. It's cold water that's the problem. So here for me during the day yesterday, absolutely not an issue. That wouldn't have been a problem. But um, I was just scared of getting more ill. I was like, I don't want to get my chest wet and cold. Sure. Like you can probably hear both of us just hacking along every five minutes. Hey, it's well, good. it's a good, it's a good vibe. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of feel like I missed out. You can you'll you'll catch up at uh, your free Infinity, toughest yeah. infinity. It sounds like or whatever <laughs> Giles is hooking you up with. So while we're on cage crawl, let's talk a few more tips for cage crawl. Mm -hmm. The the biggest secret you see that middle um, post in the yeah. middle of the now this is kind of dependent on if there's people behind you. If there's people behind you, it's tough to do. But if you have space, you want to get right on that middle bar, and you can see the middle bar even through the the plastic blocks. Mm -hmm. There's still a middle bar there. If you just get right on that middle bar. And literally, you just follow that middle bar straight from the start of the obstacle to the end of the obstacle. Mm -hmm. That will keep you from going, from swerving left to right, from going crooked, and from hitting your head on something. Mm. So, uh, uh, it's uh, a minute to 10 o'clock. We're getting close. We are getting close to mm. our 50% mark. That does not feel like it was five hours ago. Do you, that we started 10 hours ago? No, that we had that conversation about... Five hours ago, you're yeah. right. At five, so at five, at five p.m. You and I were talking. Well, just just to, just to review. Here's the rule. The rule is if you want to run whatever mileage it is, say you want to run fifty miles. This is the rule of, of elites, thumb, not the not the race. Rule, rule of thumb. You're right. This isn't a. This is a. Yeah, rule of thumb is a is the better term. It's not a rule for the so world stuff matter. It's just it, it's kind of back of the napkin math. If you want to run hundred miles, yeah, world stuff is matter in twenty four hours. You need to have fifty miles completed by ten p.m. We're coming up on 10 p.m. right now. Literally, it's it's you know before everyone had like the exact time on their phone. Uh -huh. It's 10 p.m. We all just used to have like clocks and watches, and they were all like a minute off or two minutes mm -hmm. off, and it was fine. People <laughs> would say, "What time do you have?" Like we all have, and, and the world was fine. We didn't all need to have the exact. You and I have the exact same time on our phone, <laughs> and every single person in the pit crew has the exact same time on their phones as you. Ten hours of the race. Ten now hours exactly. We're exactly ten hours into the race. Anyway, as we were saying, so you need half that. You want to run 100 miles, you need 50 by right now. So at 5 p.m., we were halfway to 10 p.m., and we said, hey, what do we think? Let's make some crazy possible – let's just do some, some speculation. What's possible? So I picked two athletes who had hit a distance of pretty much exactly five hours. It was 5.01 and 5.02, and that was Elma King and Scotty Campbell. Elma King had hit – 30 miles at 5.01. Okay. And now he's hit 45 miles. But he is he should have that 10th lap done any minute. Elmer King. He should. Like, literally. He, he might walk past us walking right now. Because James Burton just, literally just ran past us 20 seconds ago. Scotty Campbell isn't actually... So James Burton's just done 50 miles at 10 That's hours. That's perfect. Exactly. So, so we have seven men, with our rule of thumb, seven men exactly on... To run 100 miles. But, I mean, James Burton is exactly on pace. For and that. Elmer King is not far behind him. Five and Michael Scott. Five stars. Five stars. Michael Scott, 55 miles. Elmer King, he's just, there we go. He ran past as we were talking. Literally. We called that shot. Michael shot. Oh, my giddy in. So, Elmer King, we wrote down 
At 501 had 30 miles. Now at 1001 has 50 miles, so he's on track. And, and you might Four. think, oh, why did Elmer King slow down? Literally every athlete on this page slowed down. There's more more obstacles are oh, open. everyone's slowing down. It's gotten colder. There's more penalties out there for the uh, for the everyone, elites or not. Everyone's has slowed down and will continue to slow down for the whole 24 hours. So we also, I also, you took a screenshot of both of them, but I just made little notes. The woman that I made a note of was Callie because she at 5:08, it was the closest one to five hours, had done 30 miles. 9:21. She did uh, 45 miles. Okay, so both. So Chris, what's Chris's? She has nine laps done. So she was last seen at Melting Point not that long ago. Melting Point is obstacle 12. What was her last lap time? I think it was one, like 13 or something. 113, wasn't it? you're right. No, that's exactly what it was. It might not have been, though. Let me check. <laughs> so 10, 19, if, if it's the exact, which it won't be the exact same, but if it was the exact same, 10, 19, 10, 20. Would be 50 miles for Chris Roglowski. She's a little bit behind what we would like to see for her to get 100 miles. Callie, the same she's way. Callie's, steady. She's pretty steady. She is steady, but but every woman, every everyone's going to keep slowing down. That's why we want 50 right now. What I mean by she's steady, she's slowing down less than other women. Okay, but still, she's not at 50 at 10 p.m. No, she's not. Was she at 50 at 10 p.m. last year? Probably. That's why we got so excited. There's got to be a way for us to find that. Mm. Blitz. That was less exciting than I hoped. <laughs> so, um, looking back at Cage Crawl, let's watch the. Oh, no, I was going to see if we watch the entrance. You can see that guy. Okay, that guy's on his face. That is, oh, that is a terrible way to do that obstacle. Do not go on your face. Okay, so we see, okay, so there we go. You can also, that's a great shot of the mop heads that are just kind of mm, they dropping are pretty in your gross. face. They're really gross. And it's it just from a, now look, you're in nasty water. Like everyone's running on dirt and mm. then they're getting in that water and it's muddy, dirty, nasty water. The water's gross, 100%. It's not soft, clean and dyed and a nice but, color. But that's like your face. That's just. Ugh. I don't think if you're doing these races, you can be a bit precious like that. It's kind of part and parcel, isn't it? No, no, you really should. Let's check the paddle. Yeah. Maybe if you get a view. So yeah, I, I was looking forward to um, doing that 10 o'clock check-in. Wasn't as exciting as you were hoping. It wasn't as exciting as I was hoping. If you are looking for a picture from Tough Mudder where someone looks like they're about to drown, mm -hmm. this is the obstacle you want to go to. Cage crawl. I oh. have often searched stock images for Tough Mudder about to drown. Yeah. You'll, and, it'll, uh, it'll be from this one. And now I know. Thank you. Okay, here's another tip for cage crawl. If it stresses you out, and if you're really like, oh, no, remember that all you need to do is stand up. 
there is literally no danger at this obstacle. All of those, Sarah, I caught water seems level 100%. I agree with you. They need more water in there to uh, raise the stress level a little bit. There's no reason people should be going through face face first or, or stomach down. It's, no. it's, it's intended to be face up. So, like, you have two I mean, to be honest, of, uh, I would rather keep my chest out of the water, though. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd, uh, I totally agree. So yeah, it's a stressful obstacle, but if you just realize all you need to do is stand up, then mentally it removes a lot of the stress from you. All those cage sections, they will hint, they, all you have to do is stand up and it'll stand up with you. It'll literally just open like a, like a swinging door. So when you know that there's no actual danger to yourself, it removes a lot of the, uh, a lot of the stress level. Someone commented and they said that it looks like the water is low. And yeah, you're right, 100%. Generally, it's impossible to go through this obstacle with your stomach down. Because what, what's, what's happening is when they're going through with their stomach down, they're, they're looking forward, kind of like, like when a person's doggy paddling um, in the pool. Like someone, someone who's, who's not a swimmer is doggy paddling and they're kind of, they have their face forward to breathe. And if you're able to do that, then... There's two. There's not enough water in the obstacle. Uh, it, it should be so. The water level should be high enough so that there's only about two inches, three inches maybe, between um, the water level and the fence level. It, it's when it's full. It is a stressful, stressful obstacle. Looking at the comments here, B says, "I never thought I was claustrophobic until I took on cage crawl." No, 100. It can. Uh, it's to me probably the most claustrophobia inducing obstacle um tough tough mudder and, and world's toughest mudder they try there's a lot of obstacles where they try and kind of generate that feeling that induce like uh augustus glute a few years ago or we're back when it had the the tube element to it before this year it has the the carguinet it was you know you have a, a dark black uh tunnel that you're climbing up through you got water pouring down in your face it's it's and all you have to do, honestly, on that obstacle is you tilt your head down, like put your chin against your chest, and you can breathe. Like the water can't, it like creates a, a gap for you to uh, to breathe. Um, but this obstacle, it's, yeah, no, I totally see. I, I In my mind, this is the most stressful obstacle. There's obstacles I don't like. More. I, I dislike more than this. I don't like electroshock therapy. I don't like anything. I don't like getting electrocuted. Operation, I don't mind because it's, there's a skill, the technique to operation. Or you can get through it pretty easily without getting shocked once you're once you kind of know what you're doing. But yeah, this is a this one's a toughie, that's for sure. Looking at other comments, Carly Loesch says, "Let's go, Andrew." Don't know Andrew Loesch, maybe. Um, Tim Rivetti says, "I was okay with cage crawl until they put on the mops. That just messes with me so much." Yeah, no, those mops. You can see them there. Right, the, so the first section here is the plastic sheeting where it's it's dark. It's like black inside there, and then you get to that uh, those mop heads that are kind of horizontally across before you get to that first chain link section, and they're in your face and they are nasty. No, hundred percent, Kim, you're right. River Moss forty two. Shout out to the Gilberts family. Six running and three in the pit. Okay, River Moss forty two. I love to hear that. Where you have the whole crew, and that's nine people from the Gilbert family. Make a note, at 10 11, we're talking about nine people from the Gilbert family that are out here tonight. Six running, three in the pit, the family affair. That family is going to have stories and memories to tell literally for the rest of their lives. 
looking at an athlete here. I'm not sure that looks like Heather Olson, maybe again. Um, so my very first Tough Mudder I ran with my family, with with uh, uh, my brother and two of my sisters. And then World's Toughest Mudder, my very first year, I ran with my sister. And just a great experience. Like, we've got that together. For, and even, like, pit crew. I have had my aunt and my dad out here, family, to, uh, to pit with me while I ran. Um, I've, I've talked a lot about my team, Team Fat Boys. It was three guys that I went to school with and that I worked with. And that we, we ran together uh, four or five years we ran together. Um, this is actually the first year since like 2016 or 2017 where I haven't had some of the bad boys out here with me. And so I know some of them are watching. So Scott Forrester, Nate Swanson, Joel George, and families miss you guys. But when you run World Toughest Mudder with your family, with your friends, it is literally stories you can tell for the rest of your life. Uh, Dave Thanos says, Will Hicks is the best. Dave Thanos, uh, I don't know if that's true, but you are too kind. Um, I host a podcast called World Stuff's Podcast that all we do, talk about any obstacle course race you'd like, as long as it's World Stuff is Mutter. And all year long, we talk about World Stuff. We're on a little hiatus right now, but coming back strong next year. And when we started the podcast... 2017, I think. Um, Dave Thanos was the first person to ever tell me, hey, man, love the show. And it was on course at a Toughest Mudder. I was going up a hill. I was walking with Jim Campbell, who we seen on here a little bit. And someone kind of slapped me on the back and it was like, hey, man, love the podcast. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, you can tell how many people are listening, but you don't know if they're really listening, right? And, uh, so, so I didn't know who it was at the time. So I was like, hey, man, I love the show. And they were just kept running past me. And I didn't really know who it was. And then I talked about that on the podcast. That, hey, I don't know who it was, but someone said they love the show. That was awesome. On the course. And then uh, next race I was at, Dave Thanos comes up to me. And he's like, hey, man, that was me. I'm like, that's awesome, Dave Thanos. Dave Thanos, speaking of, where are you, my man? Why aren't you at World's Toughest Mudder now that I think about it? Paging Dave Thanos. Nelson Diaz says, let's go mutters. Sarah Icock asks, is that Heather? Trevor Misek, I believe so. No, I think you're right. I think you're right, Sarah. I think that was Heather Olson. When they would spray the water down on you during cage crawl is what would get me. I'd panic every time. Yeah, so sometimes instead of those, there's uh, Evan Preparis. Evan's written several OCR books. He hosts a podcast called Strength and Speed. Um, Evan's a pretty good lock to finish in the top 10 every year. He's former maybe, military, special forces. Maybe breaking 100 this year. You know what, Evan? I don't have uh, I don't have Fran here right now to check check mileage. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys, like like Evan, that might have a shot at, at 100 miles this year. Looking at more comments here. Zach Wiz, 75 miles or bust. Um, oh, Sarah, when you're talking about the water, yeah. So they've changed cage crawl up a few times over the years. Where, where in the spots where those uh, mop heads are, sometimes they would run little water hose, like a irrigation hose, and they'd spray water down in your face instead. And so you're you're holding your breath, or you're like pushing your mouth up as far as you can, trying to breathe, and then all of a sudden you get a mouthful of water, and that'll uh, that'll stress you out too. No, you're right, Sarah. Good call. Nelson Runaway Diaz, Will Hicks is pretty dope. Okay, well, we don't have to keep. You're very kind, Nelson. Thank you very much. Um, very kind. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What happened on this? Huh? 
<laughs> nothing I can say. You know, I think he, you know what happens sometimes until you get it. This is like, I've been out on the course where I like to drive right to right left. And it's hormonal. Like, the night. He can do it, but he just, he, he literally, he just got paid. Spin to win. Did they announce the location for next year yet? No. They typically announce. Oh, Trevor is actually already answering your question here. I just heard one. They typically announce the location for the next year at the end of the brunch. So, Jason's wondering if you can uh, hear him there. No. No. Jason, we haven't heard your audio in a while. Um, Dave Thanos couldn't get away to get here a new job maybe next year. Dave, we miss you. Are they um, using bracelets or carabiners this year? Have you answered that? Oh, Scott, Scott Forrester, Team Fat Boys. Team Fat Boys? Them Fat Boys. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Them Fat so, Boys. Um, just, just, we talked about it a little bit, but they all have the bracelets again. So after you finish your 25th mile, your fifth lap, you get a bracelet. It's mm -hmm. called an obstacle bypass bracelet. Or wristband, rather than calling it, you can use that to bypass one obstacle, any obstacle on time, on course, at any time, one time. Mm -hmm. So there's a little strategy. Sometimes people save them up for the last lap or last two laps. Sometimes people use them. The elites will figure out what is the longest, just time-wise, obstacle on course, mm -hmm. and they'll save it and use it for that obstacle sometimes. But you get you get your first. Um, obstacle bypass wristband after your, your fifth lap and then you get one per lap after that so mm. every time you cross the finish line the athletes will run over to the timing tent mm -hmm. they'll get a wristband you have to run over right away because otherwise um, there's a chance for someone trying to get multiple wristbands coming like five minutes later saying oh i didn't get it so you got to get over there within a minute of crossing the uh, finish line um, for chair beaters, there are no golden chair beaters this year. Uh, this is a change from last year. Everyone who's here, open contender, elite contender, everyone is eligible for prize money. Whoever runs the most miles, whatever category you're in, open contender, elite, you could, you but well, you are eligible to podium to win the race. Mm. The golden chair beaters kind of skewed that in the past, and that's why it was only an open way of options where you could get a obstacle. Uh, basically a, a shortcut the, the distance was the same but you'd be able to bypass multiple obstacles mm -hmm. so to, just to keep the playing field level there are no obstacle wristband oh my goodness that is tight <laughs> see some little feet sticking out that did not look like a, why did he go through that way my goodness i it, thought he was crawling back up it looked like he was trying to yeah i, I, I think i feel like head first like that guy there is more a traditional way to get um, Most likely. I don't think I've ever seen someone put the feet first or something like that. Mm. Maybe he got to the end and then decided to turn around to go feet first so he didn't go face first into the water. <laughs> but so Scott, instead of the, um, the oh, yeah. carabiner challenges this year, there are five different challenges. That you can do every, every three hours. They started them a few hours ago, and then every three hours they rotate to a different one. Um, one's a hot sauce based challenge. One is a cold based challenge. One's a strength based challenge. One's an electric. I think when Jason comes back, we should go look at the challenges sure, and have a go. Three, Jason says. He's we're playing charades. 
W. W. Yeah. Sounds like. Sounds like. Sounds like W. W. West side. W. Watch the ear. Mouth. Mouth. Just shoot me a text, Jason. Listen. Playing charades with our producer here. Two words. Movie. (laughs) I'm only better at this game. Set in World War II. Casablanca. Do we know what obstacle he's at? It's one word, Jason. What obstacle is he actually at? I'm just wondering if he's talking about an athlete going through, perhaps. Could that be it, Jason? So talking of athletes going through, I reckon we're expecting to see uh, Christina Roglowski. Christina the... Roglowski. Christina Roglowski. Uh, I believe he is at the obstacle. French press. Okay. So I would be expecting to see Christina Roglowski between 1025 and 1030. 1025 and 1030. Going by her Short. lap times and then a few minutes. Eight minutes from now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm actually going to go for 10, 27, 04. Are there any optional challenges this year for a bypass band? He just ignored uh, me completely last year was interesting. No, so, so it's been to win Stratic. The challenges, when they do those challenges I was just talking about, there's like a, there's a hot tub one, there's a cold water one or ice one. There's an electrical one. There's a strength one. I'm not sure what the fifth one is based on. Um, those are for, you get a patch. If you successfully complete them, you get a patch. And it's basically for bragging rights. It has no actual effect on mileage or on the course or anything. Now, other than you get a cool patch, you put on a backpack or on a jacket. I love patches. I love stickers. People like patches. People like stickers. So We're learning that, aren't we? Love the, uh, love the comments. Love the feedback. You know. Hey, while you're here... We'd love it if you could like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want to support live stream coverage like this, and get free stickers, go to the <laughs> go to the patreon.com slash the OCR report. For less than five bucks a month, you can support the sport we love. Live stream coverage like this, best race photography, best podcasts in the sport, and uh, we would love to have you as a member of the OCR report. Uh, patreon.com slash the OCR report. Well, we could turn away from Jason's camera, but he seems to be sprinting towards something, and I'm not sure what, so I want to keep with him. Um, I, I just made a very accurate prediction on no. time, which was, I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're going to see Chris coming through on our next lap at 10.27.04. 10.27.04. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just over three minutes from now, mm-hmm, we'll uh, mm-hmm. test your prognostication on Uh-huh. Run, Jason, run. I wonder at what point, like, everyone who's running gets annoyed at us just sitting here. And us sitting here? Yeah. Because... Being nice and cozy. And... You know what? I'm, I'm not that cozy. Like, I'm, I'm kind of, I need to pick up my, uh... You should put some trousers on. I didn't bring any trousers. I brought my hands. Uh, <laughs> I need to put my, uh... Don't make me laugh. Dry rope. Dry rope. Dry rope. Your generic branded <laughs> warm rope. I don't know what generic. <laughs> Still need to. Fast Tyler. Oh, please let the next guy be slow Tyler. Oh, I didn't see it. Aww. Oh, well. oh, oh, lap 10 finish. 10 24 59. Christian Yeah. So she just came through. I originally wrote down on my piece of paper 10 25. And I was like, it's not going to happen at 10.25. So I wrote down 10.30, and I was like, that's too much. So I wrote down 10.27, and I was three minutes out. Apologies for that. Christina Roglowski. So So we're back to Augustus Loop. You'll notice, if you know Augustus Loop, you'll notice that this is not the Augustus. This is not your daddy's Augustus Loop. This is Augustus Loop. Call it what, 2.0, 2.5? Let's have a quick look at the standing because someone's asking. Oh, here we go. You've already done it. Um, Chris, at, well, let's say almost half 10 to make it easy. Sure. 10.30. That's 50 miles. That's uh, a wise one. What does that mean? That's on pace. That's on pace for 100 miles in 20. 20- 
five hours. Oh, was, was it not 25 and a half hours last year? You have, she did 25 and a half last year. That's it, almost exactly. Yeah. So, so last year it was 25 hours and 16 minutes for 100 miles. 25 hours and 16 minutes uh -huh. for 100 miles. Uh -huh. So we are well within that margin of time. So she wants 105. Which again, she didn't officially tell us. She implied it heavily. And we, we got creative with our questioning. <laughs> she did not say the words 105. She didn't say the words 105. We asked her, what's your goal for this year? And she said, it's a big number. And we said, does that number have three digits? We were basically playing a game of 20 questions. Mastermind. <laughs> yeah. And she said, yes, it does. And I, we said, does that number end in a zero? And she said, no, it does not. Okay, here we go. Top down, looking at Augustus Loop. So you see how this Augustus is a, like a circular tube Augustus. made of rope or cargo net? Yesterday during the hot lap, the, the person, I don't know if volunteer or top butter boy, was telling us to climb it like a spider, which means your arms and legs out to your side. Because if you do it that way, it will hold the tube shape, the hold the mm -hmm. Kind of the vertical shape of the uh, the cargo net will hold it, mm -hmm. and so I tried that for, for like first half of the two, and yeah, it did exactly what she said. It I'm holds. not seeing much water going down though. No, I'm not either. That's I was seeing we were seeing some earlier when we were out here. I'm not sure if that's light flashing around or. Mm -hmm. But then, oh yeah, look, the water's off. It's got it's got water. Capabilities, it looks like. But Just then I him. tried calling the new, uh, climbing up the, the new blue like a ladder with my arms and legs in front of me. And it again, it happened, like she said, the tube kind of tilted. A little bit. But it was still yeah. much, much easier yeah. to climb up that I way. think without the water, just climbing that way. Uh, just going back to the women quickly. Callie was last seen at um, Melting Point, which is obstacle 12 at 10.24. So that was four minutes ago. Obstacle 12 of 20. Say that one more time. Callie, Callie was last seen on, on lap 10. Okay. On her 10th lap. On her 10th lap. At melting point, obstacle 12 of 20 a few minutes ago. Okay. So she, oh, so she might be mm. a bit behind. Because Chris has already finished her mm -hmm. 50, 55th mile. Callie is on her 55th lap, 50th mile lap. But she's still eight obstacles away from the finish line. She's on her fiftieth mile lap. She's only she's, she's completed miles? forty-five miles. Callie, are you telling me Chris has lapped Callie? No, but Chris oh, is I'm sorry. now. Chris has finished fifty. Callie has finished forty-five. Callie is on. She's trying to finish her fiftieth mile. Chris has finished lap ten. Callie is still on lap ten. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Oh, water. Oh, we got it. Augustus. Speak it, Augustus. and it arrives. That's that's the loop. Shane Allison, looks like the new loop is a bit more time consuming than the previous version, more taxing too. Shane, I totally agree. Um, it's not, it's, if claustrophobia was your, your problem. Yeah, your it fear, seems like it's a different problem now than what it yeah, used to be. It's kind of, it's kind of changed. It's a similar structure, but it's a different, that is some disgusting looking water. My goodness. Chocolatey. Oh, it's chocolate, like Willy Wonka. Duh. That's disgusting. Let's look at the men quickly because we spoke about the ladies. Have you watched Willy Wonka and Charlie Baxter lately? Which one? Either one. I don't know. My daughter was it's in like a, a stage production of it. And so we watched the movie, the original movie. She played Willy Wonka. Did you? And so we watched the Gene Wilder one. And those kids are terrible. Are they? They're terrible children. I was happy to see them. Turn they actually are all awful, awful children. Yeah. I do like doing the um, group assault, though. Whenever I want something that's unreasonable. Daddy. I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. That is, that is Baruch Gasol. Terrible children. Terrible. So, three men with 11 laps, 55 miles. Michael Scott at 9.39. So, we should be seeing him come on another lap soon. So, Tyler Beerman in fourth place. Now, Tyler has been in the pit for a minute. So, we're not sure if Tyler's been. We, we checked on him. He's not injured. He's not. Um, but we're not sure if he's going to be going back out or not. So we'd we'll like to see Tyler drop down the standings um, as, as the race goes on. And that's one thing we were talking about is, you know, we have all these guys, 50 miles, super fast. 
stuff happens. Stuff can change. It's a long race. It's a hard race. It's a taxing race physically and mentally. Uh, just because someone does great the first, you know, ten hours or ten thirty right now, it's it's a twenty four hour race. You gotta you have to you know keep doing laps twenty four hours to win this race. But just to reassure everyone, Tyler's he's taking a break. He's in the oh, pit. Yeah. No, he's he's not he's not injured. There's nothing seriously wrong with him. He's just deciding what he wants to do. Yeah. Uh, but there's no nothing yeah, he needs to be worried about. Uh, Michael Scott, he's on lap 12, last seen at Melting Point uh, about eight minutes ago. Josh Fiore, last seen at uh, Stock and Dirt about also, well, four minutes ago. So that's the difference of obstacle four and obstacle 12. So Michael shot his four or eight obstacles ahead of Joshua Fiore. Mm -hmm. You're just based on lap finisher time. He's about 30 minutes ahead of Josh Fiore. And his last lap was 16 minutes faster than Fiore's. Shot's last lap was 16 minutes faster than Josh Fiore's. Yeah, so Josh Fiore's last lap was 120. Yeah. Michael Shaw just put down a one hour, four minute lap. Uh -huh. His that's last nice. lap was 104 minutes. Prior to that was 101. Prior to that was With one. all obstacles open, that's very impressive. <laughs> They've opened the diarrhea source. That's wonderful. Are you British by any chance? Because that's highly sarcastic. Chris has moved up to 12th overall. We might, expect to see her. Mark Mattress. Uh, <laughs> Chris has moved up to 12th overall. Yeah, I mean, she was in 18th overall earlier. And we just expect to, to keep seeing her move up because just just looking at the numbers, not even the names, people are going to be dropping out, dropping Mark, down. Mark Batchers ran 115 miles two years ago. So kind of knows what he's talking his, about, huh? Uh, his obstacle. Augustus Clip. Augustus Clip. 30 miles in 194 place. Sure Crypto profits. Oh, I'm probably about to his last this is a great shot of what it looks like out there when you're running by yourself. We've, shot, we've had a lot of shots from the obstacles mm -hmm. where everything's well lit and kind of feels safe. But when you're out there running, it must be obstacle, so difficult. You're kind of alone. Like this, you got, you got your headlamp and you got the trail in front of you. And uh, it's great when you come up on, like right now, it's coming up on people in front of them. Maybe you can hang out. Oh, Hopefully, they're running about the same pace or same speed as you, and you can uh, stay with them for a bit. Maybe help you help you over an obstacle or help you up. You mm -hmm. can help each other pass an obstacle. I'll stick the finish line up as well in the corner, so you, you can see people that are crossing line because people are still coming across. It looks a lot brighter here. It must be quite nice coming back in to the pit, seeing the lights, seeing the people, this music playing. It feels a bit more human. If you are, if you've never run real steps better, you're looking at this, you're like, I can never run 24 hours. Don't feel bad, because almost no one out here runs the full 24 hours. There's a lot of... And, and the people who do, when we, and this always astounds me, a lot of the athletes that we see performing very well have regular jobs, too. They, they're coaches. Oh, I mean, Chris is a nanny. That's a really difficult yeah. job. Tyler Beerman is a UPS driver. Yeah, and they're training an awful amount and performing at, I think, an incredibly high standard, which a lot of athletes would not be expected, would, would not be expected to be working as well as performing this well. So yeah, these guys can run for 25 and a half hours, but I mean, there's, there's a lot that goes into that, plus genetics, and a lot of, a lot of hard work. I wouldn't expect myself to be able to do that, no matter how much I trained. There's fast Tyler. I don't know what happened to slow Tyler. I, I really feel like that's part of like a couple's costume. I hope, I hope it's a like a bib thing. I don't know. Unless he's maybe, I don't know. Maybe it, he doesn't eat. It is indeed Mark Battress. Fast thing, Tyler. Hey, Mark Battress. Great job, Will. Love the group. Awesome. Mark and his wife, Natalie. Hope you're watching at home. The uh, local lead athletes. Mark, um, where are you at, man? We'd love to have you out here. Maybe next year. Get to be Amelia Boone back. Mm. You can come. Bring Natalie. Bring the kids. Make it old school. Yeah, Mark is the current record holder mm -hmm. for most miles, a man or woman, 115 miles. Said it back in 2021. I only knew that before last year because I did it as a trivia question. Okay. 
uh, for a trivia night, an OCR trivia night I sure. did. So I was like, most miles? That's a good question. Yeah, uh, somebody asked, how is Jess Steve doing? Uh, Jesse Steve, uh, laps, six laps. Last seen at uh, on his seventh lap at Swinging Tips at 10.27. Oh, that's Which is Shane about Allison was talking to. Nine minutes ago. That was up. That was too early. But not related, but like the question. Crypto pop. Ah, okay. Up. All right. Gotcha. So if you're watching this race, you're like, I could run 24 hours. You don't have to. You don't like, expect it. You to. run, if you can, you run the, you know, the first five miles, as much as you can run. Like maybe you've run, you know, 10, 15 miles. I've, I don't know the longest I've ever run. I completed really a marathon, but I didn't run the full 26. Mm -hmm. um, but you, if you can run, you know, the first, most of the first two to three laps, mm -hmm. there's a lot of power hiking, a lot of hiking. Kind of the rule of thumb to get to, what they say to get to 75 miles is you got to run all the downhills. Yep. Or, I'm sorry, you got to run the, the, the flats, mm -hmm. bomb the downhills, and walk the uphills. To get 50 miles, it's, it's very similar. Like, when you say run, could you jog? Yeah, run, jog. There's, there's not, honestly, you've been out here, there's not a lot of running happening, mm -hmm. right? It's like, this is a long race, I, and most of the running is at like a, you know, 12 minute mile pace. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's a shuffle. It's What's a, that, a kilometer pace? That's a great question. Uh, I can look it up. 12 minute mile, <coughs> mile. Uh, is, that, you know is that pace or speed? Is that pace or speed? Yeah. I feel like that's the same thing. They're not. Pace and speed are two different things. Well, 12 minutes a mile is a speed. Yeah, but like it goes, it does get If I'm driving 55 miles per hour, that's my speed. Somebody back me up here. And my pace. Just as, a con as an abstract concept. Next year, hopefully, for Mark Mattress. Awesome. Love it. Love it. So we're looking here at, uh, I so no, say well swung. You did not just Google the difference between pace and speed. Well, I didn't. I actually put 12 minute mile and kilometer, okay. but then somebody asked on Google, how many miles per hour is a 12 minute mile pace? So the pace is 12 minute mile. The speed is five miles per hour. Do you see? I feel like it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. The speed. So well, speed is per time. hour. So I measure my running in like, what do I do? Like I if it's a, right. it's six minute kilometer, that's a six minute pace. Right. But that doesn't mean my speed so is six. Is speed. Right. I'm like, not doing six kilometers per hour. I'm really bad at doing math once the race starts, okay. even if I'm sitting down. So speed and pace are different, but I don't, I can't work them out. So, so five miles per hour. Keep talking while I do this because it's not interesting for people. So we're looking at the penalty entrance. Um, if you fail, oh, so that's a seven-minute thirty kilometer, which is actually pretty slow. Pretty slow. Okay. Yeah. Which well, is eight kilometers question, per I hour. You Twelve minute miles are slow. That was... No, but I want to know how slow compared to me. Oh, okay. When you <laughs> when you run at home on your Garmin or on your watch, you, you measure in kilometers. Uh -huh. Like I just did a twelve kilo run. Or whatever. <laughs> Do you even know what you're talking about? Absolutely. I'll do a 5K. Sure. And I'll go with a 5K pace. Sure. So five kilometers. Uh -huh. Five kilos. Five kilometers. Sure. Five sure. Kilos, kilos is sure. the weight. Kilometers. No, no, kilo. 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 Is, yeah, ki kilometer. We're saying ki the same thing. No, a kilo sure. is a weight. Distance. It's short for kilogram. Kilometer. So you weigh 60 kilos. I feel like kilo could go either way. It could, but it doesn't. It's, stop, it's stop making stuff up. <laughs> Speed and pace are the same thing. The moon is the sun. <laughs> so we're watching the penalty for well swung. <laughs> These guys are going out there. It's a it's a trek. It is a trek. One thing when we talked about this since the beginning of the race, the penalties this year are a lot more distance based. There's still some kind of angle to them. Pace and speed are. I agree to disagree, Sip. Uh, the penalties are definitely. All right, all right, enough comments, John Bobby. I don't remember asking anybody. <laughs> Keep coming. 
you guys watching a race? <laughs> oh, no. Good. All right. All right. So we talked about the system at the beginning of the race. The penalties this year a lot more distance to them. There is some... Uh, some kind of fun aspect, not fun, fun, but some wrinkle to them. Mm-hmm. We spend a lot of time with Fast Tyler here on this. Uh, yeah. Show. Whether it's some of the penalties, you get out to the halfway through the penalty loop and you have to bang a snake into the ground with a snake yeah. with a mallet. Um, Way too tough is on several. Uh, is on one of the one of the penalty loops. Way too tough, spelled W E I G H. Oh, because you're weighing. Way too tough. Got it, got it. Actually, here, we're looking at it right now. Way too tough. Oh, nice. And what's the weight that they have to guess? I do not know the weight, but they're looking at... Hold on, what are they doing? So, oh, it's points. It's breaking up here. It's hard to see exactly mm. what's going on. But we'll stick with it for a minute to see if it comes back. Give them a chance to, to get back in here. Oh, we've still got so long, we don't need to rush away to a different picture. We've only got about 15 hours to go. This is like coins or shells. Way too tough is traditionally a bucket like that. Although that's a garbage bucket, my goodness. Um, and then you have to. More buckets. You have to. They'll give you a weight. It'll mm. be like. Give me eight pounds of sand. Do they change it? Eight pounds of rocks. They could, absolutely. Um, like hour to hour or like every three hours. So you can't kind of get used to what you're doing. You have to kind of estimate, like, I want to put this much sand in my bucket. And then you walk or you carry that bucket around the penalty loop. Mm-hmm. And then when you get to the end of the loop, they weigh it. And you have a percentage, like, you're allowed, there's a percentage you go up or low. Like, you got to get within a certain window. Mm-hmm. If you get it wrong, you got to go back, fix that weight. And do another lap and they weigh it again. Yeah. So oh, a, the pitch is back. Fantastic. It's not a, uh, not what you call a fun penalty. Well, at World Sub 2014, it was its own obstacle, an entire obstacle, way too tough. They made it part of the penalty option here. I say option, it's not really an option. It's barely option, you got to do it. Mm. But I suppose the whole, the whole chatter tonight has been about people choosing to take penalties. So for those, they've been treating it like an option. That camera is not great. So let's, um, Jason, we're just gonna lose you for a minute because your, your pitch is not coming through brilliantly. So we're just gonna look at another camera whilst we wait for your pitch to come back. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. I think he's just like, guys, no. The wind has dropped a lot, hasn't it? It really has. As the sun set, we took the wind with it. There's still a breeze. A very slight breeze, though. We're looking out at some flags kind of waving across the uh, way from us. Long ago, the tents were blowing around. It was so strong. So we were in a 10 by 10 tent outside by the finish. 10 by 10 tent. 10 by 10 pop-up tent, we call them here in the uh, the colony. We call this a little gazebo. uh, Yeah. But the front front two legs are strapped down, like, to industrial stakes like the front two legs of our pop-up are not going anywhere the back two are not staked down well that one is so oh that's not actually three of our four legs are staked down the one that is not staked down six hours ago wind was blowing hard enough where it was rising off the ground i was looking over my shoulder as we were broadcasting i was like i hope that everything's gonna be there but i put a cooler on the corner of it kind of settled it down for the time being and no you're right wind has definitely died down. Well, that was kind of the worry overnight, wasn't it? The wind. We haven't really been worried about the cold this year. We've been only really the wind is, is what we're talking Now, it's still, you're going in and out of water. These athletes, if they're not in wetsuits. Now, I, I feel like we're seeing some wetsuits now, aren't we? Yeah, I think we are starting to see some. I feel like regular folks, like if you and me were out there running this, there's some wetsuits coming through. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is like I'd have a wet, I would definitely have a wetsuit on right now. A thin wetsuit, probably like a three mil wetsuit. But I would be running in a wetsuit. Wetsuits have way more benefits for this race than just warm. They absolutely warmth is the reason you would wear one. But some side benefits are the chafe protection. Look after your peachy skin. Um, the what? Look after your peachy skin. Yes, to protect your skin. You're gonna get. You're here, we'll see some more wetsuits here. Now that I'm, now that we're looking for, we'll see them all over. Um, so, a good call. Now, I, 
I've seen the, the people who aren't wearing wetsuits are probably the people who are on the top of our leaderboard or near the top of it. Most likely. Uh, talking about the top of our leaderboard. Oh, God. Oh, Scott. His laps have been very close to an hour. Which is a strong pace. Uh-huh. And he finished his last lap at 9.39 p.m. It's 10.46 p.m. So he's, he's, what, an hour and seven right now? And he was last seen at, lap, at Spunky Monkey nine minutes ago. So we should be seeing him in a minute. Well, he's not got to Mudderhorn yet. Oh. Mudderhorn to here is like two minutes or so. Last kind of checkpoint on the, on the course. Yeah, but it's pretty close to the end. There's then Everest. And... So this is his longest lap mm-hmm. of, the, of the night so far. Mm-hmm. Michael Chalk. It's hard to tell who we're looking at exactly here. It looks like an elite. Heather? We keep, yeah, we keep running into uh, Heather Olsen out there. Got that face line, face mask. Yeah. Face mask, face uh, shape. Torch. Oh. Headlamp, as we call it, head torch. What do I call it's it? The, uh, I call it a head torch. And you're like, and there's not a head torch. You just like to disagree with me. No, it's just, we just want to make sure we use the proper terminology. Okay. Right now. A shout out to Trevor Psychos. If you see him pass by, tell him his mom is watching and rooting for him. Thanks, OCR Report, for the live stream. You are welcome, Miss Scotland. We are, uh, Keep an eye on your boy. We're real proud of Trevor around here. He's a, uh, you probably know this already, but when we were looking at these stats from the past 11 years of World's Toughest Motor Races, Trevor's name kept popping up. Trevor. He just active. finished his, uh, sorry, he just finished his lap 10 minutes ago. He passed by and we didn't see him. Trevor did? Yep. Trevor has an active six year streak of 100 mile finishes starting in 2016. The second longest streak is two. Wow. Held by five men. Well, that's interesting because he's on 50 miles right now. Starcraft's 50 right now. So, judging About by 10 our minutes ago. 10 o'clock rule, yeah. I still think he can get 100. He's a little, maybe he's a little behind right now, but if any one athlete, if, you had, if I had gun to my head had to pick one athlete to get 100 miles, mm-hmm. I would pick Trevor Sykes. He just shows up every year, puts up 95 to 100. Maybe 105 on a good year. Bish bash bosh. Sarah Icock, let's go Heather. Whoop, Heather. Heather has really fashioned herself into an elite athlete over the last two or three years. Mm. Um, she's always enjoyed OCR and enjoyed the sport, but she's really started working out and taking fitness seriously. And uh, she, last year, looked up her results from last year. She finished in fifth place last year. Sounds miles. pretty serious to me. Yeah. Shot Everest. So, Chris Roglowski only lost two minutes on her last lap. She's going to lap before that. She, Very yeah, good. That's maintained it. That's, mm-hmm. She's doing outstanding. Yeah, I mean, it's not a surprise. It's not a hot take to say Chris Roglowski is doing good. No. Callie lost 15 minutes. Callie lost 15? From her previous lap. Now race hasn't started yet, so... Well, that's a good shot of Everest. Everest would be a brutal off from it. So you see the two guys reaching down. One guy reaches his right, one guy reaches his left. You, when you run up there, you go for the hands. You mm-hmm. don't try and go past them. You, you, you're reaching for the hands. Then when you grab onto them, if you're a bigger guy, if you're heavier, it's hard for them to pull you up. Mm-hmm. They're like, they've got you, but they can't pull you up. What you do is you, your your arms are extended, their arms are extended. What you do is you pull up. You pull. Oh, oh gosh. Ooh, that's how injuries can happen. That's not what you do. That, that's a shame, man. I'm not sure if that was on the runner or on the guys up top, but that was not the best. I'm, I'm interested. Do you have a screenshot of the um, male leaderboard from 5 o'clock? So I was just looking at the men's results. We had Elmer King. He came through at 10.01, right. uh, 50 miles. But James Burton at 10 o'clock and 20 seconds, 50 miles. And he uh, uh, was on 30 miles, six laps at 5 o'clock, 4.52. He's aiming for 100 miles. James Burton. Mm-hmm. 
James Burton from the UK, mm -hmm. watching with interest. Mm -hmm. So what you do as a bigger guy, you get up there and they've got you, but they can't pull you up. Mm -hmm. So what you do on the bottom is it's your job to basically pump your arms. You're gonna um, pull forward. Kim you might have, but I don't think anyone mentioned the time. <laughs> you're gonna pump your arms left, right, you're gonna alternate. And that, and then with them maintaining the same amount of pressure, you're able to pump yourself and pull yourself up the wall a little bit toward them. Uh, and as you get high enough, you can, these guys are strong. They're pulling them straight up. That's great. We should be seeing Michael Scott finishing his lap very shortly because he passed Mudderhorn at uh, 10.48.54. And then when you get high enough, you can, now this guy, he's, he's a small, like a, a lighter guy. You should go up, you know, pretty easy and take the that? Yeah. And boom. Slide on up, up, and over. So those guys, you're up there. And so see how he got up there, he turns around to help the next guy. That is 100% what you do on the Everest. Someone helps you, you turn around and help the next guy up. Michael shot 60 miles, just finished his 12th lap. Can't stop, won't stop. Michael he shot. is really going for it, and he's holding firm. I, I was worried early. I mean, we've got a long time to you go, know, but he's out, holding it out. too fast, 100% of thing. Um, but... You know, until it happens, you see nothing to suggest, suggest it's going to happen. So. Well, he's got, uh, he's done well in Europe yeah. at racing, but has he done, anybody who knows how many 24 hours has he done? Has he done much 24 hour racing? Has he done much? You know, yeah, if there's, I'd love to know more information about Michael. So maybe he's done some toughest mutters in the UK or in Europe. Um, Europe's so toughest mutter, he was. Um, I wonder if. Um, and see more of his results. Running, you, you see Everest there in the background. And I feel like, are we on the filthy loop from Everest? Possibly. Found some inf information on him, but it's all in Danish. It's all in Danish. Dalik mav ak et lab for man skal mabe ik man timer. Probably we need some Danish athletes. Leon, are you watching? Can you help us out here, please? Uh, Europe's toughest mother. Something after kilometer twenty. Something twelve timer race. Something something. Yes, but oh yeah. That really makes sense to me. Oh, oh, can I say it in English? I see it in American, apparently. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's do a bit of Google Translate. Well, we punched the numbers and it turns out that Dennis Colby. Amount of steps putting in as a victory member are about the same as if you were run. So, what have we won? This could have been another one. So I think this is his race review that I've translated to English. Oh, sure. Europe's toughest murder Saturday evening at 20, 8 o'clock. The 12 hour race started for Jesper and I. 12 hours on a 10 kilometer route with 20 obstacles per lap. Running is described as wet and muddy. The first class was a sprint lap. An hour where there are no obstacles, so the race was strong. I found my own pace and thought I should probably reach them. Came in number third on the first lap. Ran out was number second. After a small slip. <laughs> change from my camera. Change to a Uh, I'm still not sure where he actually run there. Yeah. I ended up in first place at Europe's Toughest Mudder. There you go. He won Europe's Toughest Mudder. That's a 12 hour race. That's about as, I mean, if you're not going to run 24, 12 is about as close as you can get. If you're not able to get a 24 in. There's not a lot, honestly, there's not a lot of 24 hour OCR races anymore. 
there at one point there were three or four a year, but it's really down to you play twenty four hour off sports race. I'm trying to think of another one besides what's up better. Uh, and, uh Nuclear years. used to do an overnight race or a dark race, but it wasn't twenty four hours. So we used to have the Enduro, but that doesn't we don't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah, good fun. So if you click on it, then you press that. It's super easy. Oh. Can we already read this one? Uh huh. Shout out to all the vets in the race. We Let's can go. read Shout it again. Melton. I'm going to read it one more time. Go for it. I'm going to read it a third time. Let's Shout send out it to up. all the vets in this race. Let's go, Gavin Melton. You repeating yourself? Never. Can't stop, won't stop. Boom, boom, boom. Here's the thing there's very few people watching us for 24 hours. Right now, it is 9 p.m. on the West Coast, midnight on the East Coast. So if you're in, if you're in New York City, you know what that means? The race, race started. started for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, by that theory, then, if you're in London, it's half over. It's, yeah, over. it's 4 a.m. <laughs> that, that, uh, oh no, man, this is going to be, you just watch two people fail, mm. you know, a third of the way through it, halfway through it. This is going to be a tough, tough obstacle from here on out. Absolutely. It's such a weird sport, isn't it? It's such a weird sport? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Why do we like it so much? We, uh... Because I've got to be honest with you, I have no interest in any other sport. Besides OCR. Yeah. I like sport. I like football. I like baseball. When you say football, do you mean American football? I do. Okay. Football, where you use your hands. Handball. I mean, there is some kicking, but not a lot. But the reason I lie off of sports racing, I think, I like that it is a personal sport. I like that you can, I can go out there and I can run next to Amelia Boone. Mm -hmm. I can run next to Trevor Psychos. And I'm never going to compete with them or keep up with them or even see them past the start line. But I Apart like from that. When they yeah. And okay, and especially World Tough Mudder, as opposed to now, I still love. You know, I I enjoy running Tough Mudders and mm -hmm. I enjoy the sport side of Spartan. But for competing with the Leafs, there's nothing better than World Tough Mudder because we're all on the same course. It's a five mile loop, and we're doing it over and over and over again. And I'm going to see Trevor Psychos every time he passes me. Now, I'll literally never pass Trevor Psychos. But I'm going to see him over and over and over again over 24 hours. Just a quick update. Stephanie Bland has finished her lap 10. Callie is still out there. Callie was last seen at Spunky Monkey. Callie yeah. dropping into third place. So for me, I, I mean, I'm not, I like the elites. I like talking to them. I like getting to know them. But I just like doing that with humans full stop. Sure. And I find it interesting because of their perspective on the sport that I'm not going to experience. But in terms of running with them, I don't, don't care. Sure. That doesn't do it for me. I used to enjoy running in the elite wave back in the day when it was just one big wave. Sure. But I was never getting near the top. I don't know. I think it just gives people a taste of something that you can't find elsewhere. And it's really accessible. It is. Literally, you just you need to can, you know, buy you'll, 20 you'll pairs of trainers. And, you'll have more fun if, you're, you know, if you've been running and if you're in shape. Yeah. But you don't have to be, especially to start. No. Like, you come to a, an, any OCR, you come to World Stubbs Mudder, look around here. Not everyone's a fitness model. Like you'll see all body types out there, like big, small, and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, if you're like, oh, I'm not fit. Uh, don't worry, I'm not really either. Mm -hmm. I like running. I don't. I don't like running. I like having run. I don't like running either. I like you know. I like working out. I like lifting. I like that you know mm -hmm. that pump at the end. Yeah. Um, but I love being out here on course. I love helping people. I love giving a boost. Right. So I was doing, I've been doing top butters for years before I did my first Spartan race. You know what else is, I think is interesting about it? Sorry, just to interrupt. You have to okay. think about other sports like tennis. Tennis? tennis? Yeah. I don't know. Hit the ball. Sure. In order to get good at that, you've just got to hit the ball a lot. And I just can't be bothered. Whereas if you look at this obstacle, yeah, okay, your grip's got to be good, but then you've got to learn lots of different techniques on grip. Really, I mean, okay, people like John Alban don't. 
But most of us, average humans, we have to practice the different grips. It keeps it fun. Sure. And you can progress, and it's not just, oh, hit a ball again, oh, hit a ball again, oh, hit a ball again. I'm not a big tennis guy. I mean, I'm I mean, not a big tennis pickleball. gal either. You know? I don't know what pickleball is. Pickleball? It's you like some pickleball? new American thing, isn't it? Do you? Uh, well, it's not new. Do you remember a few years ago how everyone was like, OCR is the fastest growing sport in the world? Mm -hmm. It was like 2016. Yep, absolutely remember that. Uh, well, that's pickleball now. And what is pickleball and why is it called pickleball? What a stupid name. It was invented by like two brothers on like, a family vacation somewhere. Anyway, before I lost use of my legs, I did triathlon, but now those cigars are my passion. As an adaptive athlete, just an inclusive and incredible community. Yeah, I've always said um, the second best part of obstacle course racing, the second best part of World Stuff Butter is the community. Mm, I agree. Like, the people. Now, just like anyone, there's, you know, there's some weirdos. 100% everywhere you oh, go. Yeah. But overall, on average, like literally every person I've met, almost every person I've met through World Stuff's Butter, through Tough Butter, through OCR, it's a, it's a, a good person who's looking to make themselves better. Hopefully. Um, I think that's the key looking to make all, themselves better. Like we're all flawed. Like you're going to come out of course and you're going to find people that are kind of like running from their demons. They're <laughs> trying to improve themselves and they're like, hey, this is a better, um, this is a more healthy way for me to, something to throw my passion into, throw, yeah. my, um, throw my time into. Come on, Team UK. From Bob Jace, Bob Jace's Jones. UK's doing strong. Yeah. Um, how's your, uh, how's your guy doing? He's out of the top five now. But yeah, no, uh, the second best thing about World Stuff is Hunter is the community. Mm. The first best thing is the sweet, sweet bids. <laughs> I love how every event has its different things. Like, bibs are tough butter. Um, the bands at OCRWC, headbands at Spartan. And it used to be the little the wristband and bands as well. Spartan's bringing a thing back next year called the Pro Band. It's oh, a, okay, yeah, yeah. It's like a, an arm band. Yeah, people like those, don't so, they? Spartan, yeah, Spartan. Spartan owns the butter now, but they're uh, they're making some good changes. Chris Smalley, the race director for World Stuff's Butter, is also very, very influential over on the Spartan side now mm. with uh, some race directing stuff and some kind of global product stuff. And they're making some uh, some exciting changes next year. I think that's fair. I, I like what he's doing, and I like how he he's very um, intentional with what he does. Yeah, and he seems to really, really want to get it right. For the right reasons. This is Grappler. Say it. Grappler. The Grappler. They, uh, don't, don't turn oh, 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 phew. Like he's coming straight, the straight for our face. <laughs> See what's coming for it, look like. Oh, Callie's done what? 50 he's miles. On, oh, that's the rope. I was like, is that a lizard or a snake? What is that? That's the rope, obviously. Callie has finished just just a minute ago. She finished her 50th mile. We are really terrible at seeing people cross the finish line. You know what? So we're, when we see people cross the finish line now, all we see is a an outline and a bright light, and that bright light it obscures the face because it's right there. Like we can't see faces anymore. Yeah. So they can probably see our face with their headlamp shining right in our face, but we can't see them. I wonder how Callie's feeling. Top three women, 50 miles each. Outstanding. So Callie's got 50 miles pretty much exactly at 11 hours. How do you feel about that? I, well, I feel great because I didn't run those 50 miles. Funny. If I could Very just funny. Take, take a break. To, we've talked about how my biggest goal for years and years and years was to run 50 miles in 24 hours. Uh huh. And, and those three women have done it in 10 and 11 hours, which is. It's not healthy to compare yourself to the elites because you will just beat yourself up. Those women are crushing it. Yeah. These men the same. Michael shot was 60 miles. Uh, two men, Joshua Fiore and Austin Azar with 55. Joshua Fiore and Azar both have 100 mile uh, runs in their in their back pocket. They've done before. These guys are doing this event faster than I can run on the road. And they're doing obstacles. Yeah. And on Rocky Trail. Uh -huh. Uneven uh -huh. cactuses. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's uh, I, I they these these 
totals are aspirational, but they are not to be, they're not emulatable. Like I would, if you, like don't beat yourself up if you can't run 60 miles in 10 hours and 52 minutes like Michael Shaw. It's very few people in the world. I think just getting a lap done in the middle of the night is a big thing. And I say just, I don't mean just. I think getting a lap done in the middle of the night is a really big thing. And we've got, you know, one, two, three, seven, seven guys at 50 miles that haven't hit the 55 yet. Mm. Is my audio not working? It is. It, it, there was one point when I was out there that it sounded like I was hearing you through hers. I think you're good now. I mean, from um, what I can see, that 100% might have happened. Yeah, it did happen. Uh, when you are out. Like, like, oh, also they told us not to do more. Yeah. I, read I heard all that, yeah. Um, and saw the text for it. Um, yeah, I, I think it's an issue with the app. I need to bring it to them. People like it, I've had that happen before where it's just like I can't get audio from it. I try to restart in it to see if that helps. I don't know. Um, if I ever do this frantically, right. that means I've got a, 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 a elite athlete okay. coming up. Okay, cool, cool. So a lot of times, there's been multiple times where y'all have been on the... What was the uh, what was race? Was that? that was what I was trying to tell you, that I couldn't, you weren't, it didn't oh. sound like your mic was on. No. Yeah. Wow, you couldn't hear me. I was, I was trying to do W with one yeah, hand. Yeah, no, oh, that makes sense. Left side. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Will, obvious what you know. Mike, press the button. Your mic right here. Yeah. Like, blah, blah, blah. I'm reading some comments. These are not my words. These are from Lee. Lee says 53 minutes till the race starts. Correctly. I'm not sure what Lee's referring to. <laughs> Everyone looking strong still, says Lee. Well done. It also might have been over here. Season. Watching, we're looking at Everest right now. You guys reaching down to help. Call them the Everest Angels. It looks like that's Francis Lackner in the very front there. You may be able to see he has a rose in his hat. He wears that rose to honor his mom who's passed away. Is it the Mudderhorn Man? What are they called? Well, okay, so they don't really have it. Okay, it depends who you ask. They don't have an official name like the Everest Angels, but. The, if, we, if next time we see Mudderhorn, you'll see that there's a the the first ten feet that you get mm -hmm. to like the slick part mm -hmm. has a giant rain energy mm -hmm. like sponsorship placard, mm -hmm. rain energy sponsor of Tough Mudder. And so, so who was that again? They were trying to be called Rain Energy. Rain Energy. Energy drink. For energy. Um, Kim Rivetti loves that everyone's getting in. Kim, I'm not sure what joke you're talking about. What I joke? Don't I don't. I don't think I'm not anything. Much for jokes, I don't think there's any jokes going on. This is super We're serious. Not much for jokes. Um, so they used to call. They wanted to be for a minute. I don't know if they wanted it to be called or someone was like, "Hey, uh, the Rain Men." <laughs> but then, like, let's say no. I don't think it would ever happen. But if there was a different company to sponsor, mm. then like the Rain Men thing would kind of. Uh, it wouldn't really make sense anymore. Yeah. But for now, while Rain is the sponsor of. I'm not sure they're a bunch of tough butter general or butterhorn specifically. I, I they had potential as far as as far as you know nicknames go. There's worse names than Rainman. <laughs> that was a movie years ago. I know. I'm, I'm not that old, uh, that young. <laughs> Tom Cruise. It was a like book actually. No, that was the Rainmaker. John Grisham. Any, John Grisham, very good. Individuals, you would like to see. Any uh, individuals. Psychos. We're gonna look up. Just for fun, as individual athletes, C I C H O S Z, Trevor Psychos. Chichos. Yes, Z. O S Z. Trevor Chichos. I've done really well with the names this year. You know what? So this is your second year as a broadcaster. You've got some. Uh, oh, look at that guy soloing it! Outstanding. Well done. Oh, they're asking. Someone's asked to see. Can we see some of the Dublin walls? I guess next time we send someone out, these are static cameras we're seeing at the minute. We might be able to get someone to the Dublin walls at some point. My next plan is to take the camera at operation to, I'm sorry, at grappler to operation. Cool. Awesome. And then after that, I can go to Dublin walls. So the plan is when Jason goes back out, which will be when he is ready, uh, to take the camera away from grappler. It's been there for a while. 
and obviously he's going to take it to operation which is not far away and then he'll head to dublin walls which actually i think is not too far from that either so that's quite handy yes. uh so we'll get you some shots of dublin walls and operation So there we go, Trevor Psychos. 18th place, 50 miles. Nice, nice, nice. Can we look at our top, how many men have run 50 miles so far? If he's in 18th place with 50 miles. Let's look at the top 10. If it's not on there, I will have a look on the results so on my phone. Think, I don't know if we can display more than just the top 10, but it'd be interesting to see how many men have run 50 miles so That's far. That's 10 laps, right? 10 laps. That is 23 men have done that. 23 at 11 o'clock have run 50 miles. I'm telling you, I so I, I do remember I said, I think we can have eight guys hit 100, right? Is that what I said? You said eight men with 100, four men 110. I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about the, well, okay, four men at 110, I said? Mm -hmm. huh. I did not say that. You said four men at 110. Eight men with 100, four women will get 100, and one of those will be Chris. I said two women will get 100, and two women will get 90 or above. I'm feeling pretty good about my eight men getting 100. Um, four men getting 110. Oh, that's going to be tough. You got better feel like Tyler Beerman's off the board for 110. Um, three. I can't. I don't want to change it now. I'm not going to revise it. Maybe Isaac Sanderson. Picks up the picks up the slack you, you there. Can. You can. No, no, no. Let's just. I'm gonna let it let it play out. Let's see what the, let's see what happens. But I feel pretty good about my eight men getting 100 miles. We'll see what happens overnight. So it's obviously going to people are gonna slow down. I'm not gonna put this comment up because I think there's a word that we won't want to use. Uh, but let's let's censor that. What's this nonsense that TM <laughs> did something soft? and went world's easiest mudder on Dublin walls with a ledge. I actually don't, I think the ledge makes the walls harder because without the ledge, it's just a wall. With the ledge, it's an Irish table. And yeah. an Irish table is much harder than a wall. No, I agree with you. Um, I can do a wall in my sleep. An Irish table takes me a lot more work. I absolutely did say four at one ten. So Simon, thank you for keeping me accountable. Uh, between you and Fran, I will not, uh, you know, like whatever. I'm, I'm optimistic. I like to think the best of people. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. What do you oh. think? Any 125ers? Any 120, 125 is going to be tough this year. I don't, I don't think I don't that's going to so. happen. Uh, 125 is going to take the perfect course, the perfect weather, which this is probably as close to perfect weather as you're going to see. I mean, what is it? It's, it's warm enough where... It's quarter past 11. I'm not wearing my dry robe yet. I'll step I've... in and say something about Dublin Walls. Just yeah. About how it's one of those obstacles where it's like... Yeah, jump on this. It's just there. I'm on. Oh, oh, on. It's it's just the repetitiveness of it. Mm. It's not a crazy hard obstacle. If if you got good upper body strength, you can get up that by yourself. And there's people out there helping. But man, when you do that thing over and over, when it's ten o'clock the next morning, you know tomorrow. Yeah. This morning, tomorrow morning, it's it's not easy. And it's still good. If if you got the strength, you can still do it. It's just gonna wear on you over over and over again but i think the comment and, that dublin walls are easier with a um, ledge than oh, just no, a wall and there's Tyler veerman if he wants to step in and come chat with you guys just see what's going you're welcome to this, this headset is free So Tyler Veerman, past hundred miler, has joined us in the in the broadcast booth. Tyler, we had some people notice that you'd been in the pit for a, a few minutes. And they were concerned. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Just kind of resting. Um, kind of getting my head straight. Thinking about some things. Sure. <laughs> eating, trying to eat. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I was struggling a little earlier with that. With so, nutrition. With the... yeah, a little bit. Okay. I think uh, I think I kind of opened it. It was some sugar. <laughs> really. I kind of, kind of, yeah, felt just a little nauseous, just consistently. I okay. Mean, it wasn't too bad, but sure. You know, I noticed it was. I was digging in a lot of sugar. But. So no injury, no like physically, you're you're fine. Yep. But but right now you're just kind of hanging out in the bed. Kind of just hanging out. Yep. Um, 
you know, just kind of want to watch people right now. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just chilling for right now. Okay. So, but yeah, everything's okay. I'm not. Okay. Uh, I'm not hurt. Sure. Okay. So. I think that's um, what people were worried about because you'd gone to the pit. We didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Good to hear that you are. We've still got you well. in. You're still in fourth place right now. Fifth or fifth? Isaac. Isaac took. Oh, it's just over. that has yeah. just that literally changed just happened in the last few minutes. Okay, yeah. yeah 50 Isaac miles. You've got 50 miles on the clock already. That's yeah. That's yeah, good. I, I think I averaged a little bit faster. Or yeah, for the entire 50 today versus 50 uh, last year at Worlds. I think I kind of held a little bit. You had really fast days. laps. You kind of, you were slightly behind a few, and mm -hmm. then you caught up to people and kind of climbed really quite quickly. And your laps have been, your laps are really speedy. I haven't even checked here. So Tyler's getting a chance to look at his at his splits from his first 10 laps here. Okay, so between one to three minutes. So what do you think when you look at your splits there? You happy with those or? Yeah, you know that's. I see some consistency of kind of, kind of slowing down a little bit, but not, not that much. Um, my goal was to start out just a little bit, a little bit slower than I did last year, and, and um, I wanted to start making up time, you know, later than night. And I think this this strategy definitely would have played sure. in that favor. Tyler, I'm going to adjust this oh, real yeah. quick. <laughs> Sweet. So we're only at eleven, say eleven twenty p.m. Mm -hmm. um, you know the race obviously isn't over, and in fact, we kind of like to say that the race starts at midnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've said that so many you know, times if you were to already. Take a forty-minute break here, Go, Chris. Get back out there when the race starts at midnight. You can still do some damage. Yeah, um, I'm, gonna war I'm gonna warm up a little bit. Sure. Get some more food in me. Just something that's not. Uh, like a goo or yeah. sure some real food. Or, yes, yes. Yeah, no, we got some. Food. We got a little buffet behind you here. If you want to grab something, we're out. You got some za? We do. We absolutely. Oh. We'll grab you a slice right now. Oh my gosh! That's a pizza. That looks delicious right now. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. We got a dry row. We got <laughs> uh, pepperoni. Oh yes, you're the man. <laughs> <coughs> um. Yeah, so we're you no, know, so we're, yeah, we're glad. Just like physically, everything's okay. No, you know, ankles broken or anything like that. Yeah. Before yep. before the race, you told Fran and I that you were hope one, one of your goals. Remember this was to hit that wall and uh, and get through. And I feel like yeah. maybe, maybe you found that wall. Yeah, it's it's there. Um, I just have to think really hard about my next decision. Here. Sure. Um, and maybe if I were to go out, you know, focus more on, it sounds like a, it sounds kind of weird, but focus on other people, maybe talk with more people and just kind sure. of get it, get out of my own head, um, you know, and not, not focus as much on myself and just kind of find some, some distractions in that way. You yeah. Know? I think that would be. Javier Escobar and I, we're talking exactly about that. Because you do a race like this, you're going to get some little injuries, some little those little like niggles, you know. Some something's going to bother you during the race, and a way to take your mind off of that is by helping other people. Like turn, you know, go to, when you're at Everest, stay up there and help some people out. When you, uh, you know, get get the Mutterhorn, help those guys out. You know, like yeah. And, and honestly, it's it's because when we get kind of drawn into ourselves, it can almost be almost be like selfish. Like oh, what was me? Like yeah, you know, absolutely, stuff hurts, right? One hundred percent, and that's not untrue. But still, it's like what we choose to focus on. And like, if in Javier's thought is, if you're helping other people, then you don't have room to worry about yourself or what those little little things are bugging you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. I, I definitely, I'm gonna stay here. I'm not. I don't have any plans to leave whatsoever. Sure. I mean, that that would. You be... still have your timing chip. Oh you yes, yes. Okay. I have my timing chip. Yep. Have that nice and secure. Sure. But uh, yeah, just trying to get stuff in me and and. Uh, you know, see if I can get myself pumped up. Do you have a wetsuit if you need it? Yes, I do. Um, like a cutoff. Uh, I think it's like a shorty or whatever. Sure. Um, yeah, that. I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to wear that later in the night. Um, probably. You know, it's gonna get a little chilly. Not as cold as last year. But so we're looking at like guys coming through. Some have wetsuits on, some don't. Like it's yeah. kind of a mix. 
kind of how you feel about it kind of thing. Yeah. This guy's got a hood on even, it looks like. And, like, the, the water pits, I mean, there's a couple. Um, I always forget the names, but the, the, the tubes, the little teetering sure. tubes into the pit, like, that, that's, like, that's frigid. Um, sure. The water's not as deep, so that's nice. Um, and you can kind of find a way to, like, pull yourself out of the tube without really getting <laughs> wet if sure. you're, like, kind of cautious about it. But, right. um, yeah, I think the water obstacles themselves aren't as terrible. Uh, sure. It's just the penalties, really, that, that can yeah. add up some time yeah. if, you, if you're taking those a lot. It looks like there is if, – if, if, if the obstacles are failed, there's some, some mileage that can be uh, racked up there. Yeah. And what, the worst thing about the, the penalty mileage is that it doesn't count. Like it's not, right? You know, you're doing a you're doing a mile of penalties that don't go towards your mileage total for the race. So. Yeah, I did the. Uh, there's a penalty. It's like 800 meters. Uh, this little run loop next to the, to the obstacle. That you throw the, throw the ball on the rope. The grappler. Yes, yeah, sure. yeah, so I heard uh, that's a long. I took the penalty. penalty. And it's like that's not really worth taking like i mean it took so much time and you're going it's apparently 0.75 miles uh with with like a bit of swampiness in the middle so yeah. it's, it's a big it's a pretty deep little little swamp well that's so what we've said this a few times tonight that that's what they were aiming for with these penalties this year is to make them not worth mm-hmm. taking you're not gonna an athlete's not gonna choose to take a penalty over doing the obstacle which we did see a bit last year yeah yeah it was weird i was like with chris chris rogalski and um I didn't even know that she took the penalty. On the course, I, I, just, I thought she was like way behind me, but like, I guess she just made up time or something on the, uh, on the penalty lap. Like, um, yeah, that's been her strategy. She didn't, I don't think she cares for the, the grapplers much, mm-hmm. but uh, at least not right now, but. Yeah, she's she was cruising. I mean, Chris is on. Unreal. <laughs> she's on pace for a hundred again, like last year. Oh yeah. Oh, and I would. I'm fully expecting. You know, hundred, hundred, maybe even a hundred plus. We'll see. I mean, did she talk to you about that? Uh, not not a whole lot, but you know, she's. I know she's had. She had a big week. Uh, big weekend mm. last last weekend. Like that doesn't she, seem to stop her though. No, it does not. It's just just a warm up. You know, just it's all <laughs> all prep for something like this. A leg shake out. <laughs> What you th- was this? I, I thought open? this was there? like this is actually a little, a little more challenging than I thought. At least like the banana, get you know, a little banana grips. That's tough. This guy at the end there, he was he was doing it the hard way. It looked like muscling it instead of swinging. Yeah, yeah, you, you gotta really get some momentum through that. I mean, if you're if you're not swinging as much, it's it's it it is pretty challenging. If you can't skip anything in there, like that would be that's how. You, that guy's got a good swing going. Yeah, he had finish. a good one. You can kind of pull yourself back with the uh, long bar there. Sure. What were the hardest obstacles out there? I mean, the I guess the traverse, like at least the ones that were open, like the um, kind of like the slack line you traverse across the, side with of that. the barrel in the middle. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, that just felt, I guess, the most taxing, but. Um, Oh, is, is it Chunky Monkey or Spunky Monkey? Spunky sure. Monkey. <laughs> um, that I actually had a hard time because the uh, bars were getting wet, and oh. I was I was matching on. It's a quite every big grip, aren't they? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like the rope's pretty pretty easy getting up, but those bars are just getting get nasty right now, and um, I found that kind of challenging. Like I was about to do a little chicken wing method, but sure. No, no, sh- I, I'll I'll I has done that time. constantly. Yeah, there's no shame in that game. No. Actually, you can, I mean, you I can chicken- even chicken wing this thing until you get to the uh, bananas. I chicken winged for the first time on Gibbons, uh, OCR World, so that was a real sure. treat. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who saw saw me doing Gibbons, you know, I was doing some goofy stuff on there going upside down. I, I was trying to, like, heel hook. <laughs> I was trying to, like, <laughs> kind of, like, get my foot up on, on the Gibbons and, like, just really reach out. To like the next one, like I don't know, I just kind of thought of that strategy in the heat of the moment. It's like maybe I'll just try it, just go upside down, and like, and yeah, it probably looked absolutely ridiculous. But how did uh, how did it work for you? Uh, not not that great. I and I think I was going through it a little too fast. Sure. Um, I was 
I had, I was trying to swing too much um, and skip some, skip a few. I think, you know, I, I watch um, Atkins and like, like six other people go through and it's just so controlled, so smooth and, you know, just one after the other, like no. Well, the, the tagline for that obstacle is uh, slow, smooth is slow and slow is fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think is what they say. I mean, you just, you just got to stick with that. Like. My hands were frozen from the uh, the lake bill or the the uh, dunk wall yeah. before that. It's like, oh, I had. Oh, my... when you shot out, it was still cold. Like we were in a little valley, so the sun coming up, even though it come up, hadn't popped over the mountains yet. And once it did, it got really hot. But going through the water at that time was chilly. So we saw you top of the leaderboard or near the top, and then. We got some, actually some comments and people are like, hey, what's up with Tyler? Where's, is Tyler okay? Yeah. So I walked over I, there and I walked over, you know, because we saw your computer and you were sleeping. And I was like, I was like, he's breathing, right? <laughs> and so I saw your chest rise and fall. It's like, okay, he's alive. <laughs> but I did not have the heart to wake you up and be like, hey, you okay? Like, I didn't want to, you know. Yeah, but then he came kiss. back and he's like, he's lying on the floor. And I was like, is he alive? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I checked. He was breathing. <laughs> Sleep is a gift, and I don't want to ever take that away from somebody. So I'm glad to, I'm glad to see you're up and about. Yeah, a nap was like really great. That's what I needed. Checking yeah. out the weather: 63, 17 degrees Celsius right now. No, it looks like okay. Elmer King is now in fifth. Isaac moved up. Who and who is this, Michael? There's the there's the big one there for you if you want. Michael Scott is a Danish athlete who won Europe's toughest mudder. Europe's toughest mudder. Mm -hmm. Twelve hour race. I feel like overnight. their their format is probably pretty pretty tough, right? Uh, they, we were just reading a race review. You wrote ten kilometer laps with twenty obstacles. You know, what? it's generally okay. the, the races there are generally the same. But so, I, when I ran in Berlin, uh -huh. the like the Berlin Wall or the hero, hero walls they call them, <laughs> they're like ten feet tall. You can't get over them by yourself. <laughs> you need. I, I was driving in, looking at the walls. I was like, "That can't be real." So the obstacles are, are the same but different, or similar but different in different places. Joshua Fiore with fifty-five. Austin Azar with fifty-five. Isaac Sanderson, Elmer King, both with fifty-five. Ooh, I'm, ooh, ooh! Tyler Veerman here in the booth with us. Austin Azar, I think, is going to be coming in in second place on the lap, next lap. He's just passed. Mudderhorn one minute ago, and Josh Fiore was last seen at Spunky Monkey ten minutes ago. Oh, okay. Twelve minutes so ago, actually. He probably took penalty. Possibly, and Austin's overtaken. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's interesting to see the penalties actually playing a factor. Oh, and and yeah. when I say penalties oh, yeah. playing a factor, what I mean is obstacle completion playing a factor. <laughs> like if you if you can complete the obstacles, it's it, it's absolutely well, influencing the race. Austin's last lap was nine minutes faster than uh, Josh's last lap. Austin put nine minutes on Josh last lap. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious how fast. I don't know if Michael and Josh were kind of neck and neck racing with each other for a while. I mean, they were. So Josh was ahead. They came through the first lap or the second lap, like literally seconds between them. Like three seconds. And okay. then quickly on the next lap, Michael put like 10 minutes on it. Michael okay. been in the lead for wow. hours now. Like yeah, he's six or eight hours. But he's a he's a distance runner, right? He's a endurance athlete. I mean, mm. he is now. He is now. <laughs> well, so, we're saying he's in Europe. He won with Europe's toughest mother. We don't know much else about his uh, what he's done. That's a twelve-hour race. Will it be interesting to see what happens after the twelve-hour passes? It's got to pace him. It's got to pace and Do we know like? The other guys on our list here, seventh through tenth place, mm -hmm. Christian Brown Johnson, James Burton, they're on course. Uh, just, I would expect to see them crossing the finish line any minute here. Christian, he. Christian, uh, yeah, you're say, right. He was, he's he seen ran, at Mudderhorn at 11.28, so he should be crossing in the next few sure minutes. He got 100. Uh, I'm trying to think it was 95 or 100 last year, world's yeah. toughest. He's, uh, he, was, he was up there. He's, and then I'm not familiar with the last three. So Christian got 95 last year. He got 100 two years ago. So James Burton okay. got 56 at Europe's Toughest Mudder. Okay. And he's 56 aiming for, miles or yeah. kilometers? Uh, I think he said miles. Okay. Uh, he's aiming for 100. 
So let's see, he was last seen at 11.21, which is 10 minutes ago at melting point, which is um, <clears throat> obstacle 12. <coughs> Man, 115 by Mark Beck. Crushed it. So cool to see this. I really like this. It's cool, isn't it? So many stats. <clears throat> yeah, we got race results for days. If you want to see how people did back in the day. 23.18, that was my... Finishing time. So we've got four year. women at 50 miles at the minute. Say that one more time. Four women at 50 miles. Casey Knight came through six minutes ago. Chris Roglowski, Stephanie Bland, Callie Schweikart, Katie Knight, all with 50 miles done. But an hour between Chris and Casey. Look at that. So you know what? So Chris is what's Chris's last mile, lap time? Chris might become might be lapping Katie Knight. Her last lap was one hour 16. One sixteen. So depending on how this lap goes, um, Chris may put a another lap on Katie And Knight. Katie's last lap was one hour 40. Say it again. Katie's last lap was one hour 40. 140. So yeah. The, uh... so, so according to the last finished lap, Chris has 30 minutes on second place. Second and third basically have 30 minutes or 20 minutes or... 25 minutes on fourth place. So just to put that into perspective. Sure. She did one hour 14 on her last lap. Uh, Chris did. Michael, yes. Uh, Michael Scott did his last lap in one hour nine. And Austin Azar did his last lap in one hour 14. One fourteen. So the same as so Chris, Chris did. So Chris well. and Austin are pacing. So there's a, there's a lap between them. Um, no, there's there's two laps. Austin's at 60 miles. Chris is at 50, but they are now on the same lap time. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Man, it's you know what? One thing I love about these long penalty. Now it's, it's easy for me to say sitting in the booth, that, but one thing, it's the way these long penalties are affecting the race, is that if you can if you can complete the obstacles, uh -huh. it, it you can move up in placement. Mm -hmm. Like these, oh these, yeah. If if you're forced to take the penalties, it's hurting you in the race. It's hurting your race results. And it's rewarding. It's not so much. I, I guess you could look at it either way. I, I don't like to think of it as punishing obstacle failure, but it's absolutely rewarding obstacle completion. Like last year, penalty for dingleberries was was a joke. I mean, it was it, the it was sound obvious. Scoop, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, like um, the, a little little shot glass. You had to like fill up with dirt, yeah. like. It was, it was so, so simple. Like, n nothing about sure. it made it, like, <laughs> mentally or physically challenging. So I would just, you know, jump in the water pit, go out and just do the penalty. Yeah. I mean, you save so much time. But, yeah, this time around, I, there, you don't have any of that. Like, the penalties well, are... We, we pretty, talked about that with Chris. And it's like, we did see last year people who are coming in, you know, elites, <laughs> that they were just jumping in the water and then doing the penalty loop. But no criticism to the athletes for doing that because why wouldn't you? If the race is going to make it possible for you to do that, you take the path of least resistance. So then either the race has to change. You can't expect the athletes to not do what works best for them. Why should they? Yeah. And and Chris understands it. He's like 100. percent I get it. Yeah. It's like it's up on us. It's up to us as the race director, as the race company, to structure a race to incentivize obstacle completion. I, I feel like they've done that this year. Oh, for sure. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I tried the Spunky Monkey, and yeah, I, I got so close to finishing it, but this one fell down. I, I didn't want to do a penalty. It was like uh, just jump around a potato sack. Sure. Which is like for quite too bad, a long but... way, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know what? I'm glad people are still completing. Now it looks like they're not making. So someone's walking around it. Do you, were they making you get in the water if you? Um, Wanted to take the penalty? I think you still have to do that. I think that rule applies. I think for... you should have to because yeah. that's kind you of absolutely the should. Worst have I think Chris mentioned that you do have. You can't just be like, uh, like get to the obstacle, and be like, oh, nope. Sure. Oh, this poor guy. Oh man, he tried. <laughs> Give him credit for the try. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to tell who the uh, who the athletes are here. So look, uh, so that's... someone walking up, he's just getting in the water, and he's going to take the penalty. That's that's good. Yeah, I know uh, Isaac. I think I believe this is his first 
uh, world's toughest hunter. Okay. Um, yeah, he he told me his goal just go out and just keep running and like he didn't really have a set number. Like I think I think he's probably gunning for like maybe ninety to a hundred, but okay. Yeah, he he seemed pretty comfortable where he was at. He seems like a smart guy. Like he can pace himself pretty well. So you know we might see. I see some new uh, new faces move their way up the ranks there. So Austin and Josh, uh-huh. second and third place. We're, we're really familiar with them. We know them. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. Um, Elmer King's done well before. Christian Brand Johnson, 100 miler. Uh, you're in seventh now, looking at the board here. James Burton from the UK, we're familiar with. And then uh, Joseph Rocco, Matthew Gill. And Michael Schott, he, we haven't seen him... I don't want to say we, I, I'm not. I think this is his first World Seven Mutter. It's definitely his strongest performance at a World Seven Mutter. Is he? Uh, does Danish. he do? Oh, okay. Did Europe stuff? You won Europe stuff as Mutter this year. Mm-hmm. We're gonna wait. We're gonna just get random people for the women. Chris, Chris top got four a women. Good old gap there. So Chris, if she was doing one fourteen on the last lap, we can expect one. 19 on the next lap, 118 on the next lap. Let's say 120 to be like super well, we fair. Have, there's probably a couple more. I think there's 120 would be 1144. So let's see where she's I want to say up. most of the course is, or all of the course, or the obstacles are open. Yeah, the last yeah, obstacle yeah. opened at 10 o'clock about an hour and a half ago. And she was last I seen haven't it. done operation yet, so. Okay. <laughs> but I've heard. Have like, you ever done that before? No. I've heard like some mixed reviews. I mean, it. it, it isn't terrible if you like sure. I guess if you get shocked and you like stick with it and keep going sure it's it's it can't be doable but if you just kind of wuss out when you get shocked and like keep retrying so we're gonna like, we're gonna move a camera over to operation here in a bit oh, let yes. me, so let me just talk to talk to you and the audience about technique for operation what you want to do is when you get there there um, the support beams on the far left and in the center of the obstacle they have holes right next to them so you want to get, you want to wait, you want to get one of those spots. If you can wait, like depending on your race, how the race flows. But you want those are the two and that's allowed. primary spots you want to be at. Because what you can do, you can put your back against that support. You can put your left arm against the wall. Your right, your left arm is going to put it right up next to the hole, and your right, your let none of this moves. The only thing moving is your right arm with okay. the pole, and you're feeding it through. With your right arm, so it's like you're playing, playing pool. Too. Exactly, Very but, high yeah, up like pool. your left arm is just holding it tight and allowing you to feed through with your right arm. Okay, the yeah, right yeah. arm is the only thing. It's, it's kind of like with chopsticks. One stick doesn't move; the other stick does all the work. With with you, your body is positioned, so you don't have, nothing's moving except this one right arm. And so you get it in there, and that and then if you you may bump the edge, or the guy next to you may get shot, you may get a little shock. As long as you don't drop the pole, you don't fail the obstacle. Yeah. So hang on to that, and it's it's gonna suck. It does suck to get shocked, but you can do it. Like I've literally done the obstacle without getting shocked. You just if you're if you're you just, just keep it in the middle. Steady. You gotta yeah. keep you gotta keep it in the middle, and, and you're watching it. You got your headlamp on there, and you're shining through. But this is this this is the only thing that's moving is is this right yeah. arm, and that's and because you've got everything locked into position there. There's only two spots on the wall you can do that through. The far left. And the, the middle left. Oh, okay. Like, the, like you'll see, right, the, you'll see the the, uh, the B supports okay. are, yeah. And that's once once you kind of lock in on that and figure out, it takes all the mystery and all the scariness out of it. I'll chime in and just say that it it when you get good at it. I mean, obviously, you still get tired. And you get shocked if somebody's next to you. But if you get good at it. You don't get shocked. You can get through. And you know, there's still that little bit of anxiety about it. But it's one of those ones that like you can get through without. You do it once, you do it right, and then you're like, yeah, okay. Once you figure right. it out, it's still tricky, but yeah. Which is why I enjoy it. I think it's the fun one because it's like, okay, if you get, get this right, you get it. Well, it yeah. can give you an yeah. edge over because it's electricity and no one likes getting shocked, right? But if you can, because some people will just, I just want the penalty. I'm not going to get shocked. I just want to take the penalty. Mm. And I don't know what the penalty for operation is yet. We haven't seen it. But if it's onerous like all the other ones, if you can pass operation, it can give you an edge on the people who are just taking the penalty. Now, when when you get hit a lot, it sticks with you. Like days later, you'll be like have that feeling of it in your body. What are body. you talking about? I swear to God, it's just. I've the, never had that. I've had it where healthy. like going through ESC sometimes, where I feel it in my elbows, where I like I feel like my elbows are gonna pop off. 
but I've never felt never felt the next day. It's, it's, it's just like it's, it's like a lingering feeling. Not Maybe like, you get your like, hot like checked a, out. Like a tingle, just a light, very light tingle. It's just like I, like in my brain, I can feel it more than my my body. It's, it's like, like PTSD. It's yeah. It is really I mean, odd. We, we used to play a game with electric fences where, like, one person, they all hold hands yeah. and then one oh, person. Yeah. That's I like that. I never fun, thought that I feel like Jason's trying probably, to get in Tyler's head now. I've never felt that. Felt that never. I felt it in my I feel elbows like happens with for older, like an hour. Older people. <laughs> not, not saying you're, you're that you're old. I'm hoping that we see Chris at Mudderhorn soon. She was at Melting Point at 11.23. We need to watch the finish line to see if we can watch Chris. Yeah, we're so bad at the finish line. How she's looking running wise, <laughs> her stride and all that. We she was looking, literally miss I mean, people was, coming through the finish line. Like, I was, I felt like I was running at my normal. Oh, here we go. Who's this? Pace. Raymond Vincent. Vincent oh, gosh, Raymond. I wonder who that is. This dude's running barefoot. I'm not making that oh, up. Oh, yeah. That's a true story. Yeah. Have you seen him out there? That is incredible. With cactuses yeah. and stuff? Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he ran last year. I, I definitely saw a barefoot runner. I don't know if it was him. Yeah, no, it was yeah. Him. Yeah. I, I remember looking, like, just looking down at the ground. And all of a sudden, I see someone's bare feet, like, oh, devil. <laughs> Roll it through nasty mud. It looks like, like Hobbit feet, through. right? Like, he's he's out there. <laughs> that, that is just like, you know, it's one thing to run a race like this. It's another to go barefoot. I mean, right. you, and you can, like, lose so much he did, like, 50 you know, body miles. heat. Yeah. And it's like. That's, that's a great point. It's, it's just so impressive to me. Like, the. You're, and it is not easy. I mean. Yeah, the cactus, too, out here is freaking treacherous. Okay, how about this? You were running with Chris earlier? Yeah, yeah, she's she's coming across the finish line in like five minutes. Yeah, she she's got a good pace. I mean, she's not going slow. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, if you, if you want somebody to pace you for a lap, you could no, be I worse. Mean, yeah, she was. She she had a pretty good stride last time I was running with her. Like it was it was pretty quick. I mean, she would not be surprised if she went hundred plus tonight. Right. Like if if things go well for her and she gets through the obstacles and. and Maybe he takes less penalties. I mean, sure. Like, I think she she has it in her. Like she's she's tough, tough cookie. Mm-hmm. You think Chris might need someone to kind of run alongside her and pace her? Potentially. I mean, I mean, she's she's still strong. Like just by herself. Like she goes out and does some like, some pretty long, pretty long runs. Sure. Like solo and like she's she's tough. She's just got to Spunky Monkey. Say one more time. She just got to Spunky Monkey. She's got to Spunky Monkey. 16. How long do you think till she comes to the finish line? Well, we were kind of expecting her at the finish line in the next few minutes, if we, unless our maths was wrong. So maybe what, five, ten minutes? Oh, well, yeah. Should we see? Mm. Oh. No. Well, we should have seen her, shouldn't we? Curious at, at is there a timing map before or afterwards? Oh, that's a good question. Do you know that, Tyler? What? Is the timing map before the obstacle or after? Uh, before I'm trying because you, you turn around right along, kind of parallel to the obstacle, and then yeah, I think I want to say it's before. I didn't notice that. So an hour twenty lap would have been her finishing like now. That's what we were looking at. But her laps have been really fast. They've been as fast as the top two men. The last sure. laps, even though they're ahead in terms of laps and mileage, we're still just talking time at this time of day. So. She, she's definitely got the space yeah and for that and it could have been a penalty somewhere or yeah yeah she uh yeah I don't know if she's still taking the penalty on the grappler um cause I mean that, that just takes so much time but mm. well if she's maybe 10 minutes from finishing this lap I don't know how you're feeling but maybe uh, pizza, uh, it's a oh, slice pizza of pizza. Friends. Potentially, maybe, maybe, maybe we use Chris as a bellwether and like say, "Hey, Chris Rogloski, <laughs> I'm gonna run with you for a little bit." I gotta. I would have to get dressed. Probably, probably throw on my full suit this time. What's it? Yeah, sure. that would that would be the game plan. They're still trying. People are still giving it their uh, the full effort there. Yeah, I mean, the that's what they're here for, isn't it? Ropes I guess. are kind of getting a little soggy at this point. I mean, definitely those bars are getting, getting really wet. Mm-hmm. 
out of interest in the men. Michael Scott. Uh, Scott. 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 Uh, sure. uh, lap 13, melting point at 11.39, which is obstacle 12. Austin Azar, lap 13, start at 11.34. Oh. That's quite a big gap. So Michael Schatz, keep it up. Halfway round. Sure. Ish. I don't actually have mileage on this on these lists. What uh, what's this athlete here wearing? This orange bag looking thing. <laughs> oh, back. Is that a costume or an actual? No, it's just like a little. Uh, nope, just a makeshift uh, blanket. Uh, oh, it's like, like a space a blanket. Minute, Look, like... someone's given a good um. <laughs> Look at that. Good attention that on this obstacle. Nine. Oh, oh no! Went through it so quick. He's doing so I think well. He, he, he was feeling... on the downhill, right? Like yeah. he had the hard part done. Oh, my God. I, I don't I can know. feel I mean, it. Look at that. I, that's, oh, that's, that's about where I failed last night. Oh, that's so that tough. Guy. People keep asking about the weather. This is where we're at currently. It is not cold for nearly midnight. Degrees. No, it's cool. You, you do it's feel absolutely the, cool. The wind after um, after a little, little ice bath. I think the wind the wind has dropped from earlier in the day, though. Like, yeah. This it's... morning about 11 o'clock, the wind was a lot stronger. Yeah, for And during sure. the day, it was strong, which is good because I was really worried about once it gets dark. And the wind, like it could get really chilly. Man, I remember last year, like the the last stretch on the course, there was just this little breeze, a very small breeze, but it just like just cut through your soul. Like it, it was, <laughs> it was terrible. It was yeah, like I always find running through like wooded areas when it's windy and you're wet is hellish. It shouldn't yeah. be. It shouldn't be as cold as it is because you've got the trees, but somehow it feels really cold. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you like think that. Think you know, okay, it'll probably feel a little better here. Like, I don't know. I just like all the wind just got funneled through the little. The yeah, forest. maybe that's like, it. It was very strange. But... Maybe that's it. Let's have a quick look at um Everest. Hey, guess what happens in uh, twelve minutes? Will looks like we're getting to midnight. What happens oh. at midnight, buddy? The race starts at midnight, Tyler. That's that what they is say. That's true. That is true. That is very, very true. We are very excited for midnight to roll around. You gotta, you gotta make some moves at nighttime to really discourage people. You gotta be a ninja out there. That's how you get in people's heads. Where do I get the bracelet? I don't know how many times I've been pointing this way. It looks so rude. I was like, ah. everyone thinks we're race HQ. We are not. We're, we're the first, literally the first tent you will see or people pass after they cross the finish line. We're just some idiots so with had, a big TV screen and lots of snacks. We've had probably 50 people stop here more. looking for a race. Maybe more. Yeah. More. And some, some like the same people more, more than once. Mm -hmm. And all we do is we just point. Like, I know what you want. And it, that way. I'm curious. They made it like a rule, like you have to get your your band when you come in. Like it has to be like within sixty seconds or something. But I, I guess that makes sense. Like they don't want people wandering off, maybe in the pit area for a while, and then come back and be like, "Hey, can I?" Yeah, because then people could like, be like doing it twice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do they like mark you off? Do they have you as you cross the finish line, and they mark something off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Off right away, they want to make sure that's the first. first it, it's thing. just little things like that that just kind of reinforce to people like us who don't organize races like how many tiny little aspects of race organization there are to think about yeah i think they they have their stuff together out here you know the just the whole whole format of things and especially this year just with the penalties you know you you really have to be like picky choosy with what you want to try like do mm. you want to go for the obstacle or not i mean some, some bigger decisions you got to make to curious to see what what becomes kind of the most difficult one most out of what options. you did out there what did you feel what out of what you did out there what uh, did you feel? i mean the spooky monkey was was getting a little challenging but um yeah i'd have to put that up there it's interesting it's at this getting... at this angle it looks like there's no hill on grappler we know. It's yeah. really it. oh, yeah. oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Isn't it weird how just, like it looks like they're just throwing it across the field? There's a they're at the bottom like, of a just hill. Just one little bump right here. Yeah. Not even. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, that's a just the way I don't know how that is. But, yeah. <laughs> it, it was really weird at first. It's like, okay, where do we stand 
like the rope is kind of coiled up in like just random areas. It's like there's not like a specific like line where you have to stand behind. But I guess the volunteers were doing pretty good at making sure everyone was kind of the same, sure. the same length. Yeah, I got it on the first try. The right. second time, I had to, had a couple tries. It's kind of changed my strategy, but you definitely, yeah, you kind of get coiled up, maybe a couple loops, maybe three or four loops, and then you really got to throw it up, up and out. Are you throwing underhand or overhand? Uh, I did overhand. Overhand okay. felt better, like especially on the hill. It just if you did it underhand, you kind of have to go like under but side, like really hard. Like, sure. <laughs> That hill is. I think annoying. at the point where we were on the hot lab yesterday, which is pretty much at the back, uh, they'd had three people attempt it with multiple attempts getting it through underhand. Like it just wasn't working for people underhand. Yeah, I think whatever feels feels right. Yeah, I really like that option. <laughs> it's the first time I did that. For the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Felt like Batman rides. Right? We're at the point here with Bucky Bucky where there's not a lot of attempts even happening mm -mm. anymore. No, I have not seen that many people go through this. I'm curious if the penalty is like not as Yeah. Not as bad. It must be it's probably a bigger loop. I mean you have to it's a potato sack jumping with a potato sack thing. I'd imagine it'd be a pretty pretty good sized loop for penalty. I think it's meant to be pretty big. That was awful, the bouncy ball. I, I still took that penalty though, like every time. I mean that that rig was hard. Like that was a hard rig. That was they, chunky monkey, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean I think I got through like the first little just the first little bit where there's like these big tires you have mm. to you have to go around. I tried to like stand up on it and it it felt so scary. I was like so high up. And then I had to like awkwardly lower myself down, to try to go get to the next like ring or whatever. And it was, yeah, I didn't, I didn't attempt it anymore after that. Yeah, between the uh, bouncy yeah. ball, and between the potato sack, it's like they're getting a lot of their inspiration for penalties from like your dad's office picnic. <laughs> Company picnic. It's children, children's <laughs> games, bringing back childhood memories here. I'm watching the finish line here. I don't want Chris Rogowski to pass me again. She's not passed Mudderhorn yet. So no, when she does Mudderhorn pass yet. Mudderhorn, we've got a couple of minutes. Keep an eye out for her. Yeah. Here's Who? what I think, Tyler Gurman. You didn't ask me, but here's what I think. You don't know what I think? What do you, you think? already know what I think. I think when Chris Rogowski... I need time to change. <laughs> You need time to change. Uh, I'm going full full wetsuit. You're going full full wetsuit. If, if I were to go back out. All right. I think but I think just, just saying. If I was to hitch my train to an athlete and be like, pull me along for a lap, I think you can do worse than Chris Rogloski. <laughs> Christina Rogloski. I think it's Chris Christiana. Christiana Rogloski. Is it Christiana? Is that her full name? Is that Christina? Not Christina. No. Nope. Christiana Rogloski. Cr Christiana. Christiana. Not Mike. Stefano shaking his head yes. Nodding his head yes. Uh, I listen to all the podcasts, so I know all the fun facts about people. Why have you never corrected us singing Christina Roglowski? Oh, Christiana Roglowski. That's too many ridiculous. syllables. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Chris Roglowski. I can't. Oh, man. Christiana Roglowski. I need a new tune, I guess. I got to talk Keith out. I wonder what her middle name is. Christiana Roglowski. I'm going to ask her. Yeah, there's already, there's already Kristen out there. Kristen with K. Name's taken. Are these uh like the they call them the the angels? Everest, Everest angels. Everest yep. Angels. Those okay. guys at the top of Everest. Yeah. They have been there, I believe, since it opened. I am honestly thinking about joining them for a little bit. That's a great idea. That would be a fantastic. Oh, idea. Tyler. I I, I, I kind of want to get out there. And join. Yeah. I was thinking about that. They that are not wearing very... wetsuits. I don't know if you need one or not. I, th uh, I would I yeah. would put a wetsuit on just because you've been so cold. You think? Yeah. You've been chilly. And if you're going to have to be getting like into water. I sleeve, people, maybe just my sleeve will be wet. I don't know. Have you got compression? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I got like a thermal rash guard and then. Maybe just I that would be enough. I got stuff I could wear other than a wetsuit, but maybe I'll go out and you know, we can try to wear this and see how I feel. But they, because they went out and that they, they're not wet. They went out there at noon. You're going to get wet getting there. How? Really? How did yeah, that's get the so end wet? of the course. I guess 
they're like kneeling over the wall and it's kind of wet. Well, they're, they're, they they won't be wet. I mean, so they are uh, standing they're out working there, but their core and their body isn't wet. Like they're not running, but they're like work like they're working. Oh it's, yeah, it's next. It's workout. I, but he's gonna go through a few water obstacles oh, and then there. stand still. That's true. So you're gonna get wet on the way there. Well, yeah, you I can was, take it off. You honestly, can take it off when you get there. Just thinking about like uno- going, unofficially oh, just going just straight like, out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I if you do I actually, that, oh you, yeah, actually I don't think I can. No. Oh, not 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 keeping still, your band. I'm still participating. You right are now. right now. You're <laughs> still. You're I am still, on. still racing right now. So, what I would yeah. Oh, if you sad. here's what you do. Put your wetsuit on. Run out there and then take your wetsuit off. Like that's all you need to do. Just change it. The just literally just like take it off. You can like, just take the top down a bit. Like if you're gonna be out there for the next you know eight ten hours, you have five minutes to take a wetsuit off. Do. Well, maybe let's not talk about the next eight, ten hours. If you're going to go out there and enjoy we'll it for a, a little hours. bit, I'll, we'll cut it up into in pieces. Here. <laughs> Still not seeing Chris at Mudderhorn. So let's let's hold off on today? showing any more results for three minutes, and yes. then we'll uh, we'll go big into results with that's, like current results. That's an interesting tactic. <laughs> It's always weird. Like I don't know why my my abs get so sore. Like <gasps> just from mind like, you, when what I run, is that? I think it's just like, a just I, I constant feel, like jiggling no, of my I stomach. Did, that was my most painful thing after the marathon. Like my feet were fine. I kept my shoes on. My legs were a bit sore during it. But then afterwards, I got into my mum's car and I was like, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, ow. And I think it's, it's just like. <laughs> the twist, the slight twist you yeah. do when you're running, I have that too. I wonder if like like just eating foods, like I, I don't. I, don't I just think thought it's because I had like a weak certain... core. But you probably don't have a weak core, do you? No, no. I don't have like super super yeah, strong sure. core, but I, yeah, I don't have like. No, I. It's so weird. After mostly, well, 24 hours definitely. I felt it in a hundred k, black canyon hundred k. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely felt felt it in that. Oh, so this is open now. I've not seen this one. Looking at well, I want to say well, well, swung. well swung. And they only have one bar, but it looks like quite a quite a gap there. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. That's not too bad. A little bit of a jump. That is very doable, right? And the, oh man, that cargo really sags. You got to go under. Oof. I wonder if uh, if you touch the water there, if that's it. Like, because it's pretty close to the water. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, he man, had the water. Oh, yeah, I don't think you can make it on the yeah. second, though. Oof. Oh, baby. Grab oh, it. He, there you go. Are you allowed to touch the water? Love it. Love it. Well I done. Yeah, well I done. Think you're supposed to be Whoever that guy is. So the idea, or the, the theory behind it is if you complete the obstacle successfully, you stay dry. So now that guy, obviously, he got his feet wet. The second guy got his feet wet. The first guy, he's still dry. Maybe his bib's falling in the back there. I think your bib's allowed to. Well, yeah, but like you don't want to be. If you're gonna try and stay dry, you're gonna stay try and stay dry. Here we go. Let's, you got it, buddy. It's just out of reach. You just quite. You can't quite reach it. So you got to jump for it to get it. You gotta have the right amount of like propulsion going up. Nice. I'd say like jumping nice. up more, like trying to get yourself above the bar just a little bit. That, right. That it like really. It's, it's a scary leap, it's isn't like, it? If you go out too far or stay, you're probably gonna stay lower than you should. You sure. Have to reach up a little higher. So. I think just jumping up, kind of keeping yourself a little higher in the bar will definitely guarantee your, your success in that. You know, seeing this obstacle, seeing feeling the air temperature right now, mm-hmm. it's we had the, the temperature up earlier. It was like 65 degrees, which seems warm, right? But um, there it is. We're down, well, we're down to 60. Wind, Winds are down. Wind right? was 20 miles an hour earlier, I think. Yeah. So we're down to sixty degrees. But only like four, but yeah, I would, I would have a wetsuit on. Fifteen point yeah, six degrees—that's I mean, warm for UK. Is, fifteen degrees is no, it's absolutely it's, warm. That's a warm number, but it doesn't feel warm out right now. No, and, and you're getting in and out of water. Yeah, you're getting in and out, and just with your body becoming more fatigued over time, you just kind of get more sensitive to the to elements. So I think it's a good mental booster too. You know, when you if you're warm, you stay warm. I mean, there's nothing you're losing. All right, Fran Carando, it is 12 midnight. We are 12 hours into World's Toughest Mudder 2023. As far as the racers are concerned, the race has begun. 
Let's look at where the men and women are. Kim Rivetti, guess what time it is? The race starts now. Kim, have you heard? The race starts at midnight. Let's check out some results. Men's top 10 right now. Michael shot with 60 miles. Uh, Chris has just passed Mudderhorn. Chris Roglowski, women's women's leader right now. Defending champion is on her way. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to uh, stick the finish line on. To see if we we'll can see Chris the coming through the camera. finish line. We'll see Chris or Glossy come through here in a second. In a couple of minutes. It should be maybe like two, three minutes. She's got uh, shorts. So Michael Schott leading for the men with 60 miles. Chris Roglowski leading for the women with 55. We're waiting to see Chris cross the be, finish line here in a second. Getting... And then we're going to pop the results back up again. <clears throat> Chris Roglowski on pace for a second straight year of 100 miles at World's yeah. Toughest Mudder. No woman not named Chris Roglowski has ever run more than 90 <laughs> miles. Chris has run 100. She shattered the record for women last year. She is on pace to duplicate it this year. She implied heavily when we were talking with her before the race that she wants to run 105 miles. Will is so excited right now. He's I am, standing I am up. literally, I'm not even on the edge of my seat. I kicked the seat back. I'm standing on my feet. What seat? Who needs a seat? <laughs> World's Toughest Mudder 2023 has finally begun. At midnight, the race begins. It is 12.02 p.m. A.M. Local time. And soon we're going to be s switching to race time. Yes, daylight savings time is not convenient for what we're trying to do here. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling people are going to forget about that. So we're seeing the penalty here. I'm trying to remember the obstacle, but what it is is you have to hold a block of wood. Oh, we're watching athletes cross the. We're watching for Chris Roglowski crossing the finish line here. Our picture in picture here. You have this is the penalty for the obstacles where you have to hold an egg with one hand and a block of wood with the other hand. And if you crack that egg, you have to do it again. You get another egg, and you got to do a second lap. And you think like. Oh, if I do the second lap with the egg, I'm good either way. No, you still got to do it without breaking that egg. We're watching down the uh, down the finish line shoot for Chris. Not I haven't seen her yet. So 12 hours into the race, we have multiple men on pace. Maybe as many. We are, we have we're gonna have a lot of hundred mile. I, I don't even want to put a number on. Michael, about ten minutes ago, hit Spunky Monkey, which is obstacle 16, on lap. 13 he's currently on that was not was that chris chris roglowski oh. just Christina passed us Ruglowski. oh she's cruising she's cruising yeah. christiana roglowski your first place woman with 55 miles whoop, whoop. Now, now we can look at the leader world champion defending champion and current le women's leader chris roglowski let's look at the men then we'll, then we'll break down all Man, of the women look at that michael shot in first place with 60 miles uh, we're going to see him at 65 miles shortly. Shortly. We'll watch for Michael Schott across the finish line also. So Michael Schott, Austin Azar, Joshua Fiore, all with 60 miles. Um, and Michael Schott about to be at 65. I mean, 10, 15 minutes sure. shortly. But. In fourth place, Isaac Sanderson also with 55 miles. Also with 55, Elmer King, Christian Brown Johnson, Joseph Rucco, and Matthew Gill as well as Grant Thompson, also with 55 miles. In 10th place, Tyler Veerman here in the booth with us, hey. taking a break from, from, <laughs> the, uh, from the course. All of these athletes, especially the top three, have a shot at 110. I'd say all of them are on pace for 100. I don't want to say easily. There's no such thing as an easy 100 miles, mm -mm. but it's well within all of their ranges. <laughs> I think it's doable, you know. For the women in first place, Chris Roglowski with 55 miles. She told us she she didn't tell us. She implied she wants to run 105 today. That was the implication for sure. Well, here's what happened. Here's when I say implied, I don't mean she like was like being cool. I mean, we asked her, "Hey, what's your goal?" She was She's a bit like, coy, "It's a big fine, number." Yeah. And she wouldn't tell us. Sometimes athletes don't tell us. They don't want to jinx it. They don't want their competition I to know. I don't think any athlete gave a number today. You know what? You might be right. Very James few. James Burton did actually, but that was yesterday. But no, I think gave a number today. We I so we asked her, "Does this big goal have three digits?" She said, "Yes, it does." We asked, "Does is the last digit a zero? 
She said, no, it is not. So she ran 100 last year. She wants to run 105 miles this year as we watch Twinkle Toes here. Yeah. Second place, Stephanie Bland with 50. Third place, Callie Schweikart with 50. Fourth place, Katie Knight. And in fifth place, Nikki Caramba, all with 50 miles. So shall we tell Tyler about our 5K prediction? Sure. So, yeah, let's tell Tyler. Um, we, Tyler we, we're you know, a little bit crazy at 5 o'clock. Do you know about the rule of thumb that if there's a, a mileage goal you want to reach, you want to get 100 miles, you should have the, the rule of thumb, you should have 50 by 10 p.m. the night before. That's give or take. It's just a rule of thumb. It's not hard and fast. It's not a law. So at 5 p.m., halfway to 10 p.m., we were we started talking. So Will made the not calling them a prediction, predictions that four men will get 110 miles. We weren't talking names. We were looking at the numbers on the board and probability. Four men will get 110. Eight men will get 100. Oh, my gosh. We've never four, had more than six is, people get 100 miles. Four women will get 100, one of whom will be Christiana Rogowski. Chris, she's going to get so annoyed with me doing that repeatedly. I went with – I didn't go with any men because – I just the women all the time, aren't I? Uh, two women will get 100, and two women will get 90 and above. I can see that happening. I mean, with the uh, air temperature, you know, it's not not that terrible. They just got to have fairly clean race, I feel like. I mean, if, if you're taking too many penalties, that, that will add up. But if you, if you go through the obstacles, do it right, I think it's very doable. Eight men getting a, what was it? Eight men getting a hundred? Eight men, yeah. That's a, I, I mean, realize. That's... Pull those men up again. Look at that. Ten men have 50. James Burton just crossed the finish line. Ten men have 55 miles. How much longer is Tyler going to be here? Ten men have 55 miles 12 hours into the race. Literally any, any or all of those guys could hit 100 miles. We could have we could have ten hundred milers. Yeah, but you're also saying that four men will get hundred and ten. Are you saying that four men will get hundred and ten plus an additional eight at one hundred? No, 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 no. Those my my hundred and ten mile winners are, are in, included. In, yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, now absolutely. It, now this is like playing with games with my daughter, just changing. Things. I'm not changing yeah. anything. That's what I said. I didn't say seven that. Seven hours I ago. That. I said it. I one hundred percent said it. Roll the tape. Roll the. <laughs> The tape. Uh, anybody who's been watching, uh, tell me what's correct. We have a crew with us watching all 24 hours. If you started with us at, at 12 noon or before, and you're still watching now, and you're going to be watching for the next 13 and a half hours when we finish after 25 and a half race hours, <laughs> you are going to earn yourself a sticker. Obstacle a man. whole sticker. <laughs> Rooting for Isaac Sanderson and Austin Azar. Go. I, I missed the last word there. Go. Uh, Canada, Canada, Canada. Go Canada. Oh, yeah. Well, Isaac Sanderson is Canadian. Oh, really? I, oh, I, I believe that's. Right. that's... Yeah. He's uh, he's also engineer. Okay. Him and Austin. Austin is Canadian. We know that. And 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 first place currently is a Dane. So. A lot of international for world's toughest mutter this year. Wow. That's how it it's almost like it's a world event. Pull those ten men up again. I want to show you something else. Yes, boss. You see a name not on that list? Oh no. Here's a hint. James it rhymes with psychos. Not even up there yet. Not even in the top ten. He'll have a hundred before the day's over. Yeah, what's Should we see where he's at? Eight might be low. Eight men running a hundred miles might be a lo the low end when we're all said and done. Uh, Tyler, uh, blah, 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 fifty miles currently. <laughs> Uh, he's last seen at lap 11 at 10.54. Lap 11 on his... So, wait, wait. So, has Tyler finished 11 laps or no? He's on Trevor. his 11. Trevor. What? Trevor. Trevor, I'm sorry. Trevor's finished 10. He's 10. finished 10 laps. He's on lap 11. 11.54, he was seen at melting point. All these men are all doing outstanding. <laughs> Trevor Psychos is not even in the top 10. If I had to pick one man to finish 100 miles, he's I'm 18th. still picking Trevor Psychos. He's, he's currently 18th. He's currently 18th out of 10. We have 18 men, 17 men in front of Trevor Psychos. All of eight. I said at 5 p.m., I said we might have eight men run 100 miles. The most we've ever had in a year is six. And I think eight is going to be on the low end. 
We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We've got two Brits in the top ten. Grant Thompson in number nine. James Burton at number ten. A lot of international. Okay. And then uh, uh, in number thirteen, we have a, a Swede. A Swede. Who's our Swede? I think it's that Swedish. Uh, Pontus Diamond. What place is he in? Thirteen. Thirteen. Outstanding. Love it. An Australian. Australian. Well, that's 13, a good day. Jamie Hunter. <laughs> now I'm flag collecting. Mostly Americans, though. A few Brits, Canadians. Uh, <laughs> Here's uh, Devil's Sack again. The sack being the sandbag they have to carry through Devil's Beard. <laughs> Who will be the first to lap 13? <sighs> Michael? Jared Hathaway, OCR Report member, team member. Who will be the first lap to, well, I think the safe money right now is on Michael Schott. What? Oh, duck. This, man, I really don't like this obstacle. Like, there's just something about it. It's always, it's. It was worse last year. It was I mean, pinned I, to the ground. Like, oh, yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. And it was dark, too, right? Like, half of it was dark. Yeah, yeah. And there's, like, hay bales underneath. You got to, like, work, work your way around, like. Yeah. Who will be the first to lap 13? Michael Scott is on lap 13. Lap 14 start. We, we answered oh. that already. <clears throat> Split time. Yeah. Wait, they are fast. Wow. Okay, fast pit time. And then five minutes, I'm sure he changed to a suit or something on lap. Eight. Do you think they can contain that? Fast pit time zones. So that's, that's the way to do it. 38 minutes, 41, 44 minutes. Yeah. It is uh, kind of the, the differences in time are, are too dramatic. Okay, so Tyler, we've been saying for 12 hours that the race starts at midnight. <laughs> and now it started. So for you last year, when you got to midnight, this time of the race last year, what was going through your head out there on the course? Just keep moving. No, like, no pressure. I I tried not to think about, oh, they're going to catch me, they're going to catch me. I mean, it's kind of easy to get in that mindset when you're so tired, it's late at night, you know, you're leaving. I, I just kept myself, kept telling myself, just keep moving 100 miles into the goal, and this is how we're going to get there. We're on, we're on pace, you know. I was, I was kind of progressively slowing, but I told myself I'm, I'm still on pace for 100, still on pace, just keep moving, keep moving. Like, were you, were you watching the other athletes like position wise like where they were ahead of you uh, or behind you? A couple times, yeah, but for the most part, when I was in the pit area, I just focused on what did I what I needed, and I was out. I I looked at the scoreboard maybe like yeah maybe just like two or three times. Um, and I, I was surprised to like see my name at the top. Like at one sure, point I was like wait oh the top I'm top like okay. <laughs> Not that it was good, you know, it was a good surprise. It was uh, it was pretty far in the race, and I. I, I knew I was like top three. Wasn't sure where exactly, but yeah, I was pretty stoked for that. I, I started catching, uh, let's see, Anthony, Anthony Hunkel, because he went out pretty hot and like mm. eventually started kind of dropping back. And then, uh, was it Earl? Or El Elmer, Elmer. I think he was, he was also ahead too. But yeah, it was, it was really cool to see that. It was a big confidence booster for sure. Oh, definitely needed that. Yeah, I, I just focused on myself for a while when I was in the pit. Just kind of did, down, did my own thing. Did you have pit crew last year? Yeah, I had my parents. Okay, they, yeah, they yeah. crewed for me. That sure. was their first, uh, uh, actually, second 24 hour race. They crewed me at uh, Spartan Ultra Worlds uh, wow. 2021. Is it different not having a crew? Yeah, you know, um, I kind of regret not having a crew because they hold you accountable. Um, when you're hitting a pretty low point, it's pretty easy for them just to, to talk you through it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've already had a lot of people talk to me um, <laughs> in the pit area too. So, and, you know, I was chilling for a while. So that, that was, um, so even though I don't have a crew, there's, I, I had so many people ask if I needed anything, if they could help me with anything. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of great people here willing to help each other. You know, it's, it's very competitive environment, but, it's great community. Mm. Great, great community. 
I mean, all through the night, people are willing to help. Like, everyone's tired, hungry, like, but it doesn't matter. Like, people are always fighting each other. I saw something, uh, it was possibly this morning, or as I was going to bed last night, I can't remember, on the community page on Facebook, my someone's luggage had been lost with all their kiss in it. I mean, and there hey, are Tyler? a few people. Get up over, Tyler. Thanks. Hey, Tyler. Tyler. Good talking to you, man. He's been talking summoned. Too. This thing is super comfy. Like you want to kill me, but you've got it for a while. Uh, get up back. Get up for 24 hours. He's, he's not a toy. Yeah, he can do what he likes. Yeah, sure. So, the race has been. Tyler, very special to him joining us for a bit. Moving good, dude. Good. Pretty good. Are you just a robin? Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> I thought you were filming yourself. <laughs> I can't. The SCR report. We're doing the live stream. I was talking about it. I made a post. I was talking about it. I was talking about it. I was like, everyone watch. <laughs> Twinkle Toes gave you trouble, huh? Nah. Twinkle Toes. Oh, okay. It's not the first time you did it. Wobbly. It's the first time. First time. First time. Man. I ain't going to tip it. Those fast twitch muscles starting to wear down. Yeah, well, being, uh, Stabilizers. A, a horrific shock. I broke my leg two and a half hours in. Oh. I don't know why. I was many years in the first half as well. I can't understand why. Just every little sort of shape of the path. Like, yeah. You know. What's your first name? Grant. Grant? Grant. Grant. Okay, awesome. You're doing great, man. Moving good. Good job. Yeah. So B's asking, how is the wheelchair do team doing? Any updates? Um, no, I'm afraid not. Let's bring up the team top 10. It's a bit harder to look up the teams, but I think you guys at home seem to be able to do it. So that is the top 10 of the teams. Top 10 of the teams. There's not been any changes elsewhere since then, so no need to show you that. Well then. <coughs> so it's just gonna be night. It's actually really not cold here. I remember this time last year I was already in a dry robe. Probably in the next two hours I was uh, getting a little hot water bottle. That's why it's so fast. Um, yeah, I'm still just doing a jumper. I mean, I know I'm not running, but we are sitting completely still. Completely still. And just, yeah. The weather is completely different from last year. I don't know, man. Sometimes my brain just kind of switches for a while. Like.
job, good job. Oh, come on, almost. Oh, oh, you're in there. Nice. You get a good shot of that? <laughs> May have. I've given out the bibs already. Awesome job.
job, good job. Who are you? <laughs> Can't tell. Hey, I'm Nikki. Nikki, awesome. Looking good out there. Awesome. Nikki, what's your last name? It's Grandpa. Grandpa, awesome. Oh, very cool. Have you done all stuff this before? Oh, wow. Awesome. Have you? Yeah. I got a prize. Did they get you? So this is operation. So you, if you, t so here's the here's the thing about operation. That those metal things are electrified. If you touch those metal things, you're getting shocked. So they're holding this long pole, sticking it through, and, and they're and they're looking through the hole there. On the other end of that hole, about ten feet through 10 feet past that wall you're looking at there's another wall and on that wall are nails with rings like shower curtain rings so that pole they're holding it's about the length of the uh a, a pool cleaning pole i'm not sure what you call those exactly you know what i'm talking about but instead of a a skimmer net thank you dustin Drow in the in the booth here instead of a net at the end it has a hook at the end and so they are they're using that hook to get that shower curtain ring or whatever kind of ring they have back there get out but those metal rings are electrified and those poles they're holding are metal so if the the pole they're holding touches that the outside of the ring they get electrocuted they get shocked also they're standing in about three inches of water so if the guy next to them gets shocked they also get shocked I, she didn't look very excited. I feel like she might have failed the obstacle. To fail the obstacle, you either have to not get a ring or to drop the pole. You get shocked all you all day all night long. But as long and is as it one attempt? That's that's a good actually a good question. If is there only one attempt? Generally, the rule in the past has been as long as you don't drop that pole, yeah, I, you're still alive. That, I think that's it. Yeah. So Tyler Beerman is still in the booth with us. He says that's what they were to tell him telling him earlier. So here, if you. This is an electrical obstacle, and electrical obstacles stress some people out. Ooh. No one likes to get shocked. No one likes it. I don't. And, and unlike stuff like physical strength stuff or even cold water, I don't know if you can actually train to get train your body for being more adept at shocks. There's a great more picture in picture. You can see the uh, the metal. That guy just got shocked, and he jumped, and it will make you jump. So if you're not right next to the guy that got shocked, it looks like it's not really going to shock you. Those, these guys are about six feet, eight feet apart, so they're not getting shocked. Now, there's technique for this, and nice job. operation is a... See, you got it. You got that. Oh, I got hit once? <laughs> Good job, man. Operation is an older... Not older. It, it debuted in, like, 2016, probably, at World Stuffest Mutter. And it was at, at World's Toughest Mudder. It was at Toughest Mudder for a while, but it's only nice been on the World's Toughest Mudder course. Did you feel it when he got shot? <laughs> so a lot of people aren't super familiar with, with There's a secret to this obstacle. Especially this year when the penalties are so onerous and so difficult. It's not so much that they're punishing obstacle failure, but they are rewarding success at the obstacle. 
So if you are an elite athlete and you come up to operation, even just a regular guy trying to improve your placing and get more miles, if you can do what I'm about to tell you, I'll give you the secret to operation. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for someone to do it first so I can say, do what this guy does. No one's done it yet. <clears throat> everything, I'm, everything I'm gonna describe to you in the past has been legal, 100% legal. Now see this guy, he's putting the, the, the stick he's putting it in? I would put it in the hole. I like the spot he's in. You're tall. Do you see these cross? Okay, so let me, let me describe to you the secret to operation. There's two premium spots when you're doing this obstacle. They are like, like where this, the guy in the middle, where almost where he is, but back. He needs to be on that hole behind him. What you want is you want your back up against that support piece. So you can see where he could be further back about, if, if this guy in the middle was standing to his left about 12 inches, that would be ideal. 12 to six, however many inches, a foot and a half back so that he's, his back is up against that uh, diagonal cross piece. That's where you want. You want your back against that cross piece locked in. Then you want your left shoulder up against the wall, up against the wood, not against the, anything that's going to shock you. Your back is against that diagonal cross piece. Your left shoulder is against the uh, the wall. Let's see what look, see, see what the inside looks like. Oh, cool. Glow in the dark rings. I imagine you've got to be quite close to the hole to be able to see what you're doing. That's amazing. Yeah, they, they, that looks really impressive. Usually, it's not dark in there. They just have rings, but they made them glow in the dark, and that's that's an impressive. Well done, Tough Butter. That's you can very see, cool. You can see the, the snagged ring about halfway through coming back. They've got she's got it on the hook, and she's trying to get it back without getting shocked. Why does it look so? <laughs> and then, oh, and then you can see the other guys got it too. I love the glow in the dark rings. That's, that's so cool. That's as well as Butter on this. Except, okay, so. Tyler in the in the booth's like, why don't you just tilt it up? If you tilt it up, you're gonna hit your bar up against that, that metal thing, and you're gonna shock yourself. That's risky. Uh, so just some uh, running updates. Sure. Uh, Joshua Fiore is kind of catching up to Austin. They both went through a uh, melting point on lap 13. Joshua is like a minute behind. Joshua Fiore is a minute behind Austin. Austin. At the Austin last Azar, obstacle. Azar. Look at that! What a shot! That's an amazing. Look at that. Well done, so that athlete. Cool. Well done to our cameraman. I think that's Jason out there. Uh huh. Good job, awesome. And that is a successful completion right there. Yeah, that looks very cool. So when we go back outside, we'll, uh, we'll I'll keep walking. Oh, sure. the, the technique for completing the stops without getting shocked. <laughs> You know, we still uh, yeah, uh, second, I was just watching. Yep, oh, awesome. Can do that after we, uh, <laughs> now it looks like we're going. Oh, wow, awesome. This is good, huh? Trying to see. Trying to see the hair. She had it in two flats that were quite short, didn't she? Awesome. It's a black bib. I'm not sure they can tell who you are. Who are we looking at here, Jason? No. I can't see because of the... Oh, oh, I forget. Oh, it's Chris, sorry. It's like, get the headlamp on the face. Now. <laughs> well, the I feel like she's <laughs> probably the one that just successfully completed operation. <laughs> I have good idea. Even in the middle of an obstacle, like, she's got a smile. Yeah, yeah right? Sure. Like, so How does she do That's this? What's that? Yeah, absolutely. Jason, we're trying to get your audio. Yeah, I feel quite like there super yet. warm running. running. Uh, there's so many yeah. like, uh, Obviously, I'm not in. Well, running 100 miles, that'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. Moment, like, yeah. It'll put you on the map. If you're a man, like, you gotta fit, like, get 105 now to get noticed. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 125 would do it. Yeah, I, 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 I had my camera inside looking at your, uh, your ring as it was coming out. <laughs> so, so we're watching Chris Roblosky, the women's leader, reigning world champion. She's running here. She just finished operation successfully. And we're running alongside her for a bit. And then in the picture-in-picture, uh, picture, we're back. We're still back at operation. So now you, okay, so let's, so we talked about how you want your back against that diagonal cross piece, so you want your left arm up against the, the, that vertical wall right in front of you, and then you want to hold your left hand up, and your left hand is going to get locked in position right in front of that hole. Your left hand is not going to move. It's a statue. So your back's not moving, your left arm's not moving, your left arm against the wall's not moving, and your left 
farm. Like, but no, uh, yeah, so everything is, 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 like is stationary. The only thing that's going to move is your right hand, like your right arm, it. that's feeding the pole yeah. through your left arm, through that hole. And your left arm is holding right in front of yeah. that hole, making sure that this, the metal pole does not bounce around and hit the, hit the edge of that and shock in you. So you yeah. use your right arm to feed it through. You're looking through oh, yeah, that hole. Your left arm is locked. It's not... Right. See, see, the problem with, with, with what this athlete in the front I is doing sure have a, is uh, any twitch, and you can... It'll, it'll yeah. bump against there. Also, you can, you can lose your, your ring drop real easily. Is it so I would take it off. And like, usually, once you get it on there, you've got it. Um, but those with hooks, now these look like almost like metal spears they've been using. Pipes, right? and which, which is going to be tougher. So I think the technique with that is you want to you got get the them? ring on the end and then get it like down the pole a little bit. Like Tyler was talking about, put a little, a little tilt in it. Because other, otherwise, if you're just holding it vertical, it's going to be too easy to drop it down there. Yeah. So here we got Chris Glossy coming up on an obstacle. Swing your tips. I would stay forward, actually, like, through this part, I wouldn't be, like, my chest would be forward, and I would kind of grab, kind of sideways, right, you know? Um, it still looks yeah. so strong. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> we are almost 13 hours into the race, and she has successfully completed one of the other obstacles without breaking a sweat. Let's hear when she's doing the final lap, and uh, this thing's just kind of... Fast walking, but still really chill with a slice of pizza. She was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. She knew she could do it. There wasn't more she could do. Also, she look wasn't at gonna get an extra lap in, but she could do the lap she needed to do. You got it. You look got at it. the athletes behind her, and, and, and not, to, not to criticize anything. It, 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 Chris made it look easy, like without a lot of work, just like I'm sliding through here. Uh, somebody said quiet so we can hear Chris. As far as we're aware, the sound from the camera hasn't been coming through. If that's not true and you could hear what we were talking over her, I do apologize. But yeah, as far as we're aware, there's no sound coming through from the cameras on the course. CC, sorry about that. No, we don't. We don't. Uh, we're not hearing any audio. There you go. Uh, nice. Got it. He asked how the wheelchair team is doing in the update. We have not seen them lately, but next time we see them cross, we'll, uh, we'll absolutely. Yeah, we saw them. Go. Go. Yeah. Last time we saw them cross, we put them up on the, on the uh, screen. It's not big one. It's not coming through. Talking about Somebody up there. there we go, there's the team. Top 10. The top 13. Oh, we get no change. Uh, I probably change. But definitely the top 3. 55, 50, and 45 miles. That that podium looks... Uh, they're three, well, three laps ahead. That's insurmountable, but it would take one of those top 3. It is wet, to yeah. For uh, another team to come wow. from there. Okay. So now everybody carrying it that far. That's crazy. Three. That's a long way to the last bit of mud. Dang. So Lee is telling us that we can hear rabbit audio. Uh, so sorry for talking over it. We was, <laughs> we've been working really hard to get that audio working. We've turned it down now, so it's not just heavy breathing. Hopefully, uh, but as far as we thought, it wasn't there. So next time he's talking to an athlete, we'll. We'll turn it up and we'll keep quiet. Yeah, no, I'd rather hear Chris talk than me. Yeah, also. same. So here's the penalty entrance for the failure on, I believe it's swinging tips. Mm. So, so this is the, the um, hammering like. one, isn't it? We hammer a stake into the ground. It had a fun name, which I've forgotten. Stakes are high? Maybe something like that. Something like that. I don't know. It's a pun. I'll promise you that. Oh, absolutely. Our rabbits have been putting on some miles today. Again, when you see the the bout like this, we're saying we see a lot of the athletes on. Look at that! Miles. Uh, Jason's got twenty three miles. He's, uh, he's done more miles than some of the athletes. Yeah. But no obstacles. 
You did them yesterday. Uh, no, well, no, I saw him going up and down Mudderhorn quite a few yeah, times. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, normally, when we get the cameras on the obstacles, you know, it's pretty bright. There are lights on the obstacles, but it's at this point when you see a this rabbit is, running by themselves with a head torch. You're like, yeah, it's pretty lonely. This out is there. what the course yeah. is like. That's what 90% of the course is. Yeah. Is you're out there by yourself. You know, maybe you get, you know, a person or two alongside you for a while. But generally, especially in the middle of the night, it's only the next two, three hours, it's only going to get more so. Now, look at that. He came up on a guy, and we didn't even see him until he was passing him. See if there's anything going out, out going on out there. And here we go. Stakes are high. High stakes. That is a trek to do a, a penalty. Oh, Michael Scott just went through um, swinging tips. Like, I wonder what time. These stakes are taking some beatings, huh? Look at this. A few okay. minutes before Chris Glusky, he went through swinging tips. Say what happened? Michael, Michael Scott right. <laughs> went through swinging tips just a few minutes before Chris. Oh, outstanding. Two laps ahead. After. Twice. twice. Yeah, twice. <laughs> now, when Chris was in here, he told us there's a point where like, you had to cover up the spray paint. Uh-huh. And I don't see the spray paint. It looks like he was looking at this guy that's hammering right now. He looked at a spot on the other side of the stake. I think look, there's some orange there. Maybe that's the spray paint. Oh, that stake. Cool. Yeah, I'm sticking the back. You can kind of see it, right? So after you hammer it in there, then you got to pull it out yourself. Mm -hmm. And then we asked Chris, well, can they just use someone else's hole? to?" Chris is like, yeah, if they do it before we find it, fill it in. They look... Uh, it looks like you get a few splinters from that. You know how when you were a kid, like the ultimate definition of, of, of punishment from your parents was go dig a hole and then fill it in? No. <laughs> Maybe well, never heard that. That's just a unique <laughs> This is super common in America. It happens to every family. Go dig a hole. Carlo, did you ever have to dig holes fill it in? No. Everyone in the booth is agreeing with me. Super common. This is this is what I'm imagining here. Pound a stake into the ground. Now pull it out. Look at that guy. Look at that. He's like, I did a really good job pounding this in. Now I gotta pull it out. And he doesn't have gloves. That's the word. I, I, these look splintiful. And look at these. And look at the tops of these stakes. They're nasty. They got. They need 11 more hours worth of uh, pounding. So pissed off. Oh, don't break it. Don't break your stake. Good job. I would absolutely. Oh, he's doing it on purpose. I would absolutely find a hole and stick my stake in someone else's leg, right? You got to get that head start. No? 100%. This is, a, you know what? As far as Tough Butter penalty, World Service penalties go, this is like on brand. And they put it at the middle of a penalty loop, so it's even worse. They've definitely. Up to the ante from last year. They've definitely raised the stakes. That's what I was looking for. I was like, just stakes, something with stakes. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's suck up Jason's audio and see if you guys can hear him. And then pull it out. Yeah. You use your book and some pull it out. Down the mark. That's what you use your book and some pull it out. If you break it. If you can hear me, it didn't break. I just got pulled out now. Yeah, pull it out. You can turn up the the slider. But this is devilish. I'm hammering these stakes in. Oh, that was getting whole. Bust it up. Sir, you have already broken the. You need to do the body. I need to what? You need to do the body. Okay, fine. saying if they can't get it, or if they break the stick, they got to do burpees. Ten burpees. Ten burpees. So they got a line on the stake that they got to get to. Am I good? Yeah, all right. Give him a raise. <laughs> double it. Yeah, double zero. <laughs> exactly. Ian Hosek joining us in the booth. Hello, everyone. How are you? I'm doing all right. Still awake, so we're doing great. Not running this year? We're gonna, we're, you're wearing a blue bib, I see. I have never ran this event. Get out! I have never ran World Cup. This is my first World Cup, as a matter of fact. Ian, I am, with, with the races you do and, and the things you do in the sport, I'm kind of surprised. 
I mean, I've always wanted to come just because I love the energy, but I really don't want to run yeah. for 24 hours. It's a long time. Sure. It's sure. a long time. It's a long time to run. Yeah. You are not wrong. Um, so your first time at the event, working pick. who are you working pick, pick for? I have currently four athletes I'm helping. I'm more coaching than pitting. Okay. So it's I'm a secondary hand for them, but I'm more on the coaching aspect. Sure. So there I've got go. Callie, yeah. Schweigert, um, Mike Chapman, Megan Beck, and Leah Snyder. Your first time at the Leah event. Leah Snyder, my mistake. Nice. Your first time at the event, what do you think of it? Oh, it's fantastic. I mean, I've always followed it, and it's just a unique <laughs> event in OCR. I mean, there are 24-hour races, but the energy is so <laughs> erratic comes to mind, but I don't know if that's the correct word. Um, welcoming and accepting, and everyone's out here pushing themselves to like see what they can accomplish. Callie, Callie's one of the athletes you're coaching. Yes. For. Um, she's having a good race. She's having a great race. She's what? in great spirits. She literally just came through, crushing like miles are flying by. She's doing great. It's really fun to see. She's excited about it too. What do you? What kind of coaching do you give her during the race? It depends on every lap. Every lap is different. Um, we This lap is about continuing what she's doing. It's working. She's getting good calories in from some ginger ale, uh, drinking her fluids, um, and then ramen in between laps and at a good pace and good spirits. Uh, a few laps ago, she wasn't eating as much, so I was talking about eating, um, and it was more about staying consistent. Right now, we're at, like, not crazy pushing, but just, like, working a little bit. It's sure. midnight. It's It's... The race is now started. <laughs> so, common rule, common <laughs> phrase in the race, in the race, the race starts at midnight. The race starts at midnight. Your approach changed in the last hour. She got some special words of encouragement. Uh, it's mostly been like, you get a now, like, lean into it. Uh, am I allowed to swear? We try to keep it family friendly. Okay. There was an F word in there, a little motivation. Um... And yeah, so a mantra of hers that we put in place. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, does that mantra have an F word in it? It does. Okay. <laughs> but it's um, something she says to herself to keep her going. Yeah, and it's something we, it's like a triggering point not to like really crazy go after it, but like now we're in the race. Sure. We're moving with purpose and still having fun. So when you guys were kind of game planning out the race, you, you like part of your planning process was the race starts at midnight. That's it wasn't gonna... necessarily midnight per se. It's more on like when she was feeling good. Okay. So if it was like one or two, then we can start rallying. But it, sure. you have to feel good in order to get to that point. Sure. So it was about management. And one of the laps she came in was like, I didn't eat enough. I didn't feel good. So it was like, okay, this is not that point. Obviously, I didn't bring that up. Um, she came in. She felt good. It's time to have that conversation. Now it's time to put it to the pedal. Put the pedal to the floor. Yeah, n not to the floor. Like okay. maybe get into Let's like downshift a little maybe bit. get into third gear, possibly fourth. Okay. We're not doing floor at all. Right, right. Yeah, sure. Not for twenty-four hours. Not for. There is no point in this race in which you put it pedal to the floor unless you're looking to win the sprint lap, and that's it. Sure. <laughs> Uh, so when, how, when you're talking about calories that she's like, you're, how, how closely are you monitoring calories? Like, is there, uh, are there a certain number like per lap or per hour you're trying to get in her? There's, I'm actually thankfully not in charge cause I'd have, I have several athletes, but they have kind of their lead pit crew individual and they're keeping track of that and sure. monitoring, um, kind of a bare bones minimum is like 200 to 250. If you're not hitting that, then things are going to go pretty bad sure. later on in the race. Um, but she's been like whole flask of uh, ginger ale and then ramen in between laps and then this lap I'm, we're talking about a bonus yeah. gel if she feels good to okay. like try and get that in there sometimes so. the nutrition part like just forcing yourself to eat enough oh it's can, can be a there's a phrase in the ultra world uh, that like ultra distance races are just eating competitions so just eat as much as you can and keep it down and then keep moving sure yeah so how is how are you feeling for how it looks for the uh Something we've been talking about with Callie and with, with Chris Rudlowski is shot at hitting 100 miles. Is that Has that conversation happened? Like Maybe, maybe not even with Callie yet, but in the pit area? No, that has no relevance in the race in my mind. Okay. I, I mean, that is great for a number, but in terms of the actual race, sure. it doesn't play a factor. It doesn't matter how many miles you get. You're trying to finish in front of the other person. Yeah. Sure. Or if any other people, like, yeah, do the best you can. Right. 
Um, what I am seeing is this race is very challenging in terms of the penalties, and a lot of people are failing things. Sure. And those penalties this year are very unforgiving, and they're adding on quite a lot of distance. So that is going to make it harder. Um, it's definitely a possibility. I'm not shutting it down, but I'm not going to say, like, for sure, either of them are going to get it. Sure. But you're not – the strategy there is not like, hey, we want to push for 100 miles. The strategy here is we want to win this thing. Whatever they get, we need to get a little more than them. Yeah, or or just like it's not even comparing to the other person. That conversation will happen much later. Sure. So that would be when four or five hours left, okay. depending on what's – but if because this race is so long, if you're racing against someone and they do something that throws off your game, sure, you're out because, like, you can have – small mistakes that just cascade over time and then you're hypothermic or you haven't eaten for four hours and then you're out. So you get to that point and then you talk about racing other individuals. How has Kylie been doing on the obstacles on pen on penalties and, and on the She has failed a fair amount of things. Um and that's been consistent with most of the most of the people is what I'm seeing um across the board. Uh men included. Sure. Yeah. It's something we noticed is that there there is a heavy incentive this year for obstacle completion. Very much so. Um, I know Austin Azar, I heard that he was doing quite well in the laps and came through. And I think one or two laps ago hadn't used a band yet or failed an obstacle. So that's going to play a really big factor late game when he shows up with 15 sure, bands, an full of bands and just kind of whips on through laps. Yeah. So. What's your guys' strategy for the bands? Are you using them now, like one at a, one per lap, or are you specifically on Grappler? Um, okay. And most of the women are doing that. If they can't complete Grappler, or they have failed it already, they are using a band on that just because the penalty loop is so long. Sure. Um, I've anywhere from nine minutes to like fourteen minutes. Sure. Uh, it's a very very long penalty, and that time is just time wasted out there are they able to do their three attempts on the grappler if they fail no cash in the band? no this year it's you have to commit to using the band prior to trying the obstacle okay. yeah that's that's frustrating I'm which sure. it is frustrating um it kind of does take away the safety net which i think is nice sure. um yeah. to a certain extent but it is challenging so you can't necessarily just give it your best and then right. use the band you gotta like commit one way or the other sure uh, so you do some other stuff in the sport of ocr you work a lot with uh, we'll talk talk about the organization you work with with uh, yeah OCR. so i'm vice president of usa ocr and our president is actually out here running jason stanley he's okay. out here competing as How's well uh i have no idea i spoke to him earlier um, but I, we should actually look up how he's doing. We'll look him up um, while we're talking. Yeah, Jason Stanley. Um, yeah, we're the National Federation for uh, the United States for Obstacle Course Racing. Um, this year, 2023, was like our main year of being public. And then 2024, we're looking forward to uh, growing our reach as well as the events um, that we're working with. Um, a lot of things in the works big conversations this week in terms of meetings and hopefully have some very exciting news for everyone uh, before the end of the year. Sure. You know, a few weeks ago they announced that obstacle course racing will have a part in the Olympics starting in 2028. Mm -hmm. Is there, what's, what's your level of involvement in that or the USA OCR? What's the, is there a relationship there or relation? So that? our level of involvement at the international and Olympic level is zero. Okay. Um, we are really focused on the U S and getting uh, the groundwork established here to have, safe and fair events um and that is like standardized referees standardized races in terms of um penalty loops rules and it's not meaning every race has to have the same obstacles that'd be boring that's not what we're here for we're here to support the people um and really help everyone feel like the event they go to is going to be safe there's insurance um as well as officiating and like doping and that side of things sure. just side note we looked up we got jason's Stanley. Seven laps. Seven laps, 10 hours and 31 minutes. Came through Matterhorn three minutes ago. Oh, he's going to do finishing lap eight right here. 40 yeah. miles in. Let's go, Jason. Yeah, he, I mean, he, we probably see him run by. You know what? We've seen so many people run by, but right now they're just like a shape and a headlamp. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, to... it's quite dark out. <laughs> Although I'm pretty, I don't know if this is just my head or there are more lights, but I think it's getting lighter. So. Okay. 
there, and I know for a fact that that's not true. <laughs> so I might need some sleep soon. Sure. Well, cool. So what else are you working on, Ian? Uh, I am taking, I'm in my own off season personally from competing after, um, OCRWC in Mammoth and then, uh, coaching this <laughs> event and then it's kind of winter time for me. Sure. Um, but it's really going to be a big push in, um, USA OCR with uh, upcoming meetings and a lot of things in the works. Um, so yeah, I'm just ready for ski season. <laughs> How can people find out more about USA OCR and sign up to become a member? Yep. USAOCR.org, I believe is our website. Yeah, it is org. Um, and it's got all of our, what we stand for, who's on the board. Uh, we are looking for more involvement. So if you want to get involved, you can reach out through our social media, which is also um, at USAOCR for Instagram. Um, and those are main lines of contact. And then we talked before, there is a membership program. If There is a membership. Currently, it is free. It will be most likely having a fee in 2024 just because we have expansion. And that's how federations get money to actually do things. Sure. So. Why should people think about joining USAOCR? What are, what are the benefits? What's the... Yeah, that that's a very great question. Um, like I said, we're looking for safe and fair events and expanding OCR. Right now, we're in kind of a weird state where we have we see OCR kind of not shrinking, but going down into more like the safe stuff in terms of events that are established. Um, we don't see a lot of tiny things popping up all over the place. The numbers are st static, I would say. Um, but we're looking to grow it and get more awareness and then also help develop what we have. So working with events and helping with drug testing, helping uh, with the national team for international events. That's one of the things I didn't mention um, is age group and elites going to international level events put on by the World Obstacle um, Federation. And just support obstacle course, course racing across the board. So if you've ever been frustrated with races not having trained officials or races not having drug testing, or you have been to an obstacle course race that had like uh, an obstacle that you felt was unsafe. Those are the things we're trying to help people with um, and make sure these races have those that standard. So when they see the uh, USA OCR sanctioned on a race, they know that those are things they can expect. You can go to usaocr.org for more mm -hmm. information. Sign up to become a member. Ian Hosek, thanks so much. Thank you guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for tuning in to World Stuff is Mutter. Good to have you. Yeah, thanks. I know the uh, commentators can't hear me, but uh, actually I don't know why. They should be able to, but if they can't, be on the comments to tell them to let me know whenever they turn me up. Here comes one of those muddy hugs. Oh, I got one for you every time. Love the line, the line for hugs. There you go. There you go. Nice job. Oh, right in water. Water from the foot, right in the face. There you go. You can stabilize. Shoulder, shoulder. Put your weight on my shoulder. There it is. Nice, nice. Great job.
Hey guys. How y'all feeling? Oh, no. <laughs> left leg. Left leg. Right leg to the shoulder. Go off camera. Standing <laughs> up in three, two, one. Stand up. Nicely Out. done. Nicely done. You got it, there you go. joining us there. Pleasure to have him on the show. He had a uh, fantastic OCRWC. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, two second places and two first team places as well. And I caught up with him afterwards, did a podcast, and it was really nice to get to know, find out more about what he does, oh. and being a coach, uh, as well as his work with US 
OCR. You host the OCRWC podcast? I absolutely do, which is a little bit weird because every time I speak to an athlete, I'm like, this isn't actually about OCRWC. We talk about everything. But it's just under our... Free name. Is that Austin going through? No, I don't know. Oh, you got the um, neoprene cap on. That's helpful in those uh, water officers where you got laid down, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is this nice. going on? I'm taking my suit one piece at a time. <laughs> Yeah, it's not crazy cold. Not too bad. I'm not getting wet, but I'm sweating when I run. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they're not telling me if they're turning my volume up to listen to me, but they they are stopped talking, so I, I don't know if they're listening to me or not. Okay. okay. <laughs> what mile are you on? This is lap six. Lap six. So thirty. Awesome. Yep. Very cool. Yep. What's your name? Jason. Jason, mine too. Yeah, okay, cool. Right on. Uh, Jason, what? Fine, huh? So, uh, Northern Minnesota. Love awesome. It. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so it's cold. Are you just used to that cold up there? Yep. So, when I left home, it was 32 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> this is Very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Good welcome. Nice. That's awesome. Ooh, I hadn't seen anybody do uh, those dingleberries coming up. The uh, overhead cargo. Oh no! I or strap. Seen that one in action. Oh, okay. Yep. Pretty sure that's what's up here. Yeah, it's getting a little sparse out here. Yeah. Seeing big, big gaps with no people. Yep. I think the people are chilling at the fires. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the temperature not being too cold makes it easy to just like get cozy. Because if it's cold, cold, then you go in the pit, you're still cold. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, you throw a blanket on your shoulders and you sit by the fire. Yeah, right now, yeah, it's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah, dude. You get cozy quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that thing's loose. Ooh. Woo! Ooh. It's, not, it's not cargo. You know, that cargo net is kind of rough. Yep. So it looks like they changed it to like a, like a strap net. So yeah. I don't know how it feels. No. It looks like it had some gifts to it. Yeah. Oh, you're this way. You too, man. Come on, come on. Go. There you go. Go, big feet. She is from 300. This is Bill Knight's wife. Go. Oh, yeah, she went to PS138. Oh. oh, my God. <laughs> Great time, though. You did better than me. I'm waiting on Gold Soprano. Don't worry about it. Anybody getting through this time of night? I don't know. We just asked him. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Gotta make that tempo. Yeah, yeah. And the Russian challenges are hard tonight, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Fall in, you get an there, everyone. So, <laughs> as, as Scott, of course, race lock 13 14. We are not going to be talking about time of day for much longer because the clocks will be changing soon. So, we are sticking to the race clock, which you can see in the upper left hand corner. We are just past hour 13 of the race. Oh, is this Dingleberries? Here we go. Here we are at Dingleberries. And then you just roll it up and stick it in the red bin. And I was like, oh my God. Now we heard directly from, I'm trying to remember now if it was from Chris or from Giles. We heard directly from them, Dingleberries and the Dingleberries penalty is brutal. So we're watching, we're watching Dingleberries right now. We haven't seen the Dingleberries penalty yet, but we will uh, look forward to seeing that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a rough one. You gotta get some some real like pull ups to be able to reach it. Yep. That was. 
We have a very excited Mike in here talking about stuff. I can tell you all about the metal. Here we go. This is what you're all after. Yeah, in the middle, you still get some hang, but like on the far edge, that's your best spot. Comment here. Swelling was so bad in Atlanta. I put chicken broth powder on pizza because I was lacking so much salt. Disgusting. I believe that's Anka Frederick from Germany, and that swelling can be a real thing. Just a comment. Don't worry. Oh, she's not here. She's like it's a beautiful. But like Carlo walked in, he's like, Anka's what? We're what? talking about Anka Frederick. Anka? Anka? Carlo's like, Anka's not here. I'm like, no, mm, Carlo's yeah, not right. here. But she's watching the race from wherever from she is. Some, ask her where she is. She's in some beautiful yeah. tropical like location. The biggest Anka, of Carlo wants to know what beautiful tropical location you are in right now. And if you say thunder down under, I'm not going to tell Carlo. <laughs> So Anka's talking about swelling. Her, her, probably her hands are just swelling. Was so bad in Atlanta. I put chicken broth powder on pizza because I was lacking so much salt. Disgusting, but worked miracles. Chicken broth powder. Is that for the high sodium? Why not just drink it? You'd have to ask Anka. I don't know. But I, Anka, why not just drink it? A spoonful of pizza makes the medicine go down, as Mary Poppins taught us. From the UK, Mary Poppins. British. He really likes to take the Mickey out. I have really. I, my kids are older now. I have a 16 year old and a 10 year old. But man, when they were like three and eight, I was really looking for a like a Mary Poppins style nanny. And let me tell you what, you can't find them. They're not out there. They are. So, no, well, not over here. They're not. They're I'll tell you who used to exist over here. And actually, probably around the time you were looking for one, was a British athlete called Hattie. Hattie? Hattie, who was a Norlin nanny. Okay. Which is the nannies, they wear like a really, a certain uniform. Sure. And she's very British. And uh, yeah, you could, you could have had a very British little nanny there if you knew. Well, you don't where to look. Missed my window, but I ended up just, just spending time with my kids, and I'm glad I did. So. Oh, so you did okay. some parenting. So we're looking at the... We're looking at the uh, the penalty for dingleberries. Now, originally, this was way too tough, where it was you had to weigh out a certain amount of dirt. Uh, five pounds. Five pounds within a half pound, plus or minus, into the bucket. Now, it turns out, Mike Stefan was out there. He told us they only had two scales. So they weren't even going to be able to, to manage the, the, yeah, the onslaught, the number of quantity of athletes going through i mean you can see one like six people right now on screen so so it, they've ch kind of changed it to basically a bucket carry that doesn't even five pounds though is pretty light no, it's not, it's yeah no, you... like that's that's like a sand bucket for the beach right that's like two like, bags of sand was... two bags of um sugar two bags of sugar would be about what's in that uh in that bucket Two bags of sugar helps the medicine. medicine if we uh, if we sing too much, they're gonna. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know if we're talking about powdered sugar or brown sugar or a bag of sugar, granulated sugar, or all sugar. A bag of sugar is a kilo. A bag of sugar is a kilo, Javier. So put that in your calculator and figure it and, out. We're, uh, we're accumulating 100 miles. That's actually 4.4 pounds. 
I love this shot. Every once in a while, we go to the shot of our our rabbit. This is Jason running. This is what ninety percent of World's Toughest Mudder looks like. Is this? And, and I'm not joking. It's a true story. You're out there by yourself, just you and your headlamp and your bucket, maybe. So, uh, talking about some results. Austin Azar, Joshua Fiore have started on lap 14 within a minute of each other. Josh, a minute behind Austin. If you ever want to like spend time alone with your brain, I feel like World's Toughest Butter is a good spot for it, right? And if yeah. you're not comfortable with your own company, I don't know if it's the best race for you. <laughs> but I feel like you'd find out real quick. Now, I've run World's Toughest Mudder I just myself. can't keep myself entertained. That's the problem. If I had to run in silence, in the dark, by myself, it's like... Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I, oh, I, I feel like there might be a lesson in there for you, Fran, that uh, you, you need to be... Com if, if you are happy with your own company, you'll never be alone. I'm fine with my own company. I love my own company. But doing this, I would like I just couldn't keep myself entertained. So there's two ways to run World's Toughest Mudder. Two I mean there's lots of ways, but there's two staffing ways. One is by yourself, uh -huh. which is what most people do. Most people sign up as individuals. Or you can run it as part of a team, which I've done multiple years. See the problem with that is you have to hang out with other people. You know, if, if you don't like people and if you don't like being by yourself, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I've got a long time to suffer. <laughs> You've got to pick one or the other. Take, take, Come on. Take breaks from the team. <laughs> but I'll okay, tell you what, now, guys. I definitely, if I had to pick one, I prefer running as part of a team. Yeah, I think I would too. Especially if they're, it's got to be the right people, obviously, because you're going to spend 24 hours together and you got to like each other. Like if this is like people, you're like, if this isn't a good team building exercise for the office. Uh <laughs> But it's great for, like, guys you went to school with, guys you see once a year, mm. your old buddies from college or whatever. So I used to run with three guys that we all we, – we knew each other back when we were, like, 16, 17, 18. We went to school together. We worked together afterwards. We, we all knew each other, and we kept in touch for years. But then, like, you know how it is, like, you get older and you, you get, you're married and you have kids and you just kind of drift apart from those – like late teen, early twenties friends you had. I'm and not that old yet. We're still old friends. Well, as as an older person, let me tell you, I think we're like the same oh. age. <laughs> but it happens. You just kind of drift apart from your friends, and it's it's not intentional, and it's not there's no malice to it. But it's like, hey, this is world stuff is better. It, I know it's a crazy way to do it. She's in Thailand. But. We, my friends and I, we, we would see each other once a year at World Sales Motor every year. Sometimes we'd bring our wives. They would pit for us. That's nice. Sometimes kids, like family member. It was a great experience. We had a good run of about So five, why did it years. stop? Um, I don't want to say we got old, but we got old. <laughs> uh, so, and I don't know. Maybe we'll get the band back together next year. Well, here's honestly, here's probably what it didn't didn't kill it but it kind of brought it to completion mm. was we all wanted to get 50 miles and you got and, it and we all got it for the first time together in 2021 at laughlin and so that was kind of a a big culmination we all got it it was it was great to do that together now last year three of the four of us came back i worked in the media here with you fran um one of the guys is a doctor he worked in the medical tent across the way from us last year oh, cool. and the third guy he ran solo which he'd never done before. He was probably, of the four of us, he was the best athlete. And so he wanted to kind of run solo just to get that experience. Um, mm. So, yeah, so you can run individual. You can run as part of a team. They're both great options. I think I prefer running it as part of a team, though. If it's the right team. If it's the right team. Yeah, I think I agree. So, Will, uh, you use playing foot. Um, how you got into shape and uh, you're looking very yoked right now. What, what, what's your secret? So, you, you know, the importance of, you know, getting older and staying in shape. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so um, I have several hundred milers in the tent. One of them, I think he was being sincere, but with, with uh, no, I looked at you and I'm like, damn, what happened? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Daddy. I, 
yeah, I was like, okay. no, that's the daddy right there. No. Um, that's the daddy. That's the daddy. That's the daddy. That's the daddy. <laughs> so if you're in your 40s and you want to look fit, I would say the first tip is grow a beard. <sighs> Like so that. that'll, I don't that'll have that choice. I don't have that choice, and I don't. I've got nothing to cover the double chin. No, you know what it was? Was I kind of figured out eventually? Like, I'm I'm a little bit lighter than I was last year, yeah. but I'm I'm in better shape, 100 percent, than I was last year. And I just kind of realized I was like, you know what? Um, I need to run every single day. Ugh. I just run every single day. Maybe I'll run a mile. Maybe I'll run six miles. Maybe if it's a Saturday, I'll run 12 miles. But I'm just like, I'm just going to run every single day. I skip Sundays. Sunday is my day of rest. My Sabbath, as you will. Um, <laughs> and then what I figured out is I need to lift every day. And because I'm running every day. Wait, wait, wait. So you're, you're telling us the secret to looking good and in shape is to exercise daily. No, well, no. There's actually two two secrets. No, it's You're going to love this secret. part. You're not going to hear this anywhere else. Is it eat good? Diet. Diet. Wow. <laughs> so, the I secret, don't want these you answers. You won't hear this in any fitness book. There's no program on earth that'll tell you this. But if you eat a little bit healthier, and if you exercise a little bit more, you'll feel a little bit better. Wow. And if you do it a lot, you'll feel a lot better. Wow. I'm going to give that a go. So so we uh, we have a little little weight set at the house, and my son is 16, plays mm -hmm. football. And it's been great because, like, when he when you start football, I never played football as a as American, American football. 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 Really. American football. I never played it as a as a child. But he was like starting at the beginning of the season. They're doing two a days. They are crushing it. My son, sixteen year old, got ripped. I was like, my little boy is becoming. <laughs> he got his driver's license. He's driving a car. I, I wake up in the morning. I make him breakfast, and I walk him to the front door, and I wave goodbye like a housewife Aww. in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> so part of me is like, if I, if my 16 year old son, who's also going to school and like getting ready for college and doing all this, if he can make time to work out twice a day, then I, as a grown man, but he also with has over the my schedule, energy of a 16 year old. You know what? So I'm in my forties. I'm 44. When you're, when you're 16, you, you know, you have no clue what's going on. You do what you're told, right? You're like becoming an adult, but whatever. Then you're teenage in your twenties. You're like, I'm an adult now. I need to figure this stuff out. And your 30s is when you finally figure out, oh my gosh, this is what life is about. This is what's important to me. This is what I should be. 30s is when you finally, as an adult, you figure it out. In your 40s, in your 40s, you hit your prime. I was in my you prime at 30. Have, 30 was my prime. You still have the physical gifts. But you're not old yet. But mentally, it forty is when the, the perfect convergence of like physical and mental meet. And money. Also, money. Lord willing, you've had a good job for twenty years. Making a human aged me like nothing else. Say that one more time. Making, Making a, a human, human aged me like nothing else. You know what? Having kids um, is both the greatest and the most frustrating thing in the world. And we can literally yeah. do a, a 24 hour show about that. But when people are like, ah, I hate my kids, I'm like, you're probably just kind of a miserable person. And like your kids picked oh, up on it. I, I love my <laughs> kid. Just creating her just, 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 just destroyed my body. Yeah. No, well, I, I can't, I can't really speak to that. I don't, I don't, I mean, I stubbed my toe really hard one time. So I'm not saying I know exactly what it's. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so sure, I guess sure. the short answer is I've been. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this obstacle is called barrel, barrel chested. Barrel chested. <laughs> no one's mentioned what it's called because we all forgot. This is this is a okay. It's it's both easier and harder than it looks. Because I think that it looks pretty it look hard. Like it's that looks pretty hard right there. But what they're doing right now, just that hand over hand, and he's actually this guy on the, on the left is doing it the hard way. He's his arms doing all the work. Now the guy in the back behind him, you can see he's, he's yeah. using his legs over and over, over over each, each other. Jason was saying yesterday that the straps are pretty painful to hold on to, and I imagine yeah. if you're bad leg, that's going to hurt a lot as well. We're seeing a lot of guys in wetsuits 
Almost everyone. I mean, I'd hope so, because we're in hour 13 and 30. We're sitting here in our dry robes. In our dry robes. And it's a good thing we are, because it got, it got... I had to put on literally snow pants. It's like snow 64... Pants? Snow, snow pants? pants? Snow pants. Snow pants. Pants for snow. Snow trousers, we call them. <laughs> no one's ever called them that. Okay. So you're not supposed to touch the water, but what if the slack line is the, so slack? That it's not his fault, it? right? Yeah. That's the slack line. I, I hope. Oh well, hey, uh, that's, that's his fault. That guy was 99 percent of the way there. <laughs> that is the worst. Oh, and he got to take a penalty. That poor. Oh man, I feel for that guy. He did. He did the entire obstacle. He just didn't dismount. That's a shame. Oh, so um, Michael Scott has started his 15th lap. Literally a minute ago, we missed him come through again. We are. Oh, hold up! Horrendous. He might have hit the bell. Maybe he was done. Oh, maybe. I didn't. I didn't see. Some obstacles don't have bells. You know, I noticed that swinging tips, no bell. Mm, no. Kind of confusing. Yeah. So hey, that's one that needs it. That, that, seriously, yeah, people, yeah. people yeah. were literally getting to the end and being like, "What do I do? What do I do?" Right. Yeah. 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 Drop. <laughs> yeah. Drop. Yeah. That's that is a through yeah. twelve years of OCR we've been trained. There should be a bell. Yeah. That obstacle. Yeah. So we're just standing at the end like. Hey, Am I yeah. allowed to go? Yeah. So real quick, this obstacle single plate. It's a plate. I think you put a balloon on it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting looking. Uh, that it's volunteer like, was also like, really fantastic. Uh, penalty. Chris Ball, this is a, a penalty water balloon, isn't it? For, yeah, water oh, balloon on a plate that you had to balance. For barrel chested. And if you drop the water balloon, you got to start over. Uh, so, uh, heads up. Uh, with Free Michael Shot just rather. finishing his last yeah, lap. He did his last lap in one hour and 15. Michael Three Schott. minutes slower than his lap previously. And his mile, he's at 70 miles at yeah. 13 and a half hours. He's got 12 hours left to do whatever. He's he's doing an hour and 12. I feel like lap. if you gave me 12 hours, I could do 30 miles to get to 100. I mean, maybe. That took me 24 and I got 50. So I'm not going to say that. Are you that. saying if you were already at 70 hours? I was already at 70. I feel like if miles. Michael Schott tagged me in right now, I could get him to like 90 and then he could finish it out. Um, and Austin Azar and Joshua Fiore still almost neck and neck at lap 14. 65. Snogging, uh, they were uh, maths, maths, 18 seconds between them. Elma King is still on lap 13. How many men right now have 60 miles or more? How many laps is 60 miles? That's 12 laps. That's nine men have 60 miles. Um, Grant Thompson from the UK in ninth has 60 miles. After him is James Burton from the UK. He's in 10th and uh, he's got 55. He's on his lap 12. So at 5 p.m., one of the things we put out there as a possibility, well, and and we have a crew in here. I, hey guys, I'm interested to hear your feedback in this. At 5 p.m., you know, 5, 10 p.m. we say whatever your mileage is at the end of the race, you want to have half of that at 10 p.m. Right? So at 5 p.m., we're like, yeah, we're halfway to 10 p.m. Let's do some way too early math, not not predictions, but possibilities. And we were just looking at numbers. We weren't looking at names specifically, but we were looking at numbers, numbers. at where everyone was at, at at the time. And one thing we said was that eight we could have eight men. No, he said this. One thing I said was we could have eight men yeah. hit 100 miles. Now, two years ago, the two years ago we had six men hit 100. Last year we had five men and one woman hit 100. I said eight men specifically. could, And again, not prediction, but it's out there. It's possible. It's a and prediction. looking at right now, we're looking at the top ten. Top nine, I'll have 60. 10 has 55 mile. And he, 10's going to be in here. James Burton will be in here any minute with his 60th lap, 60th mile. I, I feel like, if anything, I undershot it with eight. Like, they're going to need a, like a pallet of orange jackets this year. Most of everyone out of six, two years in a row. What happens if they just so many people start hitting 100? Then we got to get a bigger stage. But like, do they move the goal? Do, do they, they make for a the new red, for jacket? jacket? Or I think what because if move, everyone gets one, so you know what? That's a great question because the consensus so far we've heard is obstacle dif obstacle, not difficulty necessarily, but penalty penalty difficulty is up this year, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's not like it's necessarily an easier course. Mm. Maybe I we have we have Tyler still in here. 
Would you say uh, this is an easier course or harder than last year? Counting the penalties. I mean, I'd say a little bit harder, like just with just with yeah, obstacles and the penalties. Temperature wise, it is a little more a little more doable. Or, Bit more comfortable running conditions. Sure. But so, a little bit like easier like weather. And, like keeping warm in general. Sure. Um, I think I don't think I don't think it'll be a, as big of a problem as it was like last year. Like you know, last year was pretty chilly. Sure. Uh, but that's that's one factor. Uh, yeah. Here's what I th- here's what Lee's I Lee's leaving us. Lee is Lee is abandoning his chance Lee. of getting a sticker. Lee, no sticker, man. So is boss. Sorry. But hey, thank you for watching, Lee. Catch up, uh, catch up when you wake up. So, so we were saying. I, here's what the... I think. I'm going to talk to some more, some more elites like uh-huh, Tyler uh-huh. tomorrow. I think where, from here, from it's easy for us to say from sitting in this booth. But what I think is, if you can finish the obstacles, it's an easier course than last year. If you're yeah, failing the obstacles, obstacles it's, to it's, me, it's, seem that, easier. You'll lose. Yeah. The last year. If you can, if you can pass, if you can finish the obstacles, it's an easier course. If you yes. can't finish the obstacles, if you have to do the penalties, it's a much harder course. And I think a lot of these men are able to finish the obstacles, and that's why we're getting these mile, these these high mileages. I do think a lot of the obstacles look easier than last year, which is understandable with the penalties coming in, but they're still too difficult for a lot of people. Sure. But if you're at the top, they're not. Seventy miles at one thirty. That's crazy. I mean, and he's keeping a really steady pace as well. Yeah. He's he's literally Michael Schott, well, all of us, everyone yeah. still has twelve hours. He's left. Michael that, shocked us. He could walk. So shocked. Oh. We're shocked. Michael has shot us. Yes. Uh, I mean I it literally it like, one, but... like Mark consistency. If someone had fifty five miles right now, Jack James Burton in tenth place, that's a that's a good start to the race. Like we'd be like, Yeah, he's probably gonna get hundred miles. You think uh, thirteen if I, if and a I, half? If I saw James Burton, if if first, if Michael shot through Grant Thompson, first through ninth place, did not show up today. If they were all at home in bed asleep at one thirty in the morning right now, and James Burton was in first place with fifty five miles right now, I'd say I think James Burton is going to hit a hundred, maybe one hundred and five miles. Nah, hundred. Let's see if we can get some audio from our runner here. My audio is up. I'm running with. What's your first name? Pontus. Pontus. Yeah. Last name? D-Man. D-Man. Pontus D-Man. Close. <laughs> what mile is you on? On lap 12. 12, so you're at 70. Hitting 70 after this lap? Uh, 60, Six, 60, yeah, sorry. Bad math. Late at night. <laughs> You're moving good. See him go through here. So this is uh, Melton Point. People asking to see this earlier, and here it is. This is actually an interesting obstacle. Um, you can see how it's set up like a teeter-totter. There's a rope in there, and then boom. Now, you could slide out. You could just let, let the momentum carry you, or you can support it. You can support yourself with the rope and kind of slow yourself down. Mm. That rope in there, I don't know if it's a choking hazard, it is, I'd like it, but it's, it's definitely a, a rope burn hazard. Our producer, Jason, went through yesterday. And he said he got kind of uh, not. He, I don't know if he used the word choke, but it got around, wrapped around him, and it was concerned. It was like that's kind of terrifying. It's kind of terrifying. Absolutely. Well, he's got big um, he's got big grays across his kind of shoulder. He has a like neck. a rope burn that that looked like someone, yeah, looked like a one inch rope. So, I was kind of nervous about even trying it out, but I went through it, and it's. I mean, I've been on sketchier obstacles. So it's, I think the scary thing about races like this is just people are kind of out in the dark by themselves. So there's the rope hanging from the ceiling of that. You can, you can kind of see where the top of the rope is sticking out of the other end of the outside here. And then it makes a loop 
that connects to the top of the other end. You can see the other end of that about two feet from the, from the end. Just an update on the, how the women are doing. Stephanie Bland and Callie Schweighart uh, both passed swing tips on their 12th lap within like 30 seconds of each other. So second and third place, very close. Yeah, really close. And then fourth place is currently Katie Knight. Um, she's on her lap 12 at Snogging Dirt. So right now, top four women all are showing 55 miles. Mm -hmm. um, do we know how far Chris Rogloski is from the uh, Mudderhorn, which means she'll be coming through here. She's just past Mudderhorn. Mudderhorn is the last checkpoint. The I want to say the next to last obstacle. Uh, um, yeah, Mudderhorn and then Everest and then here. But she's been getting from Mudderhorn to the finish in about three minutes or something. <laughs> Fast, three or four minutes. Flying up Everest. Let's see. Her last lap was one hour 33. Her last lap was one hour 33 minutes. A okay. lap before that was 116. 116. She's lost 17 minutes, this most recent lap. Okay. I've just realized how ginormous this dry robe is as I'm sitting here. I just saw myself in the camera. Can we picture in picture? I'm not sure who that is. Got the finish line up on our main screen, our picture in picture with the one of the athletes out there on course. Chris uh, we, I think we'd probably be expecting to see Chris in the next couple of minutes. Something, something. Yeah. That will be putting on to 60 miles, which the fourth and fifth place men are on 60 miles currently. So... In the overall standings, when Chris finishes this lap, will she be in the top 10 overall? Uh, she's currently 10. She's currently 10. Mm -hmm. She's moved yeah, up I'd, from... I'd expect her to, yeah. if nothing, if anything, move up in that overall ranking. Oh. Absolutely. Well, it depends how many of your men get 100 miles, isn't it? My bad. Your man. Well, I think... I mean... We're just kind of talking here at 1.30 in the morning, 1.45. Let's say Chris gets 100 and eight men get 100. Yeah, it depends, I guess. On time. Time-wise, right? Where she fits in that time. She was doing really well on her timing of laps. At one point, she was uh, faster than all but two men on her lap. To be honest, Austin Azar's last lap was 134. Is that Chris right there? Woo! Chrissy coming through. Crushing it. And Chris Fiore's Austin. last lap was 131. So I know they are like a lap ahead of her, but their lap time is the same as hers. Let's so, look at so the people wait, so, that so actually... El Chris's lap time is, a, is the same is similar, similar to Austin and Joshua. But actually, let's look at Elmer King and Isaac Sanderson because... That's who we would be talking about. Uh, their lap times are faster, but they've done fewer miles. Yeah, I don't know. So all of these athletes, male and female, that are at 60 miles, 65 miles right now, are running about an hour and a half per lap. Is that fair? Uh, apart from Michael Scott, who's running at an hour 15. And actually, the guys who are running fast, uh, the guys who've got fewer miles are running a bit faster. It's like really? they've not slowed. Well, yeah. So let's have a look. Austin Azar, lap 12 was 114, lap 13 was 134, right? Okay. Elmer King, lap 12 was 120. So his lap 12 was slower, but his current lap time is faster because he's a lap behind. Oh, I see, I see. So his saying, current yeah. lap time 
is he's got one, one less lap on yes. his body. So, so the lap time we're seeing is faster than the last lap time we're seeing, but if we compare it to the same lap, it's sure, hundred percent. That makes yeah. sense. Okay, I'm glad that makes sense because kind of. Didn't... I was like, why are the uh, the slower laps being fast? That, that that makes sense. All right. So looking at some trench warfare here. Actually, that's not our official name for this one. It's uh, trench. Trench press. Trench press. Trench press. Because you're being pressed. It. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, is that a play shot. on French press? Oh, that's clever. And look, there's the coffee from the French press. The trench press. <laughs> Plywood on top at the end. That just like it's. Oh. Uh, it's the end of that obstacle. Tyler's kind of educating us. That that's plywood that's holding wow. all that weight down there. You would not like that obstacle. I would, would not like that really obstacle. I don't like dark obstacles where you're getting pressed. Uh, a couple years ago, they had an they had a bunch of black tarp leading into Arctic Enema, and then halfway through the race, they turned it around backwards, and they had a under that black tarp, above that black tarp, they also had netting, and mm. some people would get under the wrong part, and so they'd get they get all the way to the Arctic Enema. And they're stuck under this black tarp, and they can't. They're like, "That's kind of scary." It's again. terrifying. Yeah. Like you're not. That's not the way you're supposed but to go. But it's so panics. Right. Yeah. There's no anyway. So on course, then we're also looking at operation there in the uh, picture in picture. So the race started officially almost 14 hours ago. So the official start of the race was two hours ago. Already two hours ago. Isn't that crazy? Wow. <clears throat> As of interest, Chris's last lap was 134.30, so she lost less than a minute. 134.30 for her last lap, so she which lost... was less less than a minute slower than her previous lap. Uh -huh. If she can maintain 134, even 140, it's it's a little too early to start mapping out. She she has sixty. That's eight laps left to get. She has. She had. It's we're fourteen hours into the race. It's a twenty four hour race. Twenty five and a half. She She's has got eleven hours left. Eleven hours left to do eight laps. So eight. It's too early to do this in the race. We did this last year. It worked eight. out. Yeah, so she's six. Uh, doesn't quite give her enough time for an hour and a half lap. Yeah. This is eight hours left. Didn't last year? Didn't she speed up a little bit towards she the did. end? She did. She went a bit slower. Like once it got light. Well, she was doing really speedy. And we got started to get really excited because you know, hundred miles was an unknown. And then it was later on in the night, like more towards morning, she slowed down. I think she had two slow laps of like one forty-ish or something, and then. And then she sped up again. It's about 140-ish right now. Oh no, I think her laps like they got closer to the like two hour e mark. I'm sure I don't oh, know where saying, I don't sure. know where the 140 came to in my head, but it felt like that was kind of like and then she sped up dramatically as the light came up. But that was more towards later in the morning. I mean just be just based on visibility, it's easier to run in the daylight, obviously, right? And probably so you can also see just, where you're putting your feet. I I, I guess Tyler, you you've done this. Spirits lift as the sun comes up, I guess. It's just easier. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it's like, it's so refreshing, like, seeing that, you know. It's, it, it is encouraging, motivating, you know, mm. you see it. Like, yeah, I think, it, you, just, you know, there's nothing else to tell you, like, you're, you're close to being done, and, you know, you see the sun, it's the next day, like, okay. No, you're, you're there. The finish like, line is literally like, in sight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sunrises are always spectacular to see one. It always feels good, but I imagine after doing all of that, you're like, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you know you can. So, so I was just asking, would it be possible to recap the men standing? Is Michael still a number one? He absolutely is. Oh, awesome. So Michael Schott still in first place, 70 miles after 13 hours, about 14 hours of the race. 
Austin Azar into second place. Austin and Joshua kind of establishing themselves mm. in the second, third spot. Mm. Now, again, it's it's still early. Like, there's lots of time for mistakes to be made, for moves to be made, for places to shift up. This is not locked into place by any stretch. Michael Schott is ahead, and it, I'd say right now it's his race to lose, but it's not guaranteed at all. It's, it's still 10 hours, mm -hmm. more than 10 hours left for, for stuff to, to move around. So, I mean, we could see some, like, like, and there's a name I still don't see on that list. I'm, I feel like I'm going to see on that list, Trevor Psychos. Should we, should we search it? Trevor Psychos has won this race twice. He's run 100 miles six years in a row. And he did suffer a toe injury a couple weeks ago. But he's, I, I think he's going to have 100 miles. And he's not even in the top ten right now. His last lap took in two hours. Oh, I don't uh, think he's ever had a lap. He was two hours. on lap eleven. He finished lap eleven at twelve forty nine, and he has not gone back out yet. And that was an hour ago. Oh man, Trevor Psychos may not be bound for a hundred miles yet this year. Well, that's that's a plot twist. Mm. Uh, women top ten. How big of a lead does Chris have? Great question. So, so Chris started lap 13 at 1.50 a.m. So literally two minutes ago, she started lap, um, sorry, lap 13. She had a six-minute pit stop. That's a long stop for her. I mean, it's the middle of the night. We can forgive that. I'll allow it. And that lap took her, the last lap took her 1.34. Stephanie Bland is coming up behind her with Callie Schweikart really, really close behind there. Oh, they Callie's are, overtaken. Callie's in second place Callie on has, the course currently. I know it doesn't sure. count until they cross the line, but Callie hit melting point on lap 12 at 148, and Stephanie Bland hit um, melting point on lap 12 at 151. Melting point is obstacle 12 of 20. So, I mean, we can say Chris has roughly half a lap lead. Okay. Roughly half a lap. Laps are taking about. An hour and a half right the now. The laps take about an hour and a half. Um, so, Stephanie's last lap took an hour and 40. And Callie's last lap took an hour and 37. So 45 to 50 minute lead, mm. you could say. Sounds about right. I mean, if you look at that, it looks like an hour lead, I guess. Because lap 12, 13, 43. Lap 11, 12, 43. Look at that, it looks like even more than, well, an hour later, she got five more miles. Mm. So. She's ahead. Yeah. Chris has a strong lead. No, again, nothing's locked in stone. Like, we've got 10 hours of race left. This is a 24-hour race. It's not a 14-hour race. So, <laughs> look at the teams. <laughs> Now, our top three teams here, I feel pretty solid about making a prediction that this is your podium. They have been in the top three the whole race. All night long. DFit Black, Creation Divas, and Cristelli Fitness have been at the top of the team. And then the difference board. between them and four onwards is now, a lot of laps. Something for the teams to have to consider, for a team to win the race, just like for anyone to win the race, you must run a finisher lap. But mm -hmm. the team finisher lap must include all members of the team. Mm -hmm. So if a member of the team drops out, if a member of the team gets sick and can't complete that finisher lap, that that could jeopardize one of those three teams' standings. Mm -hmm. That's that's the biggest danger is them not being able to complete a lap, a complete lap with the whole team together. Sure, Jimmy. Yep, you're hooked up. To hit the uh, button on the side, Mike Stefano, yep. Obstacle Running Adventures Mike podcast, Stefano. is going to join us here right now. Yeah, I had a fun fact shared to me by uh, Thomas Anybody Peterson, sure. uh, who's been supporting yeah. the stream as well, as well as my podcast. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, he let me know that, according to, to his knowledge, uh, first place has not uh, done a single penalty lap. Wow. All night. So He's strong. Uh, it, it's, that sounds very, very impressive. And European I'm leading the way, huh? It, it looks good, yeah. Are we talking about Michael Schott? Are we talking about Correct. Christian Lossi? Uh Michael Schott. Michael Schott has not failed in a... We got word Michael Schott has not failed an obstacle. That's what we've yet. heard, so that that's pretty pretty incredible. That's incredible, and that is, and which is why he's maintaining these speedy laps. 
Because because having that lead over Austin Azar and Josh Fiore is no. <laughs> That, that's a big so feat. Mean feat. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and both those guys are strong, Austin and Josh. That big names. So that's this is something we've been talking about most of the night, Mike. Is that the the course has been designed clearly to incentivize obstacle completion? As it should. And, and I don't know if, if you could say it's to punish. I don't think it's to punish failure. I think it's it's an obstacle course race. Yes. You, you need to be able to do obstacles. And in the in the last couple of years, I think they they might have gone too far to the. Like the silly, not not the, and there's nothing wrong with silly. It's it's in the top under DNA. Right. But you need to make it, the 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 uh, the, pun, the the punishment. The penalty must be negative enough so that you are incentivized to complete the obstacle. Correct. I don't like obstacle. I don't like onerous penalties as much as the next guy. But if you're a strong strong obstacle athlete, you should be rewarded for that. Like that's this. Obviously, running is part of an OCR, and that'll always be. It's an important part. But if you if you have two equal runners and one guy is way better at obstacles, that guy should be way ahead of the other guy. It shouldn't be the person who can run faster. Yep. And I think we see not a just lot, run faster. Yeah. A lot of places, and I think this is what happens with Spartan Race specifically because of the way it's done, is that it can be won by fast runners. You can turn up. We've had in the UK, especially very fast marathon runners sure. who can't really do obstacles doing well because they just, they just don't do the obstacles, but they're fast enough to run. And it's, it's a really, really hard balance to get the running and the strength for obstacles. It's hard to get both of those. And so for a race to be able to test both of those equally is really tricky. Uh, looks like we might have a proposal to finish. Never mind, that's Carlo and uh, Javier Escobar. Uh -huh. Apologies. So yeah, I think they've done a good job. Now, now we'll looking back, we'll be able to evaluate better. Like, hey, did did they go too far with the penalty difficulty? Should the obstacles have been a little bit harder or a little bit easier? Um, there's always a conversation. Should there be different obstacles for the ladies? Maybe different um, different weights sometimes with sandbags is already. That's how I feel about certain events. <clears throat> um, <laughs> and I think with Tough Mudder, I've never felt that way, but I think looking at the uh, grappler, I, I do feel sure. that way. Um, I mean, you said it yesterday. You're like, is this a bad thing to say? Is this going to be hard for women? And I was like, look, the thing is, being a woman who is very opinionated, some things women are amazing at, some things men are amazing at. We're not the same. We can't do the same things. And it's fair to say most women are not as strong as most men. And the skill and the strength needed to throw that rope is, well, we're seeing it. We've, said it. we've seen it from people who are out on course. Women are failing it more. And um, Well, Ian Hosek, Cali Schweikart's coach, Cali in second or third place right now, I'm not sure, looks like third, maybe second on course. He said that the women are using their obstacle bypass bands on the grappler because it's a nine to 12 minute penalty. And they're just, if they're gonna fail it anyway, might as well use the obstacle bypass on that obstacle. Yeah, and and that makes sense. Like the at the elite, at at the regular person level, my my thought process is: what's the hardest obstacle that I can skip? At the elite level, it's what is the longest time duration obstacle I can skip? Yeah. Right. So if that's if it's like a cost you twelve minutes, that's it's too much. Too much time if you're trying to compete to be on top. If I could say one more thing about the off school, I don't know if you guys sure, have been yeah. updated with uh, the Spunky Monkey, how sure. previously it was the potato sack. Uh, mm. last year. I've heard about that. The it potato lasted. sack is part of the penalty. So, what it was was you had to go in a potato sh uh, sack, shuffle your feet, and then grab the sack with one hand and put another hand over your head as if it was a rodeo. Unfortunately, that lasted a little bit less than a half hour before all of the potato <laughs> sacks uh, had ripped. So, now it's just a jog. Uh, so, I think also like beta testing some of the, the penalties too. But so potato sacks are off the menu. Very, very quickly. We were there as soon as the, the obstacle had opened and uh, that the sacks were ripping away. They have changed a few um, penalties. I kind of feel like maybe would there be a place to test penalties at other events? Right. So we, we saw, again, I said a couple of weeks ago, Spartan beta tested a few obstacles. And so that's one of the, the comparisons I'd like to make too, is that like Tough Mudder has plenty of Tough Mudder courses. They have a few Toughest Mudder courses. 
But when it comes to World Step Smother, just like OCRWC, uh, Spartan OCRWC, you really only have one chance to get it right, too. So finding that balance is incredibly, incredibly difficult. Yeah. I mean, it worked there. That was fine. They'd already been tested before. And working in that environment worked. Now, that's me just saying they used that event as a testing ground for their event. Uh, but, but it worked. They were good. But it kind of feels like if obstacle, if penalties or even obstacle is going to be failing this quickly, you want consistency should these not be tested elsewhere. Not wrong. Hey, plus, uh, potato sacks are just going to rip, right? Like, ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. I appreciate the, uh, the, the, I don't like the word silly, but I think the irreverence is like in it. the Tough Butter DNA. From silly. Let's one. just use silly. We know what it means. We're, we're it's not... stuff like pound, like pounding a steak into the ground as a penalty. What? That's ridiculous. Well, yeah, but it's also at the end of a seven tenths of a mile penalty that you got to do first. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take time, and you're going to get annoyed and frustrated and mad at the stupid steak. And why is it? Why is this sledge? Like, why can't I swing this sledgehammer straight at two oh one in the morning? And I got to what? I just put the steak in the ground, and now I got to pull it out. What are you talking about? <laughs> Stuff like that is is silly, and it's fr not frustrating, and it like wears on you mentally. And, you, and uh, it's great. It's, it's, it's an important part of this race. I think the Lego building is a great example of that too, right? It, it's, it's very cute. I don't know if you've seen uh, the images, yeah. but uh, yes. there's a car or a robot. Uh, and it's kind of silly. And I was interviewing someone and trying to get some audio, and she's like, I'm building this robot. It makes me think of my kid. My kid loves Legos. Aww. And it's just like, it could be worse. We could be walking on Legos. And I'm like, that would be worse. You're, you're quite right there. And supposedly that was a thing somewhere mm. uh, recently, or a penalty or something. I think someone someone was said talking about Europe's it. toughest mother. Europe's toughest mother walking on Lego. That's a nightmare. I do know that uh, Anthony Kunkel, I think, broke a world record for uh, running on Legos. That's a name we could uh, bring up. Anthony Kunkel. Um, we hope to see him back. He, uh, he had a strong, strong start last year. Mm. Samantha Thompson shouting out, hey, Michael Stefano. Samantha Thompson is watching all 24 hours with us, Mike. She's good. I, I believe it. She's uh, one of the earliest supporters of, uh, of my show uh, financially, and I, I greatly appreciate that. She's a, she's a great person. She will be. I will be supporting her financially with a sticker if she watches she deserves all 24 it. hours. She deserves so. it. Hey, now's a good time to remind you, if you enjoy race live streams like this one and you would like to see more, you can become a member of the OCR Report today. Scan that QR code in the corner. For less than $5 a month, you can support the sport we love. Go to patreon.com slash the OCR report. Join today. After you become a member, you can, uh, you'll can you get a, a little email, and it'll say, hey, send, a, send us an email, and we will make up a nice nice post for you. Welcome to the OCR report. Feature you on our OCR report Instagram. Maybe send cool. them a sticker. If you, I'll send out those stickers by request. Absolutely. Like If, if you join and you're watching right now, I will, I will 100% send you a sticker. Well, Will, what if someone wants something more than a sticker? Maybe something that they can wear. Oh, we have merch. Yeah, baby. We have a threadless page. I'll check out our wristbands here. These are obstacle bypass bands. Ooh. Um, I'm, I'm curious. I didn't see the start of this zoom in. I wonder to see where we're. This is at an obstacle, and I wonder which obstacle this is. You know what? We're gonna go quiet for a minute here. We're gonna turn up the audio out there, and uh, we're gonna listen in. Yes, I know you guys are trying to listen to me, and I think the signal's probably breaking up a little bit. But the biggest thing here is that we're seeing very few people even try. And the couple that I've seen try aren't making it very far. Some people, I, mean, I don't know what the rules are, but some people are going straight to the penalty. And uh, I think I did that penalty earlier. And it's as they all are, it's pretty long. So you can see these through, they're coming off the penalty right now. Lots of lots of bands. So this obstacle here is one of the top obstacles for claiming obstacle bypass bands. I would love to see the pile of wristbands they have down at Grappa. I wonder if it's the same or even bigger. Mm. What obstacle was that at? Do we know? This, this is at, uh, not Hanging Tough. That's the wrong word for it, but. Uh, hanging Rough? Hanging Rough. One load of rock. 
Yeah, they, they it's really they, tricky when they change just one they're, letter. They're getting every clever. Year. They're getting clever. Hey, Good Jason. Job, Jason. Outstanding. Yeah, massive shout out to Jason. I, I can't shout him out enough for rabbiting and uh, being the, the, the brains behind all if of this. If you story. enjoy what you're seeing right now, nine, 99% of it is from Jason Dupree. He is the brains behind the tech. He is. He basically set up all the tech before the event. Yep. Spent a bit of time this morning talking through what we needed to do, which is press buttons, very simply. And then he's gone out and collected all the footage. He is our lead rabbit as well. Um, he's out there on course. He's moving the static cameras. He. That's great. That's a great point. We have these static cameras, like this one that we're watching in the in the picture in picture on Augustus Loop. He's out there assisting him. Of course, of course Jason Dupree is the MVP of of uh, the live media coverage of World Stuff is Modern. We could probably get him to do uh, some uh, commentary as well at the same time. Just get him to do everything. You know what we could absolutely. Still we're having, our jobs. We're having one a hard time hearing his audio. I don't, Jason, I don't know if you can hear us right now or not. If we could hear his audio better, then we could absolutely he could do commentary. <laughs> I mean, he's, yeah. Uh, Jason, I wish we could hear your audio better or we'd, uh, we'd be able to go back and forth. No, early, early in the live streaming process, this is two, three years ago, um, Jason was producing and commentating on the races at the exact same time. Samantha Thompson, shout out. That's I should have mentioned that already. I knew that. She's an OCR Port Patreon member as well. Love to have Samantha Thompson on board. Talks the talks, walks the walk. She's uh, supporting the sport, and we appreciate her. Uh, I don't want to overstate my welcome, but I did want to give a last shout out to all the volunteers out on course, too. Yeah. I had the privilege to uh, be driven around uh, by Jack and interviewed a, a quite, a, quite a few of them. Surprisingly, a lot of them have never done a Tough Mudder before. Sure. They're, wait, wait, hold up. They're out here volunteering at Roll Stubbins? Overnight. And never done, never done, done a Tough Mudder. So what's that motivation for being here? Um, from what I heard, it sounds like they were looking for a job opportunity, and I believe they might be getting paid. And what? I, I believe they're getting paid. Oh, is, okay. is what I had heard from, so uh, from the interviews, but they are out there volunteering, and so it's just really interesting. And I'm like, oh, like, what are your thoughts on on World's Toughest Mother? And they're like, this is crazy. Like, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Sure. It's, it's very interesting. But they've all spoken about how like amazing it is to see like the camaraderie and the grit. That like they've never seen anything like this before. So it's I think kind of it's good really advertisement, cool. isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think it's really cool. Get... Do you think we'd ever do a Tough Mudder? And a lot of them are like, yeah, this would, be, this would be great. And I just reminded them that this is like the Super Bowl. Not every Tough Mudder is like this. Don't go in expecting this. A regular Tough Mudder is not this hard. It's not this long. You're not going to be doing a regular Tough Mudder at 2 in the morning. No. Mike is the if you host, are, you're doing it wrong. Mike is the host of Obstacle Running Adventures. You can download it on Spotify or iTunes right now. Mike, who's your guest on the podcast this week? Oh, oh so the, actually there's going to be an episode scheduled to release uh, later today, technically Sunday. Uh, I interviewed Manuel Defoe, who won oh, the 3K him. North American series, um, and he, he was a great interview. Uh, I know Fran had him on not too long ago for the uh, OCR Report podcast, too. Also fantastic. Um, and yeah, I plan to do about three episodes on World's Toughest Motor. So, nice. Yeah. Who was your guest last week? Do you remember? Uh, the week before. Oh, you help me out here. I had Signe on. I don't remember if that was just before. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Uh, no, Signe, Caroline Colsto. Oh, uh, yeah, I had Ian on too. It's been a lot. I, I, it's it's really nice to talk to all these great people. I know that they're down to earth, but it's uh, yeah, it's, it's this amazing community, and the athletes, uh, the elites are no different. You can find Mike's podcast uh, on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere you listen to podcasts right now. Search for Obstacle Running Adventures. Thanks much. Download an episode. Mike Stevano. Thanks so much. <laughs> so, uh, just to update some results here, at uh, 2 a.m., Michael Schott went through swinging tips. <laughs> and 2.04, Oscar Lazar went through melting point on lap 14. And Joshua Fiore also went through melting point at 2.06, so two minutes after, also on lap 14. So, like we've been talking about, this weekend is daylight savings. Uh huh. And the end of daylight savings. So, daylight giveaway ings. Is, daylight is, wastings. Daylight wastings is the long term for it, um, and so and we've had that. So it is so now officially about, one a.m. again. If we talk about uh, course times, it may be confusing. Well, I'm Jason like, says it's two oh nine, but Jason, my my clock Jason's, says I don't know if he was showing us his time or he's put in twenty six miles. Oh, he did a marathon! Woohoo! Did a marathon! Congratulations! So we've got 
14 hours and 10 minutes is our, our race clock. So now we switch to race clock, not time of day. So just what, to... Uh, what, why is Jason showing us his wrist? Not sure. So Jason's actually toward the tail end of the course here. He's... Uh, if he was running the course, he'd have already finished Mutterhorn, it looks like, and he's coming up on Everest, I believe. Let's check in on the finish. Not much, ha not much happening. So this part of the race is interesting. We're 2 o'clock in the morning, traditionally. Daylight savings, traditionally. whatever. Daylight 14 wastings. hours into the race. Usually this would be 2 o'clock in the morning. It's 1 o'clock, yeah. whatever it is. It's the middle of the night. Yeah. And you've been running for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. You're out there, and you've been just turning miles and miles and miles. It's been dark for 6, 8 hours. Mm -hmm. This is the time... This is kind of the start of the the dark time, or what the, the sun dark comes time in you, up basically. in five hours and forty minutes. Five hours. That's three, four laps from now. That's still a long this time. Is, and and right now you're out on course. There's less people. You're like, where'd everybody go? Like, the race is still going on. I mean, the even for us, this is, is the point full. where it gets hard as well. This is this is mentally where it starts wearing on you. Yeah. Um, you and I, we're sitting here. We're not working hard. I mean, we're not physically working hard. But we're yawning. We're yawning, like and every yawn I do really hurts my throat. <laughs> this, this is this is like I was saying. This is the half marathon to twenty-one mile point. I could see that. Yeah, it's uh, uh that had worked out the Woo! percentages. But this is where like the mental the mental grit comes in, where you have to like you know what? Yeah, that pit sounds good. Yeah, I see someone across the way pulling onto a metal space blanket. Man, it would be nice. I've I've run for 14 hours. Don't I deserve a break? <laughs> Your brain will start lying to you. Yeah. It will start. I just want to. I just want to rest for five minutes. <coughs> yeah. Just let me sit down for five minutes. How right? dangerous is it to do that? I've earned a five minute sit down, and yeah, probably. But we both know that five minute sit down is going to turn into a 45 minute sit down. Oh yeah. So when you're going through this kind of miserable uh -huh. time of the night, like look at this right now. It's two in the morning. I don't care what you say. It's two in the morning. This dude is getting pelted by water on Augustus Loop. Just getting smashed. That guy on the bottom, he can't, uh, the guy second back, back there, he's having tr troubles just getting up. These guys are cold. They're wet. You're not convincing me to do it. They're tired. You know what? I remember, I've told you this before. Uh -huh. There was a part of course in 2021 and I was running in Laughlin middle of the night like this it might have been this time time 2 15 in the morning I was cold I was tired and I'm jogging like a slow jog going like like barely a, like probably walking speed shuffle I could probably walk faster than I was jogging and I remember thinking I was so miserable yeah. Justin Ponce I'm guilty of that fell asleep by the fire pit yeah your brain is a liar your brain will lie to you. 
So Laughlin, I'm running, I'm jogging, I'm miserable. I am so everything hurts. My upper body hurts. My lower body hurts. And I remember thinking, there is nowhere in the world I would rather be than here right now. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this race all year long. True. I've only got 24 hours. And this thing is over, and it's it's over for another year. This is the only chance I have right now. To, now, yeah, I could run the race again, but I can never run this race again. I could never run Laughlin 2021 again. Mm. This is the chance. So if I want to get my 50 miles, I got to do it right now. If I want to, whether whatever your mileage goals are, if I want to, if I want to make it for 24 hours, this is my chance to make it for 24 hours. I need to do it. And all, every single one of these guys, they know how they know what time it is. They know mm-hmm. how cold they are. They know how, better than we do. And they're miserable. These guys are just trying to get through this obstacle just so they don't have to do it. In fact, this is must complete. There is no penalty option for this one. They've been going for quite a while, actually. As we've been watching them, it's taking a fair amount of time to get up that. And every second they're on there, their arms are getting more tired. Uh-huh. Their legs are getting more tired. They're getting colder from all the water pelting them in the face. It's, it's absolutely in their best interest to finish it quickly. I feel like there's less to talk about regarding results in the last two hours or so. Well, everyone's going slower. Mm. So we have less less updates, for sure. And the only thing that might be happening, kind of breaking news-wise, for us to, to kind of talk about, is if someone drops or someone mm. gets injured. But we don't know that until they just don't update. We don't know it that. It took a long time for Tyler to start dropping. You know, it took a remarkably long time for Tyler to stop yeah. dropping, start dropping. He was with us in the booth for like an hour before he moved from fifth to. I was wondering even. how that must feel, like mentally, to see yourself on the leaderboard with a good amount of miles, and then he see, was in like fourth place. But then see that going down and going down and going down. That must be tough. He was sitting next to us in fourth place, <laughs> yeah. watching his, and I was trying to. We were gently kind of like trying to encourage him. Hey, let's get back out there, man! Mm-hmm. Like race is not over. Um, I reckon he'll. You might go out go for another out. lap when yeah. it gets right. And yeah, for me, as if I'm looking at it, that's him getting through the tough pit and redoing it. I'm managing to do it. Sure. Yeah, and it's and again, we were he's already run fifty miles. Yeah. Like it's easy for us to say from our you know, our warm dry robes, hey, get back out there and keep running. But it's fifty miles is in however many however few hours it took yeah. him to run it. I, I, I didn't think he should go out there and start running straight away. But I also like to give people permission to be kind to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I just I just didn't you know, we don't it's not always the right thing to do. There's sometimes other questions and other feelings to get through. And that in itself is an achievement as well. Other comments on YouTube, Smith <coughs> Samantha Thompson was in the first one hundred. Yeah, you were. Well done, Samantha. <laughs> Dustin Ponce, Laughlin was an awesome course. It was. It was a good. Uh, it was a good venue. Good course. Laughlin was fun because we got music all night long. There was a Darius Rucker concert going on across the parking lot, so we got to hear that for the first two three hours of the race or of the, of the night. So something interesting, and this could get confusing. Sure. The time on the results hasn't gone back. So what we're looking at on the results here is Stephanie going through Spunky Monkey at 2.09, which was technically nine minutes ago. But I'm looking at my clock, which says... So your, so your clock is reset one back one yeah. hour, but the race results company... So when we look at the race results, we need to look at the race clock. So what we almost need to do is just pretend daylight savings didn't happen. Yeah, absolutely, but happening? I keep looking at my little clock here. Reset, but you change them. Yeah. However, <laughs> um, Callie went through Spunky Monkey, which is the uh, last checkpoint before um, someone's asking for top 10. We'll just do this. So let's just let's bring this up whilst we talk about the ladies. Callie went through Spunky Monkey, which is the last checkpoint before Mudderhorn, which is very close to the finish line. She went through that three minutes before Stephanie. So Callie is holding that second place that she kind of got out on the course, but it doesn't count. Until sure. She, uh... So wait, so Callie, so right now we're Cal- showing Callie in third place but once, based on completed laps. Yeah. But on course, Callie has moved into second place ahead of Stephanie Bland. Mm-hmm. And what is her, what is Callie's lead over Stephanie? Uh, three minutes. Callie has a three minute lead over Stephanie. 
And then how far behind Chris is Callie right now? Well, Chris is on lap 13 and Callie is on lap 12. We last saw Chris. Does she have a full lap 16 lead? 16 minutes ago at obstacle four. So no, she doesn't have a full lap lead. She probably has like a half to just over half a lap lead, maybe okay. three quarter lap lead. Half Still lap lead. Strong lead. So Chris firmly in first, mm -hmm. Callie in second, mm -hmm. kind of making moves to try and separate her from Stephanie, maybe. Katie is also on lap twelve. She was seen. Uh, 13 minutes ago at Swinging Tips, which is Obstacle 8. Then we have also Nikki Caramba, who looks like she's about a half an hour behind Katie. Yeah, also on lap 12, uh, Snogging yeah. Dirt at 2.09. And Ginny Overstreet also at 55 miles. Ginny finished third last year. She finished lap 11 uh, one minute ago. All it, all it was is going to take is one too long pit stop yeah. and places can shift. So none of these places are locked. Not even Chris. None of these places are locked in place. Yeah. None of these place standings are locked in place. Yet. Michael Schott with 70 in first place. He seems like he's out there by himself right now in first. Yeah. And then Austin Azar, Joshua Fiore, kind of trading second and third. Yeah. Uh, last checkpoint that came through was Spunky Monkey. Uh, that was about four minutes ago. Well, Austin about four minutes ago and Josh about one minute ago. Okay, so Austin has about a three minute. He's at like a two and a half minute lead here on this. Mm. Or a minute and a half lead right here. So it's up to a three minute lead. Austin has a three minute lead about on Josh and Fiore right now. Mm. Elmer King also at 65 miles. But he looks like he's about maybe an hour back of Josh and Austin. So I'd say Michael is closer to having a lap ahead. Say it one more time. Michael is quite close to having a full, a lap, full lap on, on the Austin other guys. Not quite, but he was last seen at Melting Point, which is obstacle 12. And the guys were seen roughly the same time, a lap behind at Spunky Monkey, which is obstacle 16. So he's... Essentially, four obstacles behind, behind them, them from one lap them. ahead. Yeah. So that might from lapping them uh, again. Sure. Well, he's one lap well, ahead. No, double lapping them. So yeah, so I wouldn't expect him to lap them. This yeah, him to lap. but at some point. But I think maybe next lap mm -hmm. that could happen. I wonder how that would feel mentally. Like, great, but is it then kind of a lot of pressure? How it feels for Michael in first place. But that again, if he doesn't know who's in second and third, it doesn't really matter. He might not know. He'll probably know when he passes Austin and, and Joshua. Yeah. Because he'll pass one of them first. And he'll be like, oh my gosh, I just lapped the guy. And then he'll pass. A if he one. knows who they are, yeah. Otherwise, he's lapping guys constantly. Yeah. Well, he's been on a course like this, especially, like, especially with Michael, the, the, the mileage that Michael's putting up, he's been passing people. Yes. Literally, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Constantly, he's passing guys. Yeah, all they're the time. walking, and but when he passes two guys who are also already running, he'll probably stop running with them for a minute. He'll be like, "Oh, hey, Austin, maybe how many laps you on? I'm on the and it's my, Danish. On the 14th. Why? Wait, you're 14. You finished 14, or you're on 14? I'm on 14. Why? Where are you? What are you on? Oh, nothing. 15." See you later. And he goes. That's how I imagine that conversation between our Danish leader and our second place in Canadian. I like him. Joshua Fiore, first place American. Third place. Flash stars! Just had a athlete run past asking me where new episodes of the World Toughest Podcast are. Coming soon. <laughs> You've got a very annoyed face on. Coming soon. I got lots of uh, stuff to talk about next year, I guess. I've got a podcast episode waiting to go up. Fran Grando, host of the OCRWC podcast, available on finer podcast platforms everywhere. Google, Apple, and Spotify. There you go. 
Let us start Jason results. Dupree, host of OCR Talk Podcast. If you, you know what? That's actually, we haven't talked about this. If you're interested in kind of the behind the scenes of the, like the tech side of what Jason does to make this work, like what goes right, what goes wrong, what uh, uh, kind of, you know how we talk about the athletes have 24 hours to kind of yeah. problem solve? Jason so does is Jay also Dog. doing that constantly. Like sometimes stuff just doesn't work, right? Like it worked yesterday uh-huh. and it randomly just doesn't work today. And we got to figure it out. If you're interested in that kind of like inside of behind the, the curtains, you should listen to Jason's OCR Talk podcast. He goes into a lot of detail on that. If you're interested. I, I definitely, it's a whole lot of very like just new technology things that I'm trying out and seeing if it works. And, and it's really hard to test uh, outside of a race because you don't have a crew of people to grab it and send that mm-hmm. many videos. And so sometimes you just never know for sure if it's going to work until you get out on a, a race course. And then when it doesn't, and, and you got to troubleshoot for the entire time, uh, when things mess up, that's, that's when it's not enjoyable. But, uh, you know, you learn from it yeah. and, and things get better because of that. Like OCRWC is a great example is had a simple problem. Uh, a complex problem. Oh, thank you so much. With a very simple solution, and uh, it took me a while to figure out what this simple solution was. But um, you know, when you get there, it's it's like oh, thank goodness. You know, like it's very. And it's like I, I find it like ultra running. You do a lot of it's miserable, and then you get to the end of it, and it's like oh, that was amazing. I don't know how how that was amazing, but it, it, it was just amazing. So Jason, he's producing this race this weekend. Mm-hmm. He is the brains behind the scenes. We're talking about him right now, Jason Dubray. He also does all of our live races, our non-spark branded races, our deck coverage, mm. and everything. Our OCRWC. <coughs> he had a personal race that he was scheduled to run. He'd been planning on it for over a year, scheduled, and it was the same weekend as a deck out race mm. two months ago. So he said, hey, Will, I will get everything set up for you. I have this race I need to run. It's going on at the same time as DECA. Can you produce this race for me? I'll get literally, all you need to do is push these buttons at this time and push this button at this time. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll make it literally turnkey for you. And I'm like, yeah, man, absolutely. Like, I can 100% do that. And so, like, about a month before the race, we kind of talked through everything, got ready. Two weeks before the race, we turned stuff on and... Like got everything logged in on my side of my computer, my house. A week before we we did it again, just so I could run through it and practice it. The two days before the event, we're like, okay, this is how everything goes on. This is we basically did a run through. The day before we did another run through, another practice. The night before, I couldn't sleep, so I went to my office. I turned everything on, made sure everything was working, like good to go. All right, Jason's gonna Jason's gonna be out of pocket tomorrow. Like it's it's on me to make sure this, this coverage of this decker race for Spartan goes off. And I wake up in the morning, the morning of the race, the race is in, it's on the East Coast. I live in San Diego. So I'm getting up at like 4.30. And I have a wife and kids in my house. I can't be just, you know, barging around and knocking doors and stuff at 4.30 in the morning. So I wake up and I'm quiet in my office. I'm trying to produce this race. <laughs> and I have no Wi-Fi. Oh my Wi-Fi God. doesn't work. I'm like... I had Wi-Fi like six hours ago last night when I tried this. Well, that's what happened to us this morning. I had, yeah, yeah. This morning we had almost the exact, like everything worked, literally everything worked yesterday. This morning we roll up and... Cell router, cell router was working great yesterday and, and it then just would not stay not working. Just today. stop working today. Now, I hate to interrupt you in the middle of the story. Please do. No, go ahead. Tally uh, has crossed the finish for lap 12. Nice. So she has in 60 miles place. in se- second place. And Stephanie um, was last seen at Spunky Monkey. She's not hit Butterhorn yet. She's a bit behind. So she's she's lost a little bit of time there. Oh, she's just hit Butterhorn. 2.29. So she's about three or four, three four. Well, that's we're kind of taking that from um, how Chris does it. But yeah, maybe so, four so minutes. So five, six minutes behind Callie, maybe? Let's say we'd probably expect to see her. Uh, should we say, like, um, two thirty-three. Okay, so two thirty-three would put her six minutes behind Callie. So Chris Glasky in first, Callie in second. 
and Christine Bland in Stephanie, Stephanie Bland. Bland in third place. Mm -hmm. And then Stephanie coming up on 60 miles here in about three minutes, four minutes. Yeah, so Maybe I mean, fewer, but we're, it's all guesswork at the minute. The short story is I had to produce this race. We got the internet thing. I figured I ran the internet through my phone, which I didn't know that was going to even work. Wow. I produced the race. Most stressful OCR experience of my life. It took a year off my life. But when I die and I'm laying in a hospital bed, I'm going to say, like, you know what, Decca, you owe me a year of my life back because that was a stressful, stressful morning. Oh, actually, no, it's not Decca. Are, it's whatever um, race. What was that race you ran, Jason? Austin Azar also went through Mudderhorn at, at 229. So we should be seeing Austin Azar crossing the finish oh, nice. line soon. It was yeah. a 50K trail race. Yeah, that 50K trail race owes me a year of my life back. That was stressful. That sounds awful anyway. I can't tell you how many times I've had, like, just like that, like, day of, and just something crazy happen. They won't. Computer just not turn on. It's like they know. Just random stuff. Oh, man, it is crazy. That's, yeah. that, that was a long story to say. I, I really appreciate Jason's race producing skills. <laughs> Going around the elbow to get to the thumb again. A little bit. That's what they call that. A little bit. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate a place to do this, like in 2016, 17, and even a little bit of 18, I think, like Spartan and Tough Mudder, like they were all putting on the live streams, and even Toughest in Europe was doing awesome live streams, and it was fantastic, even like, Francesca was doing some live streams for OCRWC. We tried. It was, it was like the golden was era amazing. of live streaming in uh, OCR, uh, OCR. And, and then it just all stopped. Everybody realized that how expensive it was to do it well. And so they stopped, and 2019 is when I started looking into how can we do this cheap, like as cheap as it, possible. It was expensive. We used so we did live streaming of uh, OCRWC 2019, and we used I won't name any names, but it was a cloud-based production platform, which was we, we did test after test. We went on site, we did tests, we worked out like lots of little issues, and you know, didn't have any experience doing it, but reasonably savvy in terms of solving problems. The day before, we planned to use GoPros and they worked with the program. I had GoPros for everyone, I'd rented them, like I had all the kit, GoPros wouldn't work. And this was the night before, I was like, well, we're too late, even if I had the money to buy gimbals, we're too late to buy gimbals for everyone because all the shops are closed in the first race, it's too early. Uh, and they just weren't in stock anywhere anyway. So we managed to get one, so a lot of a lot of the rabbits had to run with their phones. So they were set up really well. And it was like, you'll do this section, this section. I think that went really well, but then we had problems. There was no, we couldn't do commentary. So I was meant to be doing producing and commentary with uh, Amy Spade. Uh, we couldn't do the commentary, just didn't work. Uh, we didn't have gimbals because we prepared for different kit, which is what they told us. And then halfway through the race, just as John Alban and Ryan Atkins came into the big tent, the servers in France, that were running it dropped. So I was on the phone to France going, this is, the, this is the most important part of race. They gave us like a huge amount of money off what it cost. I was like, I was trying to do something here. Sure. Like I was, we could have done it through OBS. We decided to do it through that because one of the things I've always wanted to do is push um, partnerships and pre-recorded segments. And I had, I actually had deals with sponsors that I'm gonna push pre-recorded efforts. And there were certain things I couldn't do through OBS. So that's why we use this expensive platform. It just didn't work. And then the way we started doing things, you know, you guys came on the scene and I'm very happy to leave the technical stuff. I love the technical stuff. And I'm super interested in learning how it works, but I'm not a technical kind of gal. Yeah, that that race, that, was, that 2019 OCRWC was my first dive into, let me figure this out. Yeah. Because before that, I did a little bit of just straight to Facebook. Be like, surely it must, it can't be this hard. This is terrible. If no, this is what no, no, they're no. doing, I must be able to do it. It wasn't that. Job. It was, it, but it was me up at, uh, you know, three in the morning while that race was happening in, in Europe mm. and trying to figure out, okay, where can I bring in video feeds from into a video production platform? That was my first time really trying that out during mm. that race. Watching you, which is awesome. That's cool. I didn't even realize it. Look where we are now. Pretty wild. I think that's a good testament to you never know if you don't try. And I'm glad you tried. And yeah. Like if I wouldn't have got up early that morning and started trying that, I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yay. Because I did not love that day. <laughs> 
كيف يتوفق؟ آه. <تصفيق> أستن إيزار has got 70 miles. He crossed the line just two minutes ago. Just passed about a minute ago, minute and a half, yeah. Uh, Josh Fury, we should be seeing. He's not gone to Matterhorn yet, but we should be seeing at some point. Kelly and Stephanie, both on 60 miles. So they both passed us. Say that one time. Kelly and Stephanie have both finished lap number 12. Uh, six minutes between them ish. Kelly has set out for lap number 13, and Stephanie has not yet set out for lap number 13. How far back is Katie of third place? Um, she's on lap 12 melting point, which is uh, obstacle 12. Uh, that was seven minutes ago. Okay. So quite far back. So those, those top three women have kind of separated themselves from the pack a little bit. Yeah. And again, it's still too early to say, like, that's your podium. Because it's not. It's, it's far too early. One sprained ankle... One long pit stop, one, you know, trip to the restroom. Well, just like, one, one of them misses something and, and Katie yeah. goes into third. Um, one of them completes successfully completes an obstacle and that the other one fails. And that could swing. Their, Nikki you know, Caramba is not that far behind Katie. That'll be a, interesting to watch. Nikki Caramba is a, a new name for us a here. Minute, at World a minute behind, a minute after Katie. She was at Swinging Tips, which is Obstacle 8. Katie was at Obstacle 12. Hmm. But Swinging Tips has a really long penalty. And Swinging Tips is a very difficult obstacle. We saw Chris go through it like it was nothing. Mm. But I have a hard time imagining, you know, all of the, all of the, anyone, top 10, top men, top 10 women are going through it that easily. That's a, diff that's a very difficult obstacle. Mm. So we'll see at what time Nikki goes through melting point and what the difference is between sure. that and Katie when it happens. What's going on out on course? Slow. Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop with this uh, cargo net change is, a, I feel, physically a much more difficult obstacle. It might mm. mentally be easier. I, I never felt the claustrophobia they were trying to induce on this one, but it was the difficulty for this one was you were in a constrained spot. But it was like it wasn't that tight. It I have like done obstacles similar to that. Um, it's one at nuts, and if anyone in the UK can, I've got a cough drop in my mouth. It's making me lisp. If anyone in the UK can remind me what the name is, it was like a tube of tires. You had to go up, but it I was can see that very, much, very high. Much more claustrophobic. I mean, I think, tires are tight. I think it was like two containers high, and then Yikes. a cargo net on an angle from the top of the containers down to the ground. So you got down, going down the cargo net, and I mean, the time was racing. I was very small, and I still found it a bit like, oh, this is a bit tricky. Yeah, you guys have some fun race brands over in the UK. Oh, we really do. But so you can see this guy in the front, he's climbing it like a ladder. Mm -hmm. They told me when I was doing it yesterday to climb it like a spider. Mm -hmm. with my arms and legs out to the side. And I tried it climbing like a spider. I gave it my best shot. Volunteer. God bless you. But climbing it like a spider is a hard way to climb. Mm -hmm. Got athletes coming through right now that look like they mean business. Oof. <laughs> Michael Scott. 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 Nine minutes ago, hit Spunky Monkey. That's obstacle 16. After that, he's got Mudderhorn and he'll be coming through again. Austin Azar started lap 15 three minutes ago. So yeah, he's catching up. And Josh Fiore has not come through yet. Josh Fiore has not come through yet. And he's not been seen at Mudderhorn yet. So... Josh was last seen at lap 14 on Spunky Monkey at 2.20. Okay. Michael was seen at lap 15 at Spunky Monkey at 2.30. Hmm. 
So 10 minutes after him, he was there, a lap ahead. Makes sense. Nope, oh, got a little band coming out of operation there. Now this guy is struggling with uh, Augustus Loop. He's trying to spider it. I'm telling you, that's he's leaning back, and you're not going to get any help. That cargo net's not going to help you, friend. The cargo net does not has no interest in you succeeding. That, that is, that's um, that might be the worst way you want to climb that obstacle right there. <laughs> like that's worse than the spider. I don't even know what you call it. Talk about how the pit is not your friend. You think the pit's your friend? Oh, I can get a break. I can get a rest. <laughs> this cargo net is not your friend. It does not want you to succeed. You uh, goofy. That cargo net's having a good day. Chris, just passing swing tips a couple of minutes ago. Okay. Chris Rabassi. Yeah, on lap thirteen. Uh, Callie was last seen starting lap thirteen, and Stephanie has only just started lap thirteen. Stephanie has only just started lap 13. So Chris, Chris has a strong lead. Mm -hmm. She has 60 miles done. And she's still moving. She's got about nine hours left to... No, longer than that. We're, we're almost 11 hours. hours in. So she'll have ten and a half. Oh, she got... Like 11 hours. Yeah, 11 hours from now. Finish her. Yeah. 11 hours, less 10 minutes. Less 11 minutes. She finish her current lap. And then how many more? Seven more? Is that right? Yeah, she needs eight more. So she, and she's almost done with her current lap. How have we still got 11 hours to go? Well, because we've only been doing this for 14 hours, friend. 14. <laughs> it doesn't feel like 14 hours ago we said goodbye at the start line to those guys, it right? It doesn't, but then at the same time, like, how can it still be 11 hours to go? still be 11 go? hours to go? No, you're not, you're not wrong. It does seem like a long time. And I think our speech is getting slower and slower. You know what? And we're getting slightly stupider. Because it's, it's, it's cold. It's still and cold. When you, when you, well, we're tired. Yeah, we're tired. And when you get tired, you know how you Woo! run slower? Yeah. You also talk slower. So, is anybody out there actually watching? Give us a hi if you are. Yeah, jump in the comments. Now's a good time. If you have questions about World Stuff is Mutter, then now's a good time to jump in there and, uh, and ask them. Um, oh, you know, Josh Fiore threw Mudderhorn two minutes ago, so we should be seeing him kind of soon. We got uh, 114 concurrent viewers right now. Brian oh, nice. Us on the... Uh, on the old YouTuber machine. Janet Sanderson, shout out to you. I see you out there saying yes. Oh. Not so. We've not had hey, any. Hey, jump in here. we got 114, 111 oh, people. Okay. Someone say hey. I, hey, awesome. Hello, Julia. Hi. Stamp. Michelle Carney, hi from the UK, still here. Mark Federer, come on, shoot. Natsa 809 says hi. Janet Sanderson already got you. Yes. Uh, Dustin Ponce. Yep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> Update from Fran. Breaking Mike, news. Breaking news. Michael Scott just went through Mudderhorn at 2.43. Josh Fiore went through Mudderhorn at 2.41. So we should be seeing Michael coming through. Hold up, hold up. Finish Are you line. saying Michael is only two minutes ahead of Austin? I'm saying Michael is only two minutes behind Austin. To lap him. To lap him. Oh, that's that's interesting. So uh, we should see them. So let's Michael put Scott this uh, Denmark. Mark Federer, Denmark watching us. Oh, yeah, Sandra Thompson. Hi for me and my husband. Shelly Rich, still watching. I want that sticker. I don't know if she said it like that. I want that sticker. I don't see an exclamation box. I'm like, morning, I want that sticker. Morning, Shell. Morning, Shell. I don't know what that means. What? Morning, morning Shell. Shell. Maybe she's saying hi oh, to Oh, maybe she's saying Michelle. hi to Shell. Who's Shell, though? Shell is short for Michelle. Oh, are you guys talking to each other? How dare you? Hello. I'm right here. Morning, Nat. They are talking to each other. Michelle. 
Nat, Nat, Nat says 809. So that's Josh Fiore just coming through. Keep your Josh eyes Fiore, peeled. 75 miles? 70. 70 miles for Josh Fiore in third place. Outstanding. Ooh. Carol Sawyer. Hey, I'm still awake in Michigan. You know what time it is in Michigan right now? The exact same time it is here right now. Oh, my goody. And Carol Sawyer, well done. Star Daylight Savings Change. Cancellation. Daylight Givings. Isn't it only about 10 hours left? 1 p.m. ending? Augustine Ponce, absolutely. But here's the deal. Well, okay. The race is a 25 and a half hour race. The start line closes after 24. You do realize we're... And we also okay, went Michelle, live before here, okay? the race started. That's a good point. We went live at... We started about 11.30. The race started at 12 o'clock local time. The race goes for 24 hours. Throw daylight savings out. Pretend that's not a thing. The race ends at noon on Sunday. And then you have until 1.30 p.m. And I know daylight savings. Da, 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 forget it. You have until 1.30 p.m. on Sunday to finish that last lap. So it's a it's a 24-hour race. The start line closes after 24 hours, you have an hour and a half to finish that last lap. You can't start another lap after noon, after 12 o'clock on Sunday, but you do have that hour and a half to finish your last lap. Anka, you guys are awesome. Still watching and glued to the video. And yes, I want a sticker too. Man, people love, love them some stickers. <coughs> Excuse me, my goodness. Okay, I missed some comments, here we go. Michelle Carney, you do realize we're going to hold you to those stickers, right? Ha ha! Yes, now it's talking to me. All right, y'all. You, you can use our chat to keep talking to each other. That's fine. We'll take the. <gasps> Michael Shot has crossed. He's crossed 75. 75. He just crossed in front of us here. Michael Shot was 75 miles on 14 hours and 46 minutes into the race. Outstanding oh, my phone didn't update. Performance from Michael Shot. Aaron Ross, Grindstaff, I'm watching. Nexus 809. I want the sticker too. And yeah, me and Shell, both UK butters. Strong UK presence. I'm not only my co host here, Woo-woo. the president of Tough Mudder in UK. I was completely outnumbered earlier. Um, also in the. Oh, you know why? It's because it's like noon over in the UK right now. Uh, it's probably the, like 9 a.m. It's like it? tea time, right? And they're all having tea. We're always having tea. What time is tea time in the UK? Uh, Any that's like, time. <laughs> it's like 5 p.m. Okay. It's 7.47 in the UK. You guys are awesome. Still watching. Oh, this is Anka. I read that already. Alan Fava with the... Alan, it's, I'm reading this in the dark here. It looks like that's a French flag. Excuse me if I get that wrong. Watching from France. Janet Sanderson waiting to see Isaac finish it. Oh, Janet is... is uh, Janet is related to Isaac Sanderson, I'm imagining. So, Her last name is Sanderson. let me just say, um, me. Michael Scott and Josh Fiore have both finished their lap. Uh, neither of them have set out for their next lap yet. We can see Josh kind of in front of us over there, just doing a quick pit stop. We don't know how long Michael is going to be pissing for. So Michael has lapped Austin Azar and Josh Fiore. Currently, right now as we're sitting here. Josh and Michael are both in the pit currently. Where is Austin at right now? He's out in running. Austin's already gone. So and he's not actually lapped. He's not lapped yet. Okay. Yet. And so Michael's Michael last lap was 116, before, by the way. So he's not Michael's last lap was 116, okay. which is less than a minute slower. He has lost less than a minute off of his previous mile, previous laps pace. Mm-hmm. Five miles, 20 obstacles, and he only lost a minute. At he lost 54 seconds. Almost three in the morning. 54 seconds. I'm just going to pretend daylight savings isn't a thing. It doesn't even matter to me anymore. I'm changing my clock. My, clock, my phone says 149. We're going to change it manually to 249. We're going to pretend daylight savings doesn't happen until after this race is over. Sure. Okay. I got to read some more comments. You keep keep us posted. Fran's going to keep us posted on the race results. You guys keep commenting. I'm going to read every single comment. I'm going back. Um, Janet Sanderson, is Isaac your... I'm asking you. Is Isaac your son or your significant other? Um, how are you related to Isaac, Janet? Sandy Paulson, go Jesper and Michael from Denmark. We are right here. Sandy, are you? Would you say right here? Are you here, here, at the course, or are you right here in spirit, watching? Or not in spirit. You're watching. Felicia Arroyo says hi. Aaron Ross says keeping me entertained during my son's sleep regression. 
a thank you with a crying, laughing emoji. I'm not sure what sleep regression is, but I'm. I sleep have regression when your kids kind of stop sleeping so well. Oh my gosh, Aaron! I did laps in my bedroom. I walked. I had like a ten foot. I walked ten feet. I turned around, walked ten feet. Turned mm-hmm. around, walked ten feet. Turned. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure your son's name, but I hope he goes to sleep for you. I, I, I remember those days. They were not fun. I got some ponds. Fair point. Forgot about all that daylight saving stuff. Yeah, you know what? Forget about it. Daylight savings isn't a thing. It doesn't happen until tomorrow night. Janet Sanderson cheering up from Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Steve Swain, shout out to my son, Daryl Swain, from England. His first time in USA, hoping to crack 50 miles. Daryl, your dad is supporting you. Good luck. Uh, 50 miles is a big, big deal. Another UK runner from England. Um, raising her hand. Yeah, I am. I call on you, friend. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Michael has started lap 16. Joshua has started lap 15. Michael started lap 16 at 2.50 and 13. Joshua started lap 15 at 2.49 and 52. So Joshua is out before him. Literally by 20 seconds. Okay, so they're... He's 21 lapped. seconds. They're Michael, Michael by the next shot. obstacle, we'll see, it'll be lapped. Uh, they, they're essentially running at the same yeah. uh, one lap apart to get together yeah. within seconds yeah. of each other. And Austin's R is five to six minutes ahead of them. Um, the- Austin Azar has been seen at Snogging Dirt a few minutes ago, which is obstacle 14. Natus 809. I'm, I'm not a separate. I feel like there's a way to say that that's better than the way I'm saying it. Austin, Woo! Smashing it. Austin Azar's last lap was a lot faster than his previous one. I will read every single comment. So if you want a comment read, now is the time to do it. And it's and, and I will and keep interrupting why. with uh, it's timing. It's 51 in the morning. Fran's doing the real work. I'm reading comments on YouTube. I am literally reading comments on YouTube. The one thing they tell you never to do, stay out of the comment section. Yeah, I, I, I stay out of the comment section. So let me just quickly talk about Austin Azar's lap. Lap 10 was 105, lap 11 was 111, lap 12 was 114, and then lap 13 was 134, lap 14 was 117. Well, hold up. So something happened on lap 13. So they made him add 20 minutes. His and most his recent ne- lap was 117, <laughs> and the lap before that was 134, and the lap before that was 114. So his his laps are tending to be one one Apart from one to lap where he must have had a penalty and that slowed him down by 20 minutes but he lost 20 minutes somewhere on that lap that wasn't that wasn't a long pit that was a that was on the lap yeah. okay that's interesting all right um what's our last one Woo! smashing it that is 809 50 a.m i'm assuming the uk right now right that's yeah. all right yeah Michelle Carney says the UK community is strong. It's 7.48 a.m. here. We've been up all night. So the, the UK, UK had um, daylight wasting last weekend. Oh, you guys already got it sorted. We got it sorted. Good so there's you. been no daylight wasting in the UK this weekend. They don't have to mess up about that anymore. Janet is Isaac's mom. Hey, I love that. I love the support, Janet. I hope uh, I hope Isaac continues to crush it. He's doing great so far tonight. You've heard us say his name dozens of times, I'm sure. Shelly Rich. Oh, okay, Shelly. Love this question. Hey, I love this question, and I hate this question at the same time. Not because of you, because of the... I don't know. All right, here's why. Did you say the race ends at noon? That's 25 hours because of the time shift. So pretend there's no time shift. Here's how it would. Here's how it went. It worked last year uh-huh. and every year before that. Uh-huh. The race starts at noon on Saturday. It ends at noon on Sunday. The, the start line closes at noon on the Sunday. The start line closes at noon on Sunday, but the race doesn't end. You have an hour and a half. If you're on course at noon, if you have started a lap before noon, like 11.59, you can start a lap. Mm-hmm. You start a lap before noon. You have an hour and a half to finish that last lap. Mm-hmm. Now, now those times are an hour off this year because of daylight savings. But so, what you need to look at is the race clock in the top corner. Exactly. Don't look at the time. You have 24 race hours clock. of racing, and you have to start your last lap before that 24 hours so expires. when looking at that race clock you need to start your last lap by 2359 exactly and then you have until <laughs> 25 30 to finish that lap 100%. on that race clock up there there's no race point talking about corner. time because people are all around the world here exactly switch to a countdown at 24 hours okay and what we're going to do with that race clock is when we hit 24 hours on the race clock which is in <gasps> nine hours we're going to switch to a countdown 
for the last 90 minutes. Yeah. So Shelly, I hope that explains everything. You are right. The time switch thing makes it confusing. It's still just ignore the time switch. The race is they the just wanted to make more life hard. Always been. Okay. Nats eight hundred nine, one hundred percent up in solidarity with UK mutters and all mutters taking this epic challenge. Michelle Carney, Shelly, the starline closes. Oh, Michelle just explained it. Starline closes at twenty four hours, so they can start another lap, but they get time to finish the one they are on. Thomas. G. Uh, G. Peterson, I'm a few minutes behind, but I really love seeing sh uh, shots popping into stride even this far in. Uh, Thomas, you are not wrong. Yeah, Michael Todd is crushing it, leading them in overall number one leader. Of Stephanie the Bland, 10 minutes behind Callie. Um, Callie was seen at Snogging Dirt at okay. 2.45. Stephanie hit Snogging Dirt at 2.55. Jared Hathaway, shout out to all the racers in these nighttime hours. Jared has a lot of our social media the OCR report. Love to see him in here. Sandy Paulson watching from Denmark. Love the Euro Europeans. Jesper Thompson is a close friend. I'm very oh, proud. Leon, we could have done with you earlier, Leon, when I was uh, reading some really, really bad Danish. Trying to understand words every now and again. Uh, so that's actually lots of Danish flags that just comes up as DK, 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 DK. Europe is like awake right now. Yeah, because it's, it's... Like they're watching, they're watching. Europe's an hour ahead of the UK. You got, this is like uh, Sunday, like what, they're like watching this on the way to church or what? What's going on in Europe? Uh, it's 8 a.m. in London and 9 a.m. in Paris. There you go. Shout out to Two Marcus Anderson. Says, Shout out to Portis representing Sweden all the way in USA. That's 809. <laughs> Woo! Go Daryl! Candace Anderson, Isaac's twin brother William is there as well as his pit crew of one. So I have lots of interest in the race. That is awesome that his brother is here to uh, the pit for him. Yeah, no, well, well done on uh, getting the boys over here. Julia Schnoop. Yeah, Schnoop. mutters. Yeez, yins are the best. You got this. Don't know what that means. I don't uh, Yins is a uh, Norwegian. I is Jared Hathaway loving the commentary. I'm almost done. I got five, six comments left. You better come in quick. Tommy Dockweiler, let's go, Michael. Denmark is looking. Ken Brebnison, go, Michael, go. Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag. Denmark flag. <laughs> Not to 809. Yeah, I had a 13 hour night shift instead of 12 hours. Really messed with you the entire hour. We were talking about this earlier. Like, if you're working like security, or night shift at the, at the hospital. You gotta work an extra hour. You better get paid for it. Not us, 809, I hope you got paid for that extra hour. I hope so too, I hope you got paid time and a half. <coughs> Justin Eilat, great coverage. You guys, watch it from the UK, muscle sign. It's nearly 13 hours into the race. Leon Anderson, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag. Jared Hathaway, 24 hours of racing, but one hour off because of the time change. Yeah, so the, the clock changes, but it's still a 24-hour race. Nikolai shot. Oh, hey. Uh, Nikolai, how are you related to Michael? He pushing Michael. Oh, it's Nataz. Um, Nikolai, ha, how are we? Taz. Uh, I'm still. That's like, uh, is it Jif or Jif? The Taz. Preston Welter says, watching from Montana, go Tristan. I got three comments left. Go You're ahead. getting quite hyper. <laughs> I got three comments left. I'm it. wrapping this up. Go I'm for it. Strong. No. Half of the Danish OCR community is watching this week. Right. How, how am I pronouncing shot? Could somebody oh, okay. type it out how I should be pronouncing? Because I'm, I'm shot. shot. Are they saying we're mispronouncing shot? No, I, I'm asking because it's... Nik Nikolai, I would love to. Actually, Nikolai is related it's not to Michael, Scott. I believe. It's not, it's not shot, but it's like shot. I shot, think that, I believe shot. the J is silent. Like in yogging. Like in what? Yogging? Come on, somebody gets that joke. Yo, don't worry, Anchorman. Yog, thank thank you, thank you. Soft somebody soft got it. Um, <sighs> Yins is the Pittsburgh version of y'all. Julia Schnapp, you are making that up. There's no way that's real. Oh, yeah. Augustine Ponce, am I the only one from New Jersey here? You might be the only one from New Jersey awake here. It's uh, about like four in the morning in New Jersey, three in the morning. Uh, Watching from Montana, go Tristan. Uh, Half of the Danish OCR community is watching your stream. Shout out to Denmark. Shout it out. Leon, Denmark! Leon Kofu. Steve Mark. Um, Ida Mathilde Stinsgaard. We love our Michael Schott. 
in first place at World Stephens Mudder. Love the Danish OCR community. Hey, Soren, I would love to have like 200 more likes on this video and subscribers. Get them on here. We'd love to hear from them. Uh, Jonathan Fletcher has asked how James Burton is getting on. Um, he's okay. Overall, 19th. Gender, 16th. He just started lap 13 at 2.43. So like 20 minutes ago. Uh, he's got 60 miles under the belt. But we do have Grant Thompson still in ninth place from the UK. Lap 13, Spunky Monkey. Uh, 2.48, which was like 12 minutes ago. Natus809 says she's been given an extra hour of holiday. Natus, you worked an extra hour, so they give you an extra hour of vacation. What are you going to do with one extra hour of vacation? Like, you need you need 12 more years of daylight savings to get a good uh, day, oh, I guess seven more years, to get a day's off out of that. But I guess one extra hour is better than no extra hours, so happy for you there. Jonathan Fletcher, James Burton, how's it getting on? Uh, Fran just updated you there. Augustine Ponce, go Dave and Jake. Bib number 3577 and 3578. Oh, they got them side by side. They're Bib brothers. That's awesome. God save our gracious king. Now, okay, now, you're just trying to get me to read stuff. <laughs> As he reads it. Natus 809, God save our gracious king. Wait Long up. live our noble king. God save the king. Is this the song you guys... This is your. It's God. otherwise called the national anthem. All right. God save the king. I've seen the victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us. God save the king. <laughs> Nikolai Shot. He's my little brother. Okay, so Michael's uh, older brother is watching us here. <laughs> Julia Schnapp. That's JBT, Joe, and Jasmine. LOL. Hope they're doing well on course. Dennis EKN. Let's go, Shot. Denmark flag, Denmark flag, Denmark flag. Michelle Carney, James Burton is feeling the strain now, according to his pit crew. That's actually some breaking news from our comment section. Michelle Carney is in contact with James Burton pit crew, and he's feeling the strain. This has been your OCR Report comment section, brought to you by the OCR Report Patreon. If you'd like to support the sport we love, go to YouTube, go to patreon.com slash the OCR Report. For less than $5 a month, you can become a member of the OCR Report and support the sport we love. Five bucks a month gets you membership in the OCR Report. And a sticker. You more race live streams like this one. And a sticker. I don't have a billion <laughs> stickers, you guys. But if you join the OCR Report Patreon and shoot me a DM at the OCR Report on Do you have any stickers? Say that one more time. Do you have any stickers? I got stickers for days. I got stickers in my car right now. Oh, I want a sticker. All right, you will leave World's Toughest Butter 2023. Okay, hang on. Not with one. Not with three. But with two stickers. <laughs> hey -o. Hey -o. We got stickers. This guy is... Oh, man. Oh, this guy. God bless you. He's getting pounded with water. He's standing in like hip deep water. He looks like, sad. It's three. At least just standing there. He's like Charlie Brown. Come on, man, you got it. You know, always oh, look. Don't look up. Don't look up. He's a maniac. Maniac. Look at. Him. God bless you, brother. No, 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 no. Where are you going, friend? No, it's he got a complete dude. We're watching. We're watching already. You got under there. Oh, I, uh oh. There is no penalty option. Must complete. Uh -oh. It must complete. Uh oh. Friend, no, no, no. Uh oh. You are not uh -oh. quitting, friend. Get back in there. Uh oh. Oh, I don't know who that was, but I, I hope he doesn't quit. Well, he cheated. You can't skip. Like, there's nothing to skip. You got to do it. We saw that. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. I thought that was our barefoot friend for a second. Nah, too quiet. So I got stuck in an obstacle once. This is a good chance to tell you. Have I told you about this story? Should I just I quickly tell you what's going on, what's happening, easy. what's happening out on course? Please do. Uh, Chris Rogoski, um two minutes ago hit melting point, which we should all know by now is obstacle twelve. Uh, Callie hit snogging dirt about twenty minutes ago, and Stephanie hit it about nine minutes ago. That's for the women. Uh, Michael Scott, 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 Blit. Um, Hit snogging dirt 
five minutes ago, Austin Azar was at Snogging Dirt on his lap earlier at 2.48. And yeah, uh, Joshua Fiore has officially been lapped now. By Michael Schott, who is crushing it. No, yeah, no shame in that game for Joshua Fiore. Oh, no sh- oh, He's crushing it. He's crushing so it. He's, he's, doing are... a, he's, he's doing a Rogloski. Yeah. That is 809. Come on, fellas. You can do this. So, you guys so, stuck on so Carlo's in here. He wanted to hear the story. He was I'm sorry, Carlo. I'm sorry. All right. I'll tell you the story, Carlo. I was going to leave, but it... he said, You go. Um, Carlo Piscatello is going to take over commentating in about 55 minutes. Is he? Okay. So he'll be in here to uh, share stories with Frank Durando. Yeah, babe. Biscuits. Um, yeah, so we, we just saw a guy that's getting stuck here on Augustus Blue, this new version of Augustus Blue. In 2015, <coughs> my very first year, that World Seven Mutters, there was an obstacle called Royal Flush. Royal Flush was you get into a pool of water, it's about hip deep, and you walk up to this pipe, it's about 45 degrees down, and there's a rope inside and you got to climb up the rope and, you, and you're, you're pulling yourself up but you can't really use your feet at all because it's slippery so those black pipes you still use yeah, the same black pipes and the pipe the rope doesn't go all the way to the top the rope goes to about three feet from the top and at the same time you're you're pulling yourself up this rope on the inside of a tube they're blasting water down this was kind of the precursor obstacle to the original augustus gloop if you think about it, it was it was a slant though. It was like forty five. It was a steep. It wasn't vertical like us, but there weren't footholds or handholds any anything either. So it's like I don't know, two in the morning. I get to this obstacle, and I'm trying to go up the obstacle, and I get all the way up. I'm climbing up the rope. I'm at the top of the rope, but I'm hanging on at the top of the rope with both my hands at the top of the rope, and it's like two feet up to grab the lip. And I cannot reach, yep. and I cannot grab that lip. Water and water's blasted me in the face, and I'm, I'm, I've made it. Like I feel like I did all the hard part. I'm up to the top of this rope, and I'm pulling out with both hands for dear life because I know if I slide back down, I'm never getting back up. And so I'm hang on and hang on, and I just. But I know if I let go with one hand to grab that lip, I'm gonna, I'm not going to get it in time. I'm going to slide down. And so I'm hanging on, and hang on. And I don't like. What do I? How do I? What do I do? And eventually, I drop it. And I slide back, and I slide back into the starting pool of water, and I'm so discouraged. And my forearms are gassed. You know that feeling, like where they're just, they're throbbing, and you, you're like you can't barely even make a fist. You got like a pump going. I was gassed, and so I'm I go to the edge of the the pool. I'm kind of sit on the edge. And I got my feet hanging in the water. There's a lifeguard. It's a water obstacle. So there's a lifeguard standing there, and she's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, no, no, I'm fine. I'm not fine." But I'm not drowning, but I'm not fine. And people come up and they're like checking on me. You know how the community is. Like they're like, "Hey, there's a guy sitting here on the side of an obstacle. Like, are you okay?" This is now. This is a must complete obstacle. So if you don't finish this obstacle, you you're done. And it's two in the morning. Now at the time, I don't know if we, this, this is still an active rule or still an enforced rule. But at the time, you could you had to be making forward progress on the course at all times. And if you were make, and the reason for this is because at the end of the race, you had to finish a lap after twelve o'clock, not eight o'clock like we have now. So what would happen is people would get on the course and just kind of sit, literally sit so, down. So that would have prohibited the uh, angels. That's a good point. We didn't have the angels back then. So yeah, that's true. So I even had this in my head and this in my mind, like I'm not, I can't go forward. And you obviously can't go backwards on course. And I can't quit. But if I don't start moving forward, eventually someone from Team H, the lifeguard doesn't care. She's just there to make sure I don't die. Someone from Team H is going to show up and kick me off the course. And I'm done. I'm like, it's 2 o'clock. I'm more than halfway done. Like, I don't want to. So I'm just sitting there. And I am so bummed. And I'm stuck. Like, stuck. And I can't go forward. I can't go backward. I don't know what I'm going to do. And people come up to me like, hey, we can help you. I'm like, nah. Like, what am I going to I can't. Like, I how are you going to help me? Like, you can't climb in the tube with me. You can't, like, physically push me up. And so 
eventually, I like I'm literally sitting there for like an hour, hour and a half. I'm super stressed about like teammates you rolling through with a golf cart or something and kicking me off the court. This is my first year. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no idea what's going. I don't know anybody. I right. can't. I'm just like some guy out there on course that's stuck. And eventually, a guy, tall skinny guy, comes up and he's like, "Hey man, I'll help you." I'm like, "No, no, you're very kind." Like I've, I've already turned down like ten people. Like, thanks for your offer. He's like, "No, no, you get up." You get up as far as you can. I'll get you up the rest of the way. And I'm like, uh, he, and he like basically makes me. All right, man. And so I get in the two. And I'm like, I don't even. I'm, it's been I, my arms have rested for a while now. So I'm climbing up there. I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I get up as far as I can. I'm like near the top, getting blasted in the face of the water. This guy goes up another tube, comes around to my tube, somehow reaches through there, grabs like my armpits, and pulls me wow. through. And I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Chris Malty. Oh. Like, I've talked to him about this, and he's, neither of us are sure, but we both think so. I love that so, so much. And this is like 2015, my very first yeah, year, yeah. eight years ago. So. Got 90 miles that year, didn't you? He got, yeah, he got like 90. Yeah. I got 15. Like, it, it was a bad, bad year for me. He did pretty good. 15? I, I literally, okay, so here's what happened. I'm like, you get back to the pit area, and again, you have to be making forward progress all the time, and you have to finish a lap after noon, right? Or be on the course. Yeah. You have to be on the course at yeah. noon, right? That was the rule back then. You have to be on the course at noon or or finish a lap after noon, something like that. Okay. So there was a whole group. So in my mind, I'm thinking, if I go back on course, I get back to that obstacle, I'm done. Like, I'm not, I got lucky that that one guy helped me out that one time. And that guy might not come up show up again. So I'm like, I'm just going to stay in the pit area until noon, get on the course and, you know, wait it out so I could become it. That, that's how you, and, and like, I was a group of like 40 people who we all like got and got on course and just kind of like slowly went through ops. Like we were just like literally running out the clock. Now we didn't sit down. Like some people would just go out on course, literally and sit in, sit in the shade. But anyway, yeah, getting stuck on course like that guy we just saw here on Augustus Loop is the worst feeling at mm. most of us butter. It's quite a story. A yeah. uh, okay. little bit of guidance here on, on pronunciation that I want to try out. Okay. So not an exact guidance, but the pronunciation of the O, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce that O in the name, is actually quite close to how do you pronounce the I in shirt or in sir. So that's an er. So would it be shirt, 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 shirt. shirt. Sure. I don't know, guy. You're gonna have to. Is Michael... it a long I or is it? What about the J though? Is the J silent? Well, I'm kind of sounding the J slightly. Should it's sure. not should you? No, it's not should no you, but you know, should? there's a. I, I, I'm sure. hearing a J after my sh. Sure. Say it. Shirt. Sh- 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 <laughs> I'm just saying shirt now, aren't I? Well, uh... can we get some more advice on that, please? Um, Leon, if you're watching, can you send me a voice message on how to say it, please? Shut. I just don't want to get it wrong. No, People 100%. get my name wrong all the time. There's a guy in the World's Times Better community. His name is Ellie Areeb. It's spelled R-U-E-B. So it looks like Reb. But it's pronounced Reeb. Um, oh, he says yes. A person's I can't name... remember how I was saying it. That's correct. Shut. 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 Is that close enough? Is that non-offensive? I might just call him Michael. I got stuck on Augustus Blue, but you're at some smutter. Got my hand jammed under a scaffolding all the time. My watch wouldn't come back out. Had to wait. We need someone to give him your WhatsApp and voice notes. That's why I asked Leon to do it. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Shelly Rich. I remember being in New Jersey for WTM, breaking ice in the water. What happened to the cold weather? Well, one, we're in a completely different uh, area of the country, and two, we're a month earlier and global warming <laughs> well shelly i mean you you know in new jersey world sounds matter like it was sometimes it was in december right shirt 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 i don't know shirt all right shirt there we go That's, I'm gonna but no that. there's one of my i told amelia boone this uh 12 hours ago one of my favorite pictures i've ever seen from world seventh mutter is an athlete in a water obstacle Holding up a giant piece of ice. Oh, try shut. Shut. 
they literally had to break the ice to get into the water obstacles way back in the day. I'm just obsessing about how to say his name. Shit. Is that a is that better, Nick? Shit. Shit. Close enough is what I got on my pronunciation. Is it okay? We talking about this on. Is it? Does it seem like a lot of people are failing that? Like, like more than I, I average, right? It's a, it's a very long way. side, like side to side. Yeah. Like it's two, two. Uh, music. Someone go past the music. Yeah, it seemed, it seemed like, like not that you're ever gonna get 100 percent on that off. Uh, Carlo's going to take over the uh, commentating here in a bit. You want to do Carlo and Mike? Say hi. Right, cool. I don't mind staying. Come down a little bit. Right there. Quiet. Uh, go to your right a little bit. Okay, right there. Go straight. I'm going to turn my mic on here because we've been having a big conversation all night about dry robes and how to get them to events. And uh, it started with Amelia Boone. She's saying, I wish I had my dry robe, but I'm going on a flight and I can't take it with me. And I was like, dude, you just wear it on the plane. And everyone's like, what? Like, you wear it on the plane. And Will now can't wrap his head around it because I have two dry robes with me. One was brought from England. The other was brought from California. Okay, so I'm going to turn over the microphone to Carla here for a few hours. But before I go, we've been talking about this for hours, Carlo, that the way to get a dry robe to a venue. Now, my wife actually packed mine for me in a like a compression bag and like mm -hmm. pushed all the air out of it somehow. It was like the tightest I've ever seen this jacket. Like, And I don't know how I'm going to get it back home. I'm you wear own. it on the plane! Oh. For God's but sake, she man! she has two dry robes. So how did she get two dry robes here? Well, if you, li if you listen to me, I keep telling you, one dry robe came over from England and one dry robe has never left the States because it came from California because it's an OCRWC okay. branded one. And on then we have two people. Yeah. I will wear one home. Okay. Dustin will wear one home. It's not it's not that complex. Have fun. Sleep well. Oh God, it's Carlo time. Hello. Where am I? It's Carlo time. Where am I? Oh, that's where I'm supposed to be. Excellent. Oh, we're not. Nobody's looking at us. We've not had. Oh, fantastic! We've not had the camera. Even better. On and this is us our. For ages. Who's talking to us here? Um, people. Our YouTube, our YouTube comments. I have a headache. I show up and you immediately have a headache. Yeah, you have that effect on me. I have that effect on you. That's okay. That's okay. Welcome. Charge your phone, by the way, Will. Where is Jason? Hashtag rabbit. Hello. Jason, I just saw uh, he's Jason. Just standing he's not. There, yes. Um, taking a few minutes break yeah he has been, been running that guy has probably logged i bet 25 30 miles today oh he did 26 miles not long ago so oh, oh a while good. ago so yeah excellent uh, so yeah just he's just having a little bit of a chit chat i love it well he's going to be going to put obstacles out he was asking where he should be putting a camera we've seen a lot of the obstacles and the problem with the rigs now is people are just failing them 
yes, and, or people are just skipping them altogether, you know, um, approaching them, going through the water if required, and then going straight to the penalty, which uh, I've heard from people in the pit area say that if you do all of the penalties, it adds close to three miles to your wow. to your lap. But do you know that Michael Schutt has done no penalties? Like last heard... we heard, we don't know if that's changed, but his um, his laps have been staying consistent. So I heard assume. that. That's that's incredibly impressive. It's very uh, dare I say, it, Ryan Atkins esque. Mm -hmm. I don't think Ryan Atkins. How old is Michael? That's a great question. Must be young. Is it his younger brother or older brother that was in the chat mm -hmm. a little while ago? You were here. It was a brother, I think. Oh, it was a brother. I can't remember if it was older or younger brother. Older brother, thank you. So, FYI, yes. uh, Chris's last lap was 134. Her lap before that was 133. Love it. So consistent. And where is. Oh, there's Katie Knight. Okay, so she's. Should we have a quick look at the leaderboards because you're yes. new here? Let's start with a man. I'm new here. You're new here. I have been following the event all night, but thank Shut you. Shut up. <laughs> There's Michael. Shit. How are we pronouncing it? Shit. Yeah. Oh, they're just trying to make us say a bad word. Yeah, I'm trying really hard not I to say that. I think people are like people are just setting us up to to be made this fun of. This has just been one big setup to get a swear word on the ACR report. Not gonna do it. Austin Azar, Joshua Fiore. Come on, Austin. He's like he looks so strong and he's so happy every time I see him on course. I've seen him a lot. You know, like an event like this is really interesting because uh, I view having done it a few times, you we were talking about this earlier. Like there are certain people for whatever reason, you will see them like a dozen times yeah. throughout on the course. Yeah. And then there's people you'll who never are maybe see. pitting right next to you and you'll never see them. Yeah, it's than, weird. Yep, that's just that the, happens. Just, that just happens way, at loads of events. Yeah, it's just the way it goes, and it's so interesting. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just the way your pacing is, or whatever. You just you miss somebody all the time, and uh, that is not what was happening today. It seemed like most obstacles we showed up to to do some of the social media coverage, uh, we ran into Austin. And uh, yeah, we've seen him pass quite a few times. He's got that kind of uh, that Hannah Carter vibe. Mm. Always smiling, mm. always very positive, and. Um, yeah, and I love it. I love it. He's, so he's Michael like really is thirty-two strong. years old. Uh, Michael is from nineteen ninety-one. So he's thirty-two. So in yeah. contrast, I graduated high school in nineteen ninety. Wow, you are old. I am older than Will Hicks. How old are you? I am fifty-one years young. Wow. I know. I know. I wish I was running today too. I'll be honest. But the Could way you my get fifty-one knee, miles. The way my I would have gotten fifty-five miles probably. At least that would be my goal. Although I don't know, because I would probably take a lot of penalties too, and uh, that's a lot of mileage out there on these penalties. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys have talked about it before, but um, Chris has just gone past uh, um, Spunky Monkey, by the way, so we should see her at Mudderhorn soon, which would then mean excellent. See her. She's moving yeah, well. She, her she just came through a little bit ago. Actually, she's probably a little longer than that now. Well, but, yeah, uh, actually. It feels like not that long ago, but it was because it's been nearly a whole lap. Yeah. And we went back in time an hour. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. Now we she came back through up. 40 minutes ago. Oh, goodness. Really? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind Time's of Time's actually moving quite well. I like it. Christian Bound Johnson in sixth, sixth place. He was looking strong. Oh, we got audio from... Uh, can you hear audio? Because I can only hear... Nothing. I, I just heard audio from. Um, audio. Uh, I hear audio. 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 From. Uh, what's Jason. It no, Jason. It's from uh, uh, Operation. Operation. My least favorite obstacle, by the way. I will. I will skip. I will skip that and take the penalty every time. Do we know what the penalty is on that one? Yes, that one. It's called. It's like uh, waddle waddle. It's not bad. Waddle they, waddle. Yeah, you take. You have to take an elastic band. Put your feet through it. And then, like, put it up to your knees, yeah, and kind of spread your knees a little bit, and then waddle down a uh, uh, distance penalty, mm. which is not as bad as the other distance penalties. So, uh, I would do that every time compared to risk getting shocked. Fair. Uh, 
You hate the electric. I do. I really do. Um, and there's no getting used to it. Um, I just don't. I don't want to do it. I don't want to get shocked. I don't, I don't like do it. it. I, I never don't like it. it. I won't do it. And they made no, it I, it's what no. I think harder this year because there's no there's no hooks on the end of the poles. So you the, have to just. They've got little. It looks like um, screws. So there is a tiny like screw head. We'll probably see it a minute when someone brings it out here. And on the end of the pole. Oh, they got zappy. Yeah. So there's on like the end a, of the pole. Yeah. It's not a point. It's like a little head. Okay. We'll take a look. I did not see that, but uh, I noticed it earlier. But somebody was probably talking, and I couldn't bother to interrupt. It's a great cam we have, by the way. It is. It's good, isn't it? You get a lot of uh, profanity too, by the way, when you listen to that obstacle. I imagine. Oh, look at this! Here we go. Slow Here we and go. steady. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is exciting. Where is it? Where's That's the long. Ring? There, look. Did you see oh. it? Oh, I did not notice that yeah, earlier. There we go. Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. Oh wow! You sound so surprised. I didn't. <laughs> I do not sound Thanks, surprised. Buddy. <laughs> okay. I wish I had Cam 3 for you guys, but I don't. Well, I mean, you could be using it. I'm using my... I'm, dude, have you seen our social media feed? It's amazing today. I heard some guy is doing it. Yeah, this guy. This guy. Well, not the guy, not currently. What is Nikolai saying? Or is that old? That's old. Okay. That's old. Just put some proper sausage and some bacon. Okay. Michael's an age group, 30 to 34. Julia asked how Joe Perry is doing. I've seen Joe Perry a lot today. Yeah, I he's, have too. He's, uh, you know, You Joe, can do it! Joe's always very consistent. Let me look up really quick. I can take a look and look up Mr. Perry for you because that's how I roll. Michael went through swinging tips like four minutes ahead of Josh. Michael did? Mm -hmm. Just just now. Got it. Oh, wait. Yeah. Just now. And I think he's also... Yeah, and he went through swinging tips. So Elmer King went through swinging tips around the same time as Josh Fiore one lap behind Josh, so two laps behind Michael, and Elmer is in fourth place. There we go. We saw Elmer earlier. He was moving well. Uh, Julia, to answer your question, Joe Perry, nine laps complete. Uh, currently on lap 10, he is in 96th place overall. And uh, yeah, he's at 45 miles and counting. Mm -hmm. So nice. doing well. Fourth in his age group at the moment. Ooh, so, good. we all love Joe Perry, and I can't remember exactly what his face is painted as this year. It was um, white with, it, but it had like yes, but I don't know what it was. There's always a theme, and I do not know what the theme was. So, this is great. Hello, friend. Hello, love. I'm so excited to do this to you again. That's for those who don't know, Fran and I did this for a couple of hours more than a couple of hours it was it was a good amount like six maybe hours last year i think someone's asking can you get some speakers for next year and people can send voice notes to play at the obstacles and encouragement for them i don't even know how that would technically work can you get some let's see speakers for next year and peeps can send voice notes to play out at the obstacles encouragement. I, that'd be cool i don't I know i don't know how it would work in any way shape or form though, Charlie Boer is checking in from the UK Charlie Boer I am so bummed that he is not here tonight although his dog Badger just had a birthday oh is, happy birthday yeah Badger. Badger is a beautiful black lab and uh, I follow their exploits on um, on on social media yeah he's also a polo player not the dog uh, Charlie Boy. Boer yeah not 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 Badger but uh, Badger Boer Badger Bower, yes, Badger Bower, Double B, as we call him, in the hood. Baby. Yeah, yeah, Double B. And um, Orion, yes, uh, to answer your question, Orion is currently ahead of mileage-wise than the gentleman who was um, second place to him. So, yes, right now Orion's on track to get the Holy Grail mileage. What's your favorite yeah. obstacle, Carlo? Oh. Any new ones you like? Aaron Rost, you know Aaron Rost, right? Aaron Rost. By the way, oh, hi, she's still awake. Good for Aaron. Aaron, by the way, uh, the baby on the way. Uh, her husband is um, part of the 
Air Force Thunderbirds. He's the flight medic for them. Just going through all of our... My, what's your favorite obstacle out there? Carlo. Any new ones you like? That's a great question, Aaron. I'm just going to Aaron's background without answering your question. Yeah. But uh, so sharing her private personal details. Yeah, personal details. Her <laughs> her home address is no. Um, what is my favorite? Oh, what happened? Let's see. What's your favorite obstacle out there, Carlo? I'm working on it. Hold on. Well, Badger says hi, so that's fantastic. Hi, Badger. Hi, Badger. Hey, Badger. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Badger. Who's a good boy? Badger's a good boy. Uh, Sorry, Aaron. Uh, we had dog content, and so I get distracted easily. Um, my favorite obstacle out there. That's a good one. Um, that's a great question, Aaron. I keep saying that. Why don't you think about it and come I'm, up with an answer? I'm going to have to go. Well, do we have our little obstacle list? Can I see that? I will be able to tell you by. Quick. He's got no idea what's out there, by the way. He's just been snoozing this whole time. I have not been snoozing this whole time. I've been, I've been getting after it, yo. Uh, let's yeah. see. Please do not get Thank you. Me. Actually, melting point. Melting there. point. Really? Oh yeah, that's just that's just a fun um, delivery. Just climb up the thing and teeter totter down. And now earlier, they were they were they were the whole melting point thing. You probably talked about this, but it was hours ago. I'm sure. The whole point of the melting point is you go in, you enter through one body of water, and you exit through a second body of water. And the exit water, they were adding pallets and pallets of ice to. Oh, right. So there's no actual Arctic enema here on course this year. So that was kind of the closest thing they had. So you go in to, like, standard temperature water, whatever that is, given the temperatures tonight, and you exit um, in the ice water. But... I did not see – last time I was up there, they were not adding ice still. So it might just be back to kind of standard. People are saying the water was chilly. Is it? Erin says her baby won't sleep, so we're keeping her entertained. Oh, she says I'm the best and she misses us, guys. Aww. We'll just focus on the part where she says – How old is the baby, Aaron? Oh, yeah. How old is the baby, Aaron? Baby can't be much more than a year old. Oh, I miss Aaron so much. The pug Bronson has jumped up at me, and he has been what? watching all night with me. That's it. I'm all about see. I'm, I'm all about the dog content. Let's go. Brunson. You guys want to tell oh. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Wookies. Stark contrast from when Will's on this and I'm on this. It's just. <laughs> well, let's be real. Who's up right now? Just Europe, right? Europe. You're up. Hey, You're get up. Hey, oh, let's go. Boy. Let's go. Oh, back to okay. Boy, I tell you what, this Augustus Gloop was giving some people some serious problems. Um, You're saying if you do all the penalties, seven mile loop. Well, I'd heard eight, um, but that puts uh, Sarah Hawk. Oh, so. cool. Uh, I don't know if it's the same, but the Augustus Gloop, if you go to the far end there, like what would be our right, uh, that. That water spigot did not seem to be dropping at the same rate as the others. Spigot? Spigot? Spigot. Spigot. Have you heard spigot. that? Spigot. Spigot. Yeah, it's like a, a water spigot. I've never heard of it's that. It's a, I guess, clearly it's a U.S. term, maybe. I don't know. What does it mean? It's like, worth the, like a little thing that water comes out of, like a, tap. a sprinkler or a, yeah, or a tap. Tap. A little on the side of your house, you know? Okay. Spigot. So, baby is 13 months. Just Europe. Well, no, not just Europe, but I'm just mostly. There's more of the world. Thomas is globe checking me here. New Jersey is still up. I love it. New Jersey's waking up. He's a pug, so walk. He's just. I love it. I love it. Christy's watching for Gary Andrews from the UK. He was around 43 when I went to bed. Hoping he's still powering on and dragging Leanne. Was that, was that your dog? My dog? On your lock screen. Oh, yeah, that was my dog. I didn't know you had a dog. Well, she kind of lives with my mom. Is that a Pomeranian? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. A lot of people are surprised when they realize I've got a Pomeranian. I'm not usually a little, a, a, a little really dog cute. person, but Pom's I'll can find be you all right. Pictures. Pom's can be all right. What? Really, I'll find you all pictures. Okay, She's please really do. Cute. Please do. But, uh, let's see. Uh, but yeah, this Augustus Gloop is... Augustus Gloop. The, the original one, I think, is still my favorite, but... Um, when I look through my albums, I've got far too many athletes. 
You do come a lot up of athlete people. photos. Oh, there, there's, there's my doggo. Ryan Atkins. Aww. There's my doggo. What is, what is her name? His name? Folia. What is it? Folia. Folia? What does that mean? Leaf. Oh, like foliage. Yeah. But, oh my gosh, that's a really cute Look that ridiculous face. That is a ridiculous face. She's so cute. Okay, so I'm getting it now that the East Coast is also waking up or hasn't gone to bed, so... I forget that when I say things on the microphone that people can hear it. Mm. So, clearly... Oh, look. There's the weather. I'm just looking at dog pictures cool now. Feature. Yeah, please don't, please don't stop with the dog pictures. <laughs> I'm all about that. I don't intend to. Look. Look how majestic she is. She looks like a lion. She does look like a lion. Like a little baby lion, but little still baby a lion. lion. Let's see. Gary and Leanne are smashing it and looking strong still. Well, that's great news. We're smashing it, actually. Yeah, we I absolutely smashed it. I had to take my beanie off, by the way, to put this headset on, and now my head's getting cold. But I'm quite hot, actually. But I think I'm tired. Oh, and there she is, a proud big sister. That's it. How old is that picture? Uh, 2017. I was going to say, because your, your baby is older than that. She's now six, yeah. Yep. So Melting cute. point. I love Melting Point. Jason kind of injured I was going to look for an athlete, and then he... he uh, Distracted me about oh, Gary, Gary, Gary Andrew. Gary Andrew. Is it Gary Andrew Bip. or Gary Andrews? Gary Andrews. Gary Andrews. Kind of like Julie Andrews. Oh, what is it with Mary Poppins tonight? Did you know the hills are alive with the sound of music? Did you know that a spoonful of pizza helps the chicken beyond go down? Us being full of chicken? Uh, so, Gary Andrews, rank 45th. There he is. Laps 10. Oh, great. He's got 50 miles in. Nice. Smashing, as they say. Smashing. Katie Knight uh, is on her twelfth lap, uh, on her thirteenth lap. By the way, guys, we've not spoken about that. Oh. Really got any updates? Go. Oh, oh, I do. Oh, um, hit it. Uh, Mudderhorn, our friend Chris, uh, not long went through Mudderhorn, so she should be here. She comes oh, across look at the that. Yeah, That's great timing. Woo! That is Woo! Production Woo! by Fran. She did not blink. Fran knew she looks strong. Look, she's still she's yeah, walking she's fast. That was fantastic timing by you, Fran. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Fran was like, watch this. Boom. There she is at the finish line. <laughs> so she's just finished her 13th lap. Let's let's throw the women up quickly. Let's do it. She's got 13 <laughs> laps in the bag. Uh, Callie's 16. still in second. 37. Callie's still in second. She was last seen... Um, at melting point eight minutes ago, which is oh, where's the my all my pieces of paper right, taken? It's not a paper. It's well, laminated. You know I, mean. I laminated it myself. Oh, did you? Thank yes, you. Yes, I did. Of school twelve. So she's got a while to go. Well, let's see how the guys are getting on. I mean, there's going to be no changes there, but let's just look at them. Nope. Michael. Shut. 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 Uh, is also at melting point on lap sixteen. So that's interesting. Yeah, Callie is on lap thirteen. Do we have? Oh, we don't have. Point. We don't have camera at melting point right now. No. Okay. And uh, Austin, lap fifteen, Spunky Monkey. Love it. Uh, move the camera to point. This operation is not too exciting. So sorry, TC Cross. He, he's, uh, I think he's at home directing us. Uh, we, we, we don't have many options on obstacles right now, buddy, because uh, a lot of people are not doing them. And we don't yeah. have rabbits out on the course currently because we only have one and he's here producing. So the choices are Operation, Finish Line, or Augustus Blue. Oh, hold on. We have a picture. I put a picture up on your latest WTM post on Facebook if you want to see Bronson. I mean, I do want to see Bronson. Let's see if I can find Bronson. 
We are so close to 16 hours. It feels like it. I'm really I'm confused with uh, Trevor uh, Psychos is not was not doing well the last we checked. Could we get his? Could we get Trevor up? Um, uh, I'm that, getting... that is Bronson. Um, Trevor is it's Trevor, and then it's C I C H O S Z. See, I'm getting confused with the race clock because to me it looks like 24 hour time, so I'm thinking it's 3:40. Yes. But it's yes. not 3.40. Well, actually, it is. It is 3.40 in the morning. Well, we're hour 15.40. But it's not 3.40. It's 2.40 in the morning. Oh, this is so confusing. Sorry. Yeah, the That's been happening, I think, all night. All night. Yes. All night. Uh, our little booth here is constantly being confused for the HQ tent. There's Trevor. Next year, for every race we do, we need to get signs saying we are not timing slash HQ slash medical. Or just have them just have them put themselves right there. That'd be fine too. Yeah, but people just start to There's Trevor. Psychos. Psychos. Five miles. Yep, that was a long time ago. I think he pitted and he never yeah, came out. Of the I think he's, he's done. Unless he's well, gaming, maybe unless not done, he's, but well, unless he's aiming to get a lap in when it gets light, but yeah. he's currently not. Uh, he's he, not aiming for 100, is he, right now? I would love to see him get 100, though, just to keep the streak alive. Oh, I'd love that. Uh, but personally, Trevor is uh, rooting for Austin to win. We talked about that a little earlier. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I think he just thinks that, and not think, he told me that uh, he really likes Austin, and he knows that he's like trained super hard for this, and he's kind of had a little bit of bad luck in, in previous years, and he'd like to see it... Uh, why the so she's calling? Felisa Arroyo just said that she's still up and she's enjoying listening Is to us. Is your friend? My 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 friend Felice, indeed. That is indeed. Hi, Felice. I thought she was in bed hours ago, but it appears she is still. And up. guess what, Felice? There you go. Oh, look at they're gonna. This is a horrible angle. It really is. This is why I'm. So, look, you see, I've got red little cheeks. I'm actually pretty hot right now. That's just. You, <laughs> Look at you. Uh, I was like, I recognize that name. I know that name very well. Hello, Felice. And then we've got Mike in the background. Oh, there's Jason. Mike and everybody's I here. I don't think I'm... You know, you have to... Where did you, you go? Go How are you invisible? Oh, are you a vampire? Yeah. Behind <laughs> Carlos's giant head. Did you just call me Carlos? You kind of did say Carlos, but that's okay. Blame Jack. Ah, what did... <laughs> Jack's making it happen. Oh, Jack's back. That's why my mood just dropped. I'm just kidding. We love Jack Orr. Is he here? No. No, it's still. Oh, I thought you said Jack's back. We don't know where no, I didn't is. say that. It's Jack's fault. Oh, Jack's sleeping in the truck. We know where Jack is. And that's fine. Morning, guys. Nice to see you. Thanks, guy. We're pretty tired. But I have tea. It's nice to see you guys, too. I am, uh, I just got a little pep in my step. I'm not going to lie. Well, that's cute. You're cute. Thank you. You're cute. Everybody's cute. I've got no one sending me messages. I don't want to send me a message. Everyone's yeah, like, someone hey, send... Will, you're amazing. Hey, Carla, you're a superstar. <laughs> oh, Dennis. Let's go. Dennis from uh, Australia. Gosh, I haven't Looking heard from good, Dennis. Good, guys. Right Thanks, Sandy. Year. Look at Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. Oh, morning, Carlo. Oh, yeah. Man, good morning, the, Carlo. The Danish folks. Fran. Thanks for oh. 15 hours. This is awesome. Good morning, Isaac. Isaac uh, is normally here competing and has a mohawk usually, but um, he is not here this year, obviously. I think he. I want to say Isaac recently had a baby. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I thought I heard that. Maybe not. But good to hear from you, Dennis and Sandy. Hi, friend. You're my friend. Oh, you have to say that. Oh, look at that. See? Like you, have a fan. you have a fan. Someone says that you're their favorite. Some guy named Dustin Duruff. 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 Dustin, <laughs> Dustin Duruff. <laughs> Get it? Because um, <laughs> Will's not here, so we can <coughs> get away with jokes like that. Uh, I know we're in our faces, but there's, there's not much Is that to an show AI you. image, by the way, for his... 
his profile picture. He just looks like that. Yeah, oh, that's that is like fantastic. Face, I'm actually hot. Are you? Are you texting your lady? I just. Oh my god, you're so cute. Oh, you stop. Also, to, uh, do rough. He said he only just recently found that out, which means his high school uh, bullies weren't even trying. See, <laughs> oh, I heard that. I listened to him on your podcast. Oh, I, uh, I, did. I I think you hurt his feelings with the AI picture comment. No, Maybe it's just like, it looks too feelings. perfect. It does look really it's too perfect. It does, doesn't it? That's a yes, handsome, handsome. I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm just saying. Covering, <clears throat> covering your tracks there. Thank you. Set up a post on Facebook and we can all upload our no sleep has a mess PJ pics to you guys. Uh, sure, someone do that. Set up a post on Facebook. So everyone can reply in the comments with their own pictures. A picture of us? Just a reminder, the feeds change in 15 minutes. Yeah, Jay Stock. The feeds change in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Do they really? Uh, yeah, I mean, technically they don't have Every eight to. hours, right? It's so, eight hours is the max. I love you. Um, oh, me, but yeah, Jason will come back and change the feed. Is he, on a, he has a little internal timer. He just knows when eight hours is coming. Is that in the way? It was actually rather oh, in the way. Okay. So, what's going on? Yeah, should we give them a, should we check leaderboards or are we? Well, we tell see? us what was going on out there. You've been doing a lot of social. You've I been have. Out the pit. What's the dealio, my friend? Wait, the no, the feed I mean, the, 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 the theme for this year, it appears, is uh, long, long penalties. Lots of distance in the penalties. How much are you saying? Seven, eight miles on penalties. That's, well, three I've heard anywhere from two to three miles additional. If you took all the penalties, your lap would be somewhere. I've heard three miles longer, and I've heard two miles longer. So, so what was Will saying when he came over with eight miles? Uh, well, five plus three. Ah, oh, right, got you. Would be eight. That's some math there, right? That's. I mean, that's what they say. Five mile course plus three miles in penalties equals eight miles per lap. How much so, elevation in one lap? I mean, very. That's little. a great question. There is very not a lot little. of elevation. Um, very little. <laughs> So, and I don't have the exact number for that. I'm sure we can find someone who's tracked it, but I, I don't know <clears throat> off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, like, particularly uh, the grappler, right? That's the one where you're swinging the rope, throwing the rope up and uh, the grappling hook type one. That one in particular I have been told is like a three quarter of a mile penalty mm -hmm. and a good portion of it. You have to go through this little like boggy marshy, like knee deep muck to get through it. So it's a particularly, uh, the, the elites were taking like nine minutes to complete the penalty. So if you make the gambler and the person behind you, the gambler, the gambler from like 2015, the grappler and your competitor does, does not, then you have a decided advantage time-wise. Fran with her tea equivalent to instant noodles. Yes, Matthew, penalty distances are are crazy compared to last year. Yeah, we've spoken about that a few times. We spoke to Chris about it. Let's, let's cover it again. Um, basically, last year, they felt, and I will entirely agree, that too many athletes who are capable of doing obstacles were choosing to skip them for the easier penalty. I agree with so you. So they wanted to uh, deter people from doing that, so made the penalty longer, more difficult, more annoying, whatever, more taxing than the obstacle, Yes. if you're able to do it. So for those who can't do it, it sucks. It's kind of like those who could do it and didn't, ruined it for everyone else, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's... Um... I mean, 2000, 2015, when we were out in Lake Las Vegas, I feel it was the same way. There were some incredibly long penalties. 2017, um, I remember in particular, there was one, if you failed the, was it like the Kong, the, the, the newer Kong obstacle, it was an incredibly long out and back, and you, out and back, and you had to do Arctic Enema in the middle of the penalty. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's not uncommon, but it seems like it's something they got away from in the previous couple of years. And I mean, cheers to Chris for kind of snapping it back and listening to, uh, you know, kind of some of the community voices and also realizing that, yeah, it should be, you should be punished, right? For 
are taking the penalty, and that's that's what's happening. They so, as around. someone reminded us, the cameras will change in to change in ten minutes because that'll be sixteen hours, two lots of eight. But uh, Jason's not here at the minute. They don't have to change. They don't. No, I don't think so. We can keep going a bit longer. So if okay. Jason isn't here to change them, I guess we just carry on yes. until he gets here to change them. I agree. Because I don't know what I'm doing. You're doing great. That's what you're doing. I'm just talking rubbish, man. No. Yeah. Should we? Oh, Fran. Yeah, babe. I've waited a year, an entire year. Actually, technically one week less than a year. Uh, to share some jammy Dodgers with you. Oh, let's do it. Should we do it? Let's do it. Okay. They're behind us somewhere. Uh-huh. We have apple and black currant. Which I've never tried. Neither have I. I've only, I've only tried had jam. the strawberry ones, which you were kind enough to provide for me uh, a few weeks ago when we met at OCRWC. Out jammy in Mammoth, Dodgers. California. Like shortbread biscuits with jammy Biscuits, middle. by the way. Biscuits. They're not cookies. They're not cookies. They're not cookies. And unlike uh, cookies in the States, those, you don't get a thousand in a packet. And you don't get a lot of weird ingredients. No, you actually don't get a lot of weird ingredients. You do get real sugar. Ooh, this smells lovely. Apple and black. I don't even know what a black currant is. I'm not going to lie. Um, and are there different? Are there like red currants yeah. and orange currants? And there are red currants and black currants. Really? You know what black currants are? No. You I never have like black currant cordial. Black carrot what? Cordial. Cordial? Cordial? Is that a word? Yeah. Cordial? Cordial. Cord no. I don't like, know. Uh like like a syrup that you mix with water to make a soft drink. No, I've never even squash? heard that. That dilute. A squash is, is a vegetable where Yeah, I'm I know, but it's also called squash, or it's called some people call it dilute. No, I am like So shall I tell you how there's a best way to eat these? Yes, please. In do. my opinion. Yes. Nibble the edges to take like so you got biscuit that doesn't have jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you got nibble the edges just okay. to take the biscuit off. I, my mouth is so dry, I don't actually want to eat a biscuit right now. Oh my god, me too. <laughs> me too, me too. Oh, my mouth is so ripped to shreds from eating bougie trail I know. mix. I've had like pizza and Red Bull most of the night. Okay, just don't bother with the other biscuit. Just, just go straight it? for the jam. All right, let's go. Forgive my chewing for mama. I don't want the rest of that. You eat that. How are you feeling about that? I think the raspberry ones are better. Okay. Black currants are banned in the US. What? Is that a joke? Cordy. Oh. I don't speak like that. I'm not a savannah. Cordy. Jammy Dodgers are life. Cordial. The raspberry ones are awesome. Oh, we've, we've spiked some interest with the Jammy Dodger talk. Cordial. I love the tone right now. Very much late night kind of mood. Yeah. We, we rambled on. Oh, I also brought you some um, candy. <laughs> oh, I have some candy too. Candy, candy. Oh, can we get copyright struck for singing a song? I don't know. What is this? Cheese. These are. All right. Am I supposed to? Yeah. Huh? I'll just get rid of that. Oh. Uh, uh. oh. 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 Wait. That's delicious. They but, carry uh, a disease, which is. Are you lying here? Because I feel like you're in a silly enough mood. That you would be lying. What's happening here? It, hey, look, try, try one of. Try, well, you have to try all of them. Oh just... no! <laughs> so, um. Okay, so these. These are called puds. Yeah, as in a pudding. Oh, puds. Puds. Not puds. Not puds. I mean, so, maybe if I was very posh, I'd call it a pud. But I probably wouldn't call it so a, a pudding. pud. How do I say this and keep it? Family friendly? Yes. A pud, I don't know if it's other places, but in the United States, a pud is a term like uh, that has to do with like, you know, uh, a reproductive organ that males have. True. Enjoy your pud. <laughs> Oh, he's going to chew down on some pud. Uh, <laughs> okay. So whilst, whilst Carl is sticking that pud in his mouth, uh, Austin, oh. <laughs> Austin Azar uh, has got 75 miles. Uh, Josh Fiore uh, was last seen uh, about 15 minutes ago at a melting point on his 15th. I didn't read about the flavor of these. 
It's like a taffy. It's like the pud. It's like... <laughs> it's have you seen, to me. Have you seen the banana controversy that happened earlier this week? Or because of the... Controversy. Yeah. Controversy. I'm going to Google about black currant in the U.S. Okay. Oh, could I not put this whole thing in my mouth? Like, yeah. Like, no, it's good. Kind of, it'll, it'll go will squishy. Will it soften up? It will. Okay. We are... I feel like we may have talked about this before. Black currants are not illegal in the United States anymore, but in the past was banned, were banned, for almost a century when pressure was put on lawmakers by the logging industry. Okay. 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 Cool. Interesting. So you don't have Ribena. So they were illegal, but now they're... Not, nah, but you don't really have them. According to the one Google article we found? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. In 1911, the federal government banned the cultivation, sale, and transport of black currants to protect the white pine. But, you know, freedom. Freedom. That's right. Freedom isn't free. It's a fruit syrup. It's yeah, cost, I, I guess. It's well, a buck old five. Um, it's good. Kind of you like know what? Syrup. Puds, um, not bad. Very Come chewy. On. Yeah, good. So I have three I really things. Like I mean, there are other flavors, but they're the best and three. I've got a fudgy and a drumstick. Mm. Okay. I'm in. It appears that this broadcast is going to give me diabetes, but <laughs> that's okay. It's only a few more. Hours. By the way, I, Will is still kicking around. I thought he was going to go take a nap. Go take a nap, Will. I really enjoy watching people go up Augustus Gloop. I really do. Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. I've just remembered we're up on the big screen. Yeah. Yeah, being stupid. No, no. They're being entertaining. Since so they can't hear us, can they? Look, can you see how red my face is? They can't hear it. Of course they can. Augustus. Augustus. What is this? Sandy says, by the way. Oh, wait. Did Jason talk about switching the feed over? He came and he went. And we were talking about candy. Oh, shoot. We'll just stay here, I guess. I can't. I'm trying to understand if I'm. If I'm is one of us getting an offer for a date? Well, I've not got brown eyes. Sandy says, by the way, brown eyes, we should date. So that's not me. I have brown eyes. That, that would make sense because that would also be assuming that I was into ladies. So I mean, You do what you wish. I know I can. I'm an autonomous human being. Let's go. But I don't have brown eyes. Judging by the flags, Sandy is in uh, is that Denmark. Uh-huh. Hey. Well done, American. You thank, know, European thank flag. Thank you. Well, hey, everyone, throw up a flag and let's get closer well, to get it. That's pretty popular. That's throw up a, a flag. Oh, no, do not. That's been a pretty popular flag today. For a pretty popular flag always in OCR. You know? Like Leon? How would you, how do you pronounce? So, Sandy. So, wait. So, she's got the same O in her name as Shut does, oh, which we kind of thought was an I, so R, or it's like U, R sound. So, Bergskoff? Folk. Bergskoff? I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna is pretend. That, is that is that good enough, Sandy? Sandy Bergstoff? We'll Scoff. find out in a second. Bergskoff. Sandy's right. Okay, I'm gonna go I'm moving on to a fudgy. Which has three E's. That's a lot of that's a lot of E's. Fudgy is Jason back? Fudgy Fudgy Fragile. That's Italian. What's that from? What? I said fragile. Oh, fragile. That's Italian. Right. Yeah, but I don't know. What is he quoting a movie? You've seen the movie? Yeah. Christmas story. Christmas I've seen story. It. Have you seen it? No. Oh, it's a classic. Oh, I hate that movie. It's still a Here classic. That's a that's the British flag, and uh, it's a very small. I don't know what that is. Is that a, is that a? That's not the Canadian with the. It's not Canadian. No. The Canadian is the other color. Is that a star? I can't. It, it, the, it, the emoji comes up really small on my screen, so. I don't You're know. treading in difficult waters. Soft G and V is more of an. Everything sounds like an O so I sound. Oh, you were right. That's so, right. Yay! Oh, no. People are listening to your thing about. <laughs> Argentina. That is Argentina. I think I actually know that. I think. Oh, no. Danish is sort of messed up. Well, I didn't say it. that. Wasn't me. I didn't say that. Are you not supposed to say Danish? No, he just said Danish is sort of messed up. Oh, but I'm, okay. I'm not saying that. 
I actually can't see these flags. That just looks like a tiny horse. Beach forest. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, Christian Ashcom. Wait. Jammy Dodgers are delicious, yeah. How good is that? I thought a fudgy was going to taste like chocolatey. No, oh, fudge. Oh. I don't like fudgies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like them. Um, so I'm one for one for two. One for two. The the, the the puds or puds? I don't like them. <laughs> I, I really don't. like the fudgies. I'm not going to spit it out, though, because I'm like, I'm, I'm Ooh, bit, I don't know. We already bit now. Austin had but. 75 miles. We can wait till. Okay, so we're waiting till four. I mean, you, Jason, so it is you now four a.m. local time. Wait, does he mean? No, it's not. It's three a.m. local time. God, dang it! It is three a.m. What could we lost an hour? We went back in time. Bah, 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 so bah. I think we're waiting an hour to change the feed. Oh, because we don't have to. There's now it's technically. No, it's just no, we that's do not have. Gonna work. We, it, he just divided it up into four lots of eight, but he's just going to wait an extra hour because we have some leeway. Right. Argentina. So we're going to change it now. Born and raised. Still think I'm the only one to be doing the world. Which world? Lionel Messi. Right? He's Argentinian. Mm. Boy, if I'm wrong on that, someone's going to crush me. But I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. And now he plays in the States for the Miami franchise, which I didn't know existed until he played for them. And he's like 5,000 times better than anybody in the MLS, which, you know, possible. What we do? Oh, we're up on Everest now. Where's Francis and those guys? They, whoa, where's he going? Where's he going? Hang on, Augustus bro. Queen. Augustus Queen. There's someone getting like. Well, it's tough yeah. as well. There you go. I made a really funny meme after last year. Yeah. Um, and it was the three Spider-Men pointing at each other. And one said world's, one said world's toughest, and the other said toughest. Oh. You know, I, so this year, as you know, <clears throat> this was my first year going to OCRWC. And you loved it. I absolutely did. So the obstacle course, OCR, obstacle course racing world championships uh, at Mammoth Mountain just a few weeks ago. It was. Um, it was just a few weeks ago, wasn't and, it? And because there are, of course, it's because it's an actually like a, a world event and people come from all over the world to do it, um, I forget that there's like the European Championships and the European World Championships and these. So I kept telling everyone, are you going to Worlds? Meaning Worlds have a mutter. But everyone from Europe, when they hear Worlds, they think... Worlds. Worlds. Well, when I hear Worlds, and this is a conversation we had last year, when I hear Worlds, I think... Worlds, OCRWC. When I hear toughest, I think toughest in Europe. In Europe, yeah. So I have to hear world's toughest <coughs> for it yes. to be, or WTM. And those of us in the States who do world's toughest mutter just say, are you going to worlds? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I kept getting like people like, going, oh yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. It's so your first it, time. And it was a like, really funny meme. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, and I get it. Thank you. Last year, I probably might, might, would not have got it now as much. It. Now I really get it. Okay, moving on to a drumstick. Drumstick, I assume, cannot be worse than what I just no, had. No, it's really good. The fudgies were I not. I love the fudgy. I was expecting not something. Not the fudgy. I was expecting chocolatey, and I did not get chocolatey at all. I've got really hot Here we face. go. World's toughest mutter. Messi is the goat, I, and I am not. I am Ooh, not sorry. a football guy or soccer guy football 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 I'm not a but uh, uh, I did play it though when I was four years old and five years old wow because back then we was we were too young to play football or baseball so what are you saying that saying football's a rubbish sport for children we are not saying no one said that so it sounded like please don't get me in trouble with the rest of the world did you hear that rest of the world Carlos Ooh, this actually says... smells quite well quite good Ooh. oh can we move that picture in picture so we can watch the um sure, babe. just so we can watch the uh yeah we got <gasps> we got some suffering going on in, on uh on Everest which is oh oh interesting um <laughs> well we both look so happy oh, that, that, is, picture. Oh, that, that look looks that. really bad that does not look good at all we really both old. look like we're suffering it was the best I took out of five it wow do like we have, look that bad oh man exactly. 
Someone took a picture, picture of us videos. and uh, on the live screen. Us, and I agree. It did us no favors. Look old. Oh, we up on the big we screen. We look better when we're looking up, Justin. We look better when we're looking up. Yeah, we're gonna have our our chins are gonna be a little. Yeah, our, our faces are not gonna be so droopy. But I do appreciate the picture. Uh, I I don't because it's made me feel terrible about no, myself. No, we still appreciate the effort. Never take a picture of me again. Thank appreciate you. It. <laughs> Brian. What? I guess just clue. Right, let's have a look at what people are doing. My face yeah. is burning. Alright. Thomas wants to know how many do we got? WTM, Spartan, Trifecta, Adventure, FISO, and next year adding Spartan Ultra World Championships. That's a frank question. Uh, and Trifecta World Championships. Isn't that happening right now? Yeah, this weekend. Uh, tomorrow it is the final. It's the men. It's between Ryland Shadeg and Gregory Basilico. 20 seconds between. And women? I'm not sure. Oh, no, Ryan? Seconds? Mm, nope. Womp womp. I like Ryan. Womp He's like one of my favorite athletes. He's just a good bloke, as the kids say. Mm. Or the English say. Mm. Mm. I not, think much, that's what, not much going on out that's there. That's usually your response when you're <clears throat> not really interested in what I'm saying, but you just like pretend like. <laughs> Ask Dustin. Well, Tell him what you when, just said. When I speak to Fran about something and she goes, mm, mm, I said, I feel like that's what you say when I'm when I'm saying something. You're not really interested in it, but you still want to seem like you're like acknowledging what I'm saying. She was trying to teach me how to do that because I generally don't want to be involved in conversations, but I keep doing it anyway. And she's like, you need to learn the art of the. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I get it. I understand. And I go, ooh, not so. Better change the subject. Because <laughs> Fran is losing. I do that to you a lot. You do. I will be rambling about something I'm very passionate about, and then I'll get up. Usually, Lord of the Rings. It's a lot of different things that she doesn't care about. Yeah. Fran, I think you look good looking, too. Oh, thank you. Wait, two? As that well means they you. think that I'm good looking. Yeah, because everyone yeah, was, everyone was uh, saying how great you are, Man. and I was getting offended because I've been here for 16 hours and 7 minutes. and. They'd be saying hi, friend. Well, they probably, they probably saw me on the Instagram feed. I'm all over that. Just sitting here lonely with my boiling hot burning. Uh, seriously, give me a hand. You are. Oof. Mm. Am I going to get sick or something? Are my you face Ill? is burnt. Yeah, I'm really ill. Oh, fantastic. Here we go. Up, 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 up. Woo! Okay, now do the elbows. You got, no, you got to do the elbows. Elbows, elbows. Pump, there pump, you pump, go. Pump and kick. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And the little hip flasher is flashing. He's got his gaiters on still. Heck yeah. Gator's going to gate. Gator's going to gate. Got a mighty beard. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Give me your hand. And... Oh, oh there you whoop. go. Elbows, elbows, elbows. Knee. They got it right. Elbows, knees, elbows, knees, elbows, knees. Am I yelling? Okay. Oh, boy. This is great. I could watch this feed all night. Well, good luck, Oh. Drumsticks are the best. Will Chung, are you talking drumsticks? Do you mean the ice cream? I'm wondering if that's uh, that's what I'm thinking of when you say that. So, no, I didn't have a, I didn't have a drumstick. I had a. No, no. It was called a. Oh, it was called a drumstick. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay, yeah, my bad. You're right. Patty, Will is, um, I'm assuming you're talking about Will Hicks. Will is, is taking a little break from the broadcast right now. So <clears throat> it's just me, Carlo, and Fran. Well, it was Fran. Fran took off for a couple minutes. She'll be back shortly. So it's, so it's just me. This is great. What do you guys want to talk about? I don't, oh, gosh. Can we? Oh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to run the board. I'd love to put opera, or operation up on the big screen because it's fun watching people get zapped. But, uh. Yeah, I love it. Is that Glenn in the green hat? I don't know. Oh, up on Everest? I'm not sure. We got a little lull in the uh, in the coverage on Everest. I would change the camera to a different feed, but I also don't want to push the wrong button. So let's not do that. We're good. So let me see where we're at with... Leaderboard is all 
the same. Let me look that up. By the way, guys, let us know in the comments, where are you watching from? I know there's a lot of Europeans watching. Uh, I feel like the East Coast of the United States is waking up. So we've got a lot of comments from there. But let me know. Let us know where you're watching from. I'd love to know. So Will's following 15 on leaderboard. Probably a few more. Grant Thompson is in the top 10. James Burton. Yep. James Burton doing well. <laughs> how do you... Oh, how do you make tea? Is it the right way or the wrong American way? I'm going to wait for Fran to come back because uh, I, I'm... I'm positive. I'm not a big tea drinker, but I'm positive that I do it not the way that the English do. And I don't even know how that is, to be honest. So I'll let Fran educate me or Dustin can educate me on that. And uh, would love WTM to leave America and be somewhere. Yeah. You know what? Um, for many years, Dennis, I was like, I was against that about WTM selfishly because I thought it would be, you know, but in hindsight, I would actually love to have WTMB in Europe at some point uh, because that would be a fun uh, fun excuse to get back to Europe because it's been, I haven't been to Europe since 2013. So let's go. Shelly is search, watching from Wallaceburg, Ontario, Canada. <coughs> I love it. Brenda's in New York. This is fantastic. Sandra's in Pittsburgh. Oh, it's Sun oh, it's football Sunday in Pittsburgh. I mean, not for a few more hours, but I love it. I love it. Anka, oh, Anka, watching. Anka, by the way, Anka's watching from Thailand. She lives in Germany, but she's from Thailand. Her, scratch that. <laughs> she is from Germany, but she's in Thailand right now. Uh, but she's making me very jealous because her Instagram feed has been showing all these beautiful beaches that she's been living at for the past, uh, I don't know, at least a week or so. So, Sean, hello. Thank you for watching from the UK. It's so good to hear from all you guys because, uh, you know, we're reporting on the same stuff over and over again for multiple hours with uh, the few camera angles that we have right now. And so, you know, just trying to find a way to break up the monotony. We, Of course... Denmark, I've asked our friends to let us know where they're watching from. Oh, okay. Fran will be back in a minute. I'll, I'll get I'll get going on the tea. I think like we may have we may have covered this tea question last year, but uh, it's always worth having again. Thomas, want to let you know the time difference messes with you. Trifecta Elite wrapped up for women's. Lindsay beat out Esther for the top spot. Whoa, did she? Had a girl. Lindsay B. Esther. I love Lindsay. I, mean, I do like... too. I, I, I love Lindsay. Esther is... Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. Bill's watching from Scotland. Oh. Ooh, the hardest obstacle on course this year. That's... that's. Uh, dingleberries, I think. Dingleberries is definitely giving people uh, trouble. Only Scotland. Which is basically just a... Think about if you've ever done electroshock therapy at, at a Tough Mudder. Think about that rig that they use, just that kind of scaffolding, and then they stretch uh, basically a, a cargo net, like a nylon cargo net over the top, and you just have to, like, fling your way across that. So that's causing a lot of problems for people. So a quick question. We've just had um, yeah. somebody say Grant Thompson watching from Inverness in Scotland. Does that mean Grant Thompson is Scottish? And if so, should we be referring to him as Scottish rather than UK? Or That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that question. Oh, the question came up, um, how do I make my tea? Do I make it the English way or the wrong American way? So the wrong American way is to microwave the water because you don't all have kettles. Oh, oh I see. I would usually, well, I would, I would use like a, like a, yeah, I'd use a pot, like a, a little. You boil the water. Yes. Yeah. And is then, that not okay? And then, yeah, that's the right okay. way. Get very, very I, don't have electric, I don't have an electric kettle. Use it on the stove. Do we need to switch? Do we need to switch because the uh, to the next channel or next thing? No, I'm gonna wait till. We're gonna um, do it on the hour. Yeah, top of the hour because that's that's you know actual four o'clock. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure, so we let people know. Um, uh, 
Callie finished lap 13 uh, just a minute ago, one minute ago. Callie did? Mm -hmm. Not a girl. She'll be heading out on lap 14 soon. Um, oh, so you get your boiling water, and then what do you do with your boiling water? Oh, no, so you're setting it up, so I'm going to tell you what I do, and you're going to say, no, that's not how you do it. Grant is 100% Scottish, so should I be saying S Scotland or UK? That's the question. Um, yeah, so you get your boiling water, then what's the next yes. step? So what I would do, well, everything, our tea all comes, well, not, but the tea that, that I like have access to. He's so comes nervous in, right comes now. In, I am very nervous. Comes in little tea bags. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I would like hang the tea bag in the cup that I'm going to use, and I would pour the water into the cup, and then let it seep for a while, and then do a little stirry stir, and then pull the bag out and wrap it around my spoon, and kind of give it a little squeeze to get the little excess out, mm -hmm. and then can make it a bit better. And then stir that, mm -hmm. put a little maybe a little bit of sugar in, depending what kind Did of tea like it is. It? Yeah, and then I drink it. So here we go. This is a good explanation of how badly uh, sometimes tea can be made. Americans put the tea bag in cold water with what the what? Yeah. With milk and sugar, then heat it in a microwave. Yeah, gross. I've never heard that. Okay. When you microwave water, it just doesn't get hot enough. Well, if you do like three minutes, but then it's gonna like bust kill you. The cup. And it's, oh, yeah, it's gonna. Here we go. Oh, twinkle toes, twinkle to a. Uh, Oh, twinkle toe. Oh, I believe in you, bud. Oh, dance it, baby, dance it. That's 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 you. Yeah. No. Oh, Ooh. I believe in you. Oh, oh, we got the wiggly, wiggly middle part. The wiggly, wiggly. Oh, 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 he's feeling confident. Oh, yeah. So, just for those watching at home, it's it's really hot. The wind is completely died down. It's uh, 14 you say degrees. it's really hot? It's not cold. It's 14 degrees. But I wouldn't call that hot. Well, I would. I would for, call that. For three oh. in the morning. Uh, world stuff is mutter. Okay. Okay. Fair. Where are you headed, Jason? I see your camera's on. I'm doing some and medical. Oh, okay. Can I get some milk in there, please? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Ooh, <sighs> pardon my yawn. You are pardoned. I mean... It's three in the morning, so I guess I'm a little. And I've been up since probably six in the morning. Yesterday. I slept so badly last Seven night. Seven in the morning yesterday, maybe. I just uh, is that the immortal coffee? What's so happening? You, you don't have a kettle. That's not okay. A lot of Americans don't have kettles. It's I have just, a. I have a. You have one that you like a stovetop kettle. The kind of like an electric kettle. If you want to talk to me and you are on my camera, very first one. Yeah. Slider, just go all the way up. And then we, you, you can hear us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh my god, 14, that's our daytime summer temp. Okay. Exactly, that's what I'm saying, it's Thank really you. warm. 14, that's that's what we get in the summer. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, okay. But like, if if I was going out tomorrow and the forecast said it's going to be 57 degrees, I wouldn't be like, ooh, it's going to be hot. I'd be like, that's cold, I'm wearing a jacket. Or a hoodie. Or a something. Yeah, I'd, I'd wear like a flannel. Yeah. So wait, there's more in there, there's a refresher. Refresh is really good, why don't we try that? Okay. You're just trying to gum my mouth up. Yeah, I'm trying to pull your teeth out. Yeah, totally. Can you put me on one of them? Either the main or the big Yeah, one. we're going to... Jason's heading out. Either one. And there he is. Oh, I can hear him. Hi, Jason. Bye, can Jason. Can they hear him, too? I can't hear him. I think we've got different oh, headphones. I heard. Oh, you can hear me? Awesome. Yes. Carlo can. All right. We don't have a kettle. Here. 14 is a summer daytime time? Kind of weird the That's Chris. So, be not so milk and the tea is quite common? Uh, Yeah, uh, they do say in Earl Grey you should have lemon, but I mean, nobody does that. Oh, I like lemon in my tea. No, I don't. I like milk. Okay. It's disgusting. Julia's listening from Troy, New York. Uh, Michelle, yes, dingleberries is over the water. It's not very deep. Um, it's probably only about four feet of water, so people are having to wash their ankles when they when they do drop. So, but yes, it's over water. So, and there yes, we go. Twinkle, That's Jason. Twinkle Toes is a multi-attempt. Oh, that's Fiore. There's Fiore. 
I think a lot of most obstacles are actually multiple attempts. Um, uh, of the grappler, though, you only get three, three. You get three attempts, and if you don't do it on the third by the third attempt, then you have to take the penalty, which, as I've mentioned numerous times, is the one penalty you don't you really want to don't do. want to take. Uh, that the stakes. Oh, well, there he goes. Yeah. Oh, there you eagles. go. Let's have some noodles. Let's, let's turn Chase and Sound up and let's be quiet for a second so we can hear what's going out on in the pit. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we got Josh Fiore eating his noodles, chugging some water. Intriguing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> got some medicine going in. I'll ask you so, so I don't bother Josh, but how's uh, how long are pit times looking like? Couple minutes. Couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. And it's hard to shove it down in quickly. Cup of noodles does go down pretty quick. If it's not too hot. Yeah, that's Trading out hand headlamps. Get fresh batteries. That's good. Got a neoprene top. Looks like just compression shorts and compression socks. Wearing some gloves that can't tell so yeah, what's going on with those gloves. Uh, he's just guzzling noodles. They looked really hot. Uh, you let's me turn Jessica. Yeah, I just muted us so didn't hear us snuffling in the background. A couple of questions coming in. Is that three attempts to throw and climb or three attempts to do it all as in two throws and one attempt to climb? Well, to be honest, you don't actually need the rope to climb. So I would be surprised if anyone was failing the climb. It's right. three throws. Uh, make a top ten. Yes, sir. There you go. As you mail top ten, <laughs> 80 miles. Michael, shit, shit. Ah, it must have been when I just scooted off briefly. Finished lap 16 at 4.11. Yes, that must have been when I just uh, disappeared for a while. Mm -hmm. Austin Azar is out on lap 16 snogging dirt so he's quite a way behind and josh fiore has finished lap 15 so he'll be starting lap 16 soon so kind of josh is there yeah we just saw him he's out there like a, a lap behind we'll do the work in a minute oh, let's just finish watching josh now we're on the other side of josh okay we saw josh's right side now we're seeing josh's left side He's still chugging water. That is a good pit crew member. He's chugging his noodles. He's got a, like a Red Bull or something there, it looks like. Some kind of energy drink. He took some type of medication. He's eating really hot noodles. Yep. Arr, arr, arr. Why are um, instant noodles so popular? Because they're cheap. Oh. Oh, you mean for like events sure, like this? Yeah. Because they can be prepared quickly. And don't they don't need it doesn't take a lot you know you can microwave them, um, yeah. And there's a load of sodium which is also which is also helpful. So yeah, but it's also a staple of like uh, a lot of college students. Yeah, I'm sure it's that way in Europe as well. Maybe I, I mean, don't know. They're not that cheap in the UK. Oh, they're like you can get like a whole flat of them for like a few dollars. Oh, like um, a pack is like pound to a pound 50 i'd say which is like is that expensive it would be like one dollar seventy for one uh, serving uh, which is okay. which is not expensive but it's right, also right. not like oh, we're doing the, dirt cheap. the cognitive checks those are always fun mm. they'll say like point to the bear point to the what is that a horse point to the horse point to the turtle point to the teddy bear point to the cow point to josh fuel running off to the next lap let's have a look at the women Women time. Women time. Look at Chris. How was her last lap time? She She's going to check that out. Yeah. Last lap time was 147, so she lost 13 <laughs> minutes on her last lap. Lost 13 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let's have a look at Callie. Her last lap was 143. Ooh. Ooh spicy. Callie's last lap was faster than uh, um, Chris's last lap. 
Oh, I thought I saw pigtails. Oh, no, that is not. That is, you could have, but. Yeah. Pick the giraffe. Pick the giraffe. Uh, did shit head back out? Let's have a look. That's a great question. Uh, not yet. He's not headed back out yet. So it's his, a long pit stop. His uh, last lap was five minutes slower than the lap before, which has been his not his biggest gap so far. He did that between lap eight and nine, but his biggest gap in a while, and he's still in the yeah. pit. And yeah, his pits have been around at the start, 40 seconds, a minute, a minute and 40. Five minutes he had. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Around the time he had a big gap, he also had a long uh, lap as well. Yeah, pit. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're back. Solve that equation. Is that, that's just, that's just math. Like addition. The mud will wash off. We are all winners. That's cute. I love it. I will say, coming in. Oh, just going back to what it's. Yeah, we didn't say they're very long, so let's just have another look. Okay. But these cognitive checks, uh -huh. like as it gets later and later, and like while they're not difficult at all, like sometimes when you come in, I used to get a little anxiety. Then I'm like, oh, open up, do the math one. Well, do you know what happened to me last night? Uh, I mean, kind of tired because traveling from the UK. Sure. Also taking a lot of uh, American medication for having a cold. Oh, that we were at the dinner, and I just like went to pick up my drink and just knocked it over all over my phone, and then I like kind of panicked looking for napkins, and then I got the napkins and started to mop up the drink rather than my phone. Then I picked up my phone, dropped it on the floor, picked it up again, dropped it on the floor again. Like I was just a mess. I was like, there's nothing wrong with me. That's was, a lot of. I was cognitively fine. I was just a mess. Yeah. So yeah, I can see why it could be a bit worrying. That guy doesn't look. Should we send him up? Here we go. And it's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, local stuff too, because, you know, it's all technical. Yeah. It is. Just about every other lap. Oh, I think they were listening in to our conversation. Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch this right Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Here. I'm gonna come around so they can get you in a shot with that in the background. Yeah, the recent Oreo. Yeah. Hey, hey it's that thick crew. <laughs> you're on, you're on, you're gonna be on the screen in a second. Good right, <laughs> time to be down here. Oh yeah. Yo. What's up, man? How's it going? So uh, it's a little rough. Yeah? These uh, uh, penalty loops are kind of out of control. Oh. For someone who's run 35 miles, I've run 41.6 miles. Woo! Bonus. So, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, baby. I, I've checked a lot of them out to just be like, you know, run them so they can see what it's like and yeah. stuff. They are long. They're rough, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, even with this, like, I'm not doing every penalty loop. And I'm still just racking them up. Yeah. Please. Yeah, who's out there not doing any penalties? Do we know? Maybe Austin. <laughs> Maybe Austin. Chris is probably doing minimal penalties. If she's doing a few, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Austin was the only one who I had known had like cleaned up for a while. Like, I think a man beast. Is the uh, <laughs> is he a British guy? The um guy that was in first for a long? Is he still in first? He's still in first. He's still quite handily. Okay. Um, I so somebody he said that he hadn't done, done any. Danish. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's done. He's used a couple of bands mm. for sure. Uh, well, that's okay. Yeah, that's I don't. I don't know. So I haven't. That's what bands are yeah. for sure. Yeah. I did notice he was struggling on neuro just because he didn't speak English. Ah, geez. which is a disadvantage. Yeah. I don't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're like, where's bears. a turtle? And he pointed to a giraffe. <laughs> he doesn't know what a turtle. Is. Yeah, yeah. Whatever turtle is in Danish, right? Yeah. Right, how are you feeling standing here? You getting chilly? Up, I'm okay. Are you getting chilly? Uh, no. no. I have a I have a neoprene vest on underneath this, so I'm I'm holding the heat in pretty okay. Nice. Are you getting warm in the non water sections? Yeah, very yeah. much so. And I'm I'm doing my oh, such my a hard balance all the time too. Yeah. Like if it gets a little too warm and my hands are sweating, I'll open them up. But 
I'm just keeping them on. I'd rather be warm. Than, like like Messi said. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather stay a little bit warmer than I need to. Yeah. Than to get on the other side, because that was what did me in last year. Oh, yeah. That is a bad place. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to hang out there at all. So and after the first time I did the uh, melting point, I was like, just going in this ice water. I'm I'm not gonna do it without having neoprene all over my body again. There's not any more ice there now, is it? They ran out of bags. Yeah, so that's, that's what I thought. Yeah. It's not cold. <laughs> yeah, the water's so, cold. For sure. The water's so cold, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little too hefty to fit through that tube, too. <laughs> it's, it's all brute strength of just pulling myself through it. Mm. There's no rope. Yeah. Because you're just laying down with yeah. your legs flat, huh? Yep. There's no crawl to it, man. It's just... I can up. crawl. I can fit in there like this. <laughs> nope. Not me. I'm, I'm like laying down in the water to get in there to begin with. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> but you're still out here. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm a, I mean, like I said, up here, I'm fine. Right? Right. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not, you know, I'm not delirious. Everything's fine. That's a good place. But it's like, I've seen, I was, I've seen both of those. Right. I was craving for like two full laps. <laughs> and it was like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to push through this and then hopefully it goes away. Yeah. There you go. Now, I sat down for 10 minutes and tried to stand up. That was rough. <laughs> yeah. That's, you don't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> but sitting down is don't like do that. sit down for it's a while. Yeah. Especially on the ground, like all the way down. Feet are okay. You can get up, but like. So when are you gonna head back out? Probably to do one last lap. Uh, I'll probably go out with like Hannah and Corey and the little group. Yeah, I gotta keep going through the night. <laughs> you got time for fifty? Easy. I I know I got time. I, the problem is that fifty equals like sixty-two. <laughs> and that would be the furthest I've ever gone. Butter, That's awesome, man. I'm not, I'm not doing a hundred k plus. <laughs> why not? Obstacle. Hey, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> you could. You That's could. Uh, I don't know. I'm, the plan right now, mentally, is like I'm gonna wait a little while, try and get more food in me, and try and relax a little bit. I put on new shoes and socks, and my feet are mm. dry, and they're pretty massacred right now from all the water. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once four or five rolls around, we'll kind of be like, all right, let's just let's walk it in. One more. I think and I'm then the sun will be up, and then you can yep. keep on going. Yep. Bring it home inside. Right. So the sun will come up 6.30 now. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the future. Yeah. Right. We're current 6.30. Right. Yeah. Because it was 7.30. Yes. So. How's it going, man? Pretty good. My yep. feet are feeling that same thing. Yep. I've just been putting a lot of lube in them because... Uh, you know, where it's, everything starts creasing and it really starts rubbing right there. The lube's helping keep that away. And just taking it on. Some stationary cameras. Mm-hmm. What's it? Yeah, stationary cameras out there. Oh, yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah, we got five of them. Oh, wow. Including, okay. you know, including the one at the finish. Yeah, yeah. That's I awesome. think they're all five up right now, too. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I mean, that's, exactly what that's what's switching out batteries for. and making sure they're all running. And yeah. yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what people have been asking for. So. Yeah. It's, it's now, tricky. Right but now, everyone's looking at, like, just a balance beam with nobody getting on it. Yeah. You know, or whatever. Well, that's why we're trying to find the obstacles that people are still doing. Yeah. Which there aren't many. Yeah, no one's doing glue. No one's skipping glue. That's true. Yeah. It's yeah, we got, really we got one there. I mean, there's no penalty for it. But you can use a band. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That, I think loop. What other one would I say? No one's skipping. We got one there. Twinkle toes. People are skipping. Uh, twinkle toes. I, well, you still gotta get in the water. Sure. But a lot of people are still trying it. I think. Um, not operation. A, not you got a one heavy, out. friendly person or uh, obstacle. You get to the middle of it. It's, yeah. Oh yeah. It wobbles real lot. Low there, Matt. One's on operation. And I forget where the other one is, to be honest. Everyone's taking the penalty out operation, too. Because it's so easy. Yeah, really? That little exercise band, I put it on, and I can still run exactly the same. Probably it affects me zero percent. <laughs> they're, like, they're like dollar store bolts. Like, yeah, I, I thought you'd be putting on like the ultra type one. Nope. That would be so great. Nope. <laughs> like, I could grab it and just go, no problem. <laughs> so, put it around my knees, and I could just. Run. At, this, actually. at this point in time, my gate's only like this far yeah. anyway. Yep. <laughs> it probably would be the same. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the last time I did it, I did feel the massage of my quad just a little bit. That bottom mm. head, I'm kind of okay uh, with it. Yeah, it's a benefit. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with it. Hey, I want to 
Come here. Yeah, what's up? I want to see if we can get oh, like us in the camera, picture? on the camera. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's going it's, to it's, it's, it's take about 30 seconds. <laughs> so it'll, it'll come up here in a second. Speaking. That's uh, on the YouTube feed, so it should be about 30 seconds. Here it goes. Oh. It's a bright hard to tell, but it's there. Throw it out. Yeah, well, it's just my big head in the bright light there. <laughs> oh, man. All right, you guys. All right. We'll see y'all. Ooh. All right. Thanks for that, Jason. Thank you, Jason. I'll so, a uh, bit of an update for the people. Yes. Uh, Michael has not started his lap 17 yet. He finished lap 16 at 11 minutes past the hour. It's now 35 Ooh. minutes past the hour. 20 plus minute pit stop. Perhaps yeah. he's just changing some gear, or perhaps... It's a long pit stop. This is the difficult time of night. It's definitely it's the most really, difficult really time difficult of night. really, really difficult time of night. Yep. From now until the, the sun starts cresting on the horizon, it's like... And we've got three hours and 14 minutes till the sun comes super up. Super tough. Yeah. Once the, sun, once the sun starts cracking a little bit, you get a little bit of a recharge, right? You get a little bit of a boost. And, but, uh, yeah, this is definitely kind of the doldrums portion of the evening um, there's very few people on course usually you're spending a lot of time by yourself you get to obstacles and there's nobody else there there's no one to help if you need help so yeah it can be a really really kind of if anyone somebody said that his girlfriend was here pissing for him if anybody knows his girlfriend uh nikolai if you know his girlfriend which i assume you can see what's going on let us know it's okay if he's yeah. going out again because he's been running so well. He's been incredible. Thank you, Tamara, by the way, for the compliment. That's very kind. It is very kind. Thank you. We appreciate you watching and uh, commenting and all being nice as well. So we've got top three women there. Let's do it. In um, bum, 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 65 bum. miles. Um, there we go. Chris Riglowski, what? She's so fast. She's so fast. She's so Let's see where she is. Uh, swinging tips. She was seen at um, about ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago, and where is obstacle eight? And where is Callie? Callie was last seen at Snogging Dirt, which is obstacle number one, I believe. Which is obstacle number four. Four. So she's right only now. actually four obstacles behind. Um, which is not. I mean, that's a lot. Well, I suppose a bit more because she didn't pass it at the same time. She passed it later. Ah, okay. A few minutes okay. later. But still, she's really keeping up. She really is. She's All it would along. take would be a long pit from Chris for Callie to overtake. Yes, which I don't think you're going to get. I don't think you're going to get either. I think Chris is absolutely locked in and is just like in like machine mode at this point. Well, she's been that way all day. Who are we kidding? But even when she comes to you see her, there's not a lot of, I mean. Well, she's... let's say this. Uh, Chris's lap 13 was 147. Callie's lap 13 was 143. Oh, my math says that's four minutes faster. Uh huh. And I am an engineer. I so am. look at that. I can subtract that number from that number and get a different number. Here we go. What's Jason got? He is, uh, oh, we're still, he's trying to do the, the picture in picture board thing. And I don't know. It's just too bright to show up mm. on the phone. But into the oh, that fella's had a long day. Good job. Haven't we all? Yeah, we really have. We really have. I had a good head of steam there for a good portion of the day, and this little steam engine is all run out of steam. Mm. Okay. Shoot to the end. Say again. Poodle poodling. Yes, I don't know what you just said. Poodle poodle. Just poodling. What is poodling? Okay, English people. Okay. Tell me poodling. Poodling. Tell me you know what poodling is. Let's start with that. Poodling. Oh, someone had said. Uh, did you go down a little bit or no? Five stars. Five stars. Thank you, Tamara. Pink refresher. What is that? Uh, is that a candy? 
That's so. Um, I don't want it, it is. I can't just keep trying candy. So that's a refresher. That's oh, a yellow that refresher. Oh, I had a. I don't know what flavor I had. Or then what you've color. got. You've actually got sour refreshers. No, I don't know. But we don't have pink refreshers. My body. In this my. my He's body not a big is, fan of swizzles. It's just telling me that I've had enough candy for a while. Dawn is like crack, she says. That's very true. She just switched to the tablet now because the rest of the family are up. I like it. Family affair up and over Everest. This is like, man, I can. It's a different, it's a different thing right now. Look at the Everest. People are still going over Everest. Oh, we got someone on, on uh, Twinkle Toes. We got two people on Twinkle Toes. Look at that. There's a rush. A mad dash across Twinkle Toes. Did anybody see that besides us? Oh, I know. I was just looking at someone in the medical area. It looked like they were having something on my leg. There we go. No, nobody saw that. They see the live output. Oh, well, that's a shame. Mm. Can we bring that up? How do, what button is that? Uh, yeah. What do you want to bring up? That? Uh, Twinkle Toes. That's, oh, that's not that's like a yeah. There we go. We got someone on Twinkle Toes as we speak. And that middle section gets really wobbly. So. I like the blue refreshes. The blue? Uh, oh. The one you just had. What flavor is the blue? Blue flavor. Oh, very well. Very good. There they go. They made it. Oh, look at a little shadowing effect. That's cool. So it turns out sitting in a chair after you've been up for a long time is not really good for your ability of staying awake. Oh my God, I am falling asleep. I don't remember. Do you know what? Last year I had coffee. I just went to get some coffee from the pit area. They didn't have any. I was telling you the other day I like American coffee because it kind of keeps me awake. Yeah. But they didn't have any, so I'm just on the tea. But There's no the coffee, coffee over there right now? Going. And I'm there's, kind of sitting here like, oh. There's no coffee right now over there? No. How is that possible? They have... Just is it. I could really use some coffee right now. I know. I could use a proper coffee. Not proper, proper coffee. A, no, I a, just need like... A long coffee. A coffee with like a little cream and sugar would be wonderful. But that was fun, Jason. Thank you. All right, let's get some... Has to, uh, uh, Michael gone out yet? Oh, good question. Nope, not yet. Still not at. Come on, Michael. We Michael, you you. okay? Let's uh, let's hear from uh, anybody who knows Michael if he's okay. Woo. Hang in there, Fran. No. Michael. Michael's still in the pit. Yeah. He's been in the pit for since ten past. It's now yeah. twenty two, so half an hour. Can we switch to um uh, there we go. Um, it's really hard because it's got an O in it that's got a thing on it. And it just, oh. I don't know how to bring up that letter. Oh, yeah. But the results, he's, he's the one in lead. Michael, shit, shit. Shut. 80 miles, he came in, finished his last lap and didn't go back out again. Oh, I thought I heard someone say my name. Say my name, say, say my, my name. name. Is that, is that SWV? Uh, or was that Destiny's Child? I thought it was Destiny's Child. Remember SWV? They were not as popular as Destiny's Child. Uh, they were no, Sisters with Voice. Remember them? I don't remember any of their songs, but... No, I don't think I've ever heard of them. Destiny's Child is like where Beyonce came from, right? Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, the other two women ever do... Did they become anything? Uh, one, of them didn't. one of them tried to have a bit of a solo career. She released a song that was okay, but that was about it. What were their names? Michelle Williams. I don't know the other ones. That's... I didn't even know that the one was Beyonce until many years later when someone said, Do you know Beyonce came from Destiny's Child? And I was like, I did not know that. Destiny's not, Child. What up in the house? Not really my, my style of music, but... Yeah. I did go see a great show a couple weeks ago. You ever heard of The Bouncing Souls? No? Yeah. The Bouncing Souls? Are you familiar with them? No. Yeah. They're a New Jersey band. They're a little punk rock band. Been around for about 35 years. You ever heard of Bad Cop, Bad Cop? 
They're a Southern California punk band. Been around since the. Just, just telling you where I was a couple weeks ago. It's a great show. It was a great show. I'm just saying, yeah, I just need full. I had to go by myself though because my. Late guest, friend. My guest got COVID. Oh no. So she was unable to go, but. Uh, but I've gotten to playing shows by myself over the years. It was a good time. I do love myself some punk rock music. I'm not gonna lie. Do you? Yeah. Green Day announced it's like the old. New, Green Day announced the new tour. I can't wait. I'm gonna try to buy tickets next Wednesday. Oh well. So Glastonbury tickets were meant to go on sale this weekend. So we would have been trying to buy them from a field at like well round about now I guess. Yeah. And they actually then delayed the sale for the next two weeks because the people hadn't realised about registration and whatnot. So yeah, I'll be trying to buy tickets for that. I'm not nice. for a couple of years. Who's, uh, who's headlining Glastonbury? Uh, they won't stay for a while, yeah. Oh, you have to buy tickets not knowing who's going to be there? Yeah, so I was talking about this the other day because um, uh, OCWC released tickets 2024 and people were like, oh, but you've not completely told us where exactly it is. And I'm like, the thing is, it's like Glastow. If you want to go, you want to go. It's good. You know you're going to have a good time. I don't care which definitely... artist is performing. It's going to be amazing. Same thing. Okay, it's See, be a good event. With the, I mean, I, I'm familiar with the festival, and I've watched performances from people at that festival, but I have not. Uh, yeah, it sells okay. out in like two or three minutes. Moments. Yeah, and there's oh. like 250,000 tickets, and it's always great. That's where everybody that. camps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Huge. That looks fantastic. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's um, it is Green Day, mm -hmm. and they're playing with Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. And a band called Rancid. 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 You know, you know Rancid, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're I a band. Like, you said it like, like I mean, she may not. Know, but, I don't know who Rancid. No, she, are. I knew she. No, Rancid. I don't know Rancid. Rancid. And they're actually. I don't know how how they swung this, but there's a, the opening opening band is an all female band called the Linda Lindas, and I'm actually going to see them next week at a small club in San Francisco. I've never heard and of Linda I'm Lindas. I'm really excited. And how good for them. What a great break that is for them to get that gig. I don't know how they got it. But uh, are, are you a Green Day guy, Jason? They have some good stuff. Yeah, I'm not I, like a super fan. But fair. I am. Stuff. I am a super so, fan. I'm uh, not afraid to admit it. Austin Azar. Yes. At 4.40. Oh, OCR, yes, correctly. Yes. Which was seven minutes ago. Was at Melting Point, which is obstacle number 12. Ooh. And it's getting dicey. Michael is still in the pit. This could be a thing. This could be a thing. This is good. I like excitement. I like I like people overtaking other people. Michael has been steady, 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 steady. Do you know where Michael's night. pitting? Could we like send somebody to see if he's like alive? No, but I keep asking. Has anybody is? got um Oh, Augustine is going to sleep. Well, thank you for staying with us all night. No he's our uh, he's our uh, our uh, Argentinian. Yeah. Um yeah, if anybody knows anything you, about Michael and how he's doing, please update us. The Germans are here. Bum, 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 bum. I was like, what the heck are you going on about? Oh, well, it's someone coming in there from Germany. So there's no coffee, huh? Man. Instant only. Well, that's, I mean, it's, it does the job. As it doesn't, it was really as gross. As as cream and sugar, I can. Even just even just sugar, I get. Oh, that stuff oh, is. Yeah. That stuff is too. That stuff will knock your lights out. Oh, too I don't much. actually like the taste of coffee. I just like coffee with cream and sugar. I don't like coffee in there. Do they I'm, put any cream I'm and just, sugar in it? I don't know. It was pre-mixed, so maybe. Okay. Was it maybe, white? Maybe on sugar. Uh, the it wasn't black. Oh, it's I that immortal. Okay. Immortal. I m m o r d l. The immortal. Immortal. Yes, good for them though. They they actually they gave Coach a little bit of sponsorship dollars to help create his dream up there, which by just, the way, just better is, not pay for it. Pretty crazy. Uh, I don't think they not to the level that he has done this year. I think he wanted something bigger. Um, it's a real shame he can't show it off. Bigger. Than, I know. Oh, that's right. I heard there's like a trigger warning. Yeah. So we had it going. We had a couple of messages on the on YouTube saying, yo, can we get a trigger warning for this? And we're like, yeah, sure. It's not it pretty me. wild. Uh, we're like, sorry, didn't think about it. Absolutely. Yeah, but then I wouldn't have, uh, yeah. Giles and Chris came over. They were like, we can't have it on the big screen. It's just too much. And I was like, oh, I didn't think about it. I would not have thought about screen. that. Yeah. So we need to show it for a little while. But... Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's very strobey. 
Um, and I can see how people will be worried about that. Oh, we've got someone on the struggle bus. Michael's still not started. Christina is at lap uh, 14. She's at melting point. She's just, she is just going through. That is obstacle number 12. Who's that? Chris. Chris, of course. And uh, uh, Callie and uh, obstacle four. That's where she was last time we checked, I feel like, but. Perhaps. Did not update. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Chris had a six minute Ooh, 23. Oh, I saw um, that was a zappy zap. Hit. All right, we've got nobody at Twinkle Toes. Is that people walking around Twinkle Toes? Yeah, taking the penalty. Yeah. Watch this. Boom. Boom. Power of technology. Hearing that water crashing down reminds me of Disneyland. Does it? Why? Because uh, they have a lot of waterfalls and stuff at Disneyland. Nice. Unlike the Matterhorn, which is my favorite ride. Turns out it's an actual mountain in Switzerland. I'm well aware of that. I'm, yeah, I am too, actually. I'm just joking. I wanted to go see it when I was in Switzerland, but uh, it was too foggy. Oh, really? It's my. Yeah. It's one of my favorite places in the world. Switzerland is beautiful. Oh, I was there oh, where, where that mountain is. I was there for three weeks. Go there all the time. What? You go there all the time. <clears throat> for real? Yeah, it's for real. It's very expensive. Are you rich? Nope. Clearly you are. Nope. You've been to Zermatt or whatever it is? Or Zermatt. Yeah. Zermatt. 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 Love it. It's beautiful. I did not get to go there. You should. Although, you should I will say this. When I was in Switzerland, the one, the, my one takeaway from Switzerland is I fell in love with Gruyere cheese. Oh, Gruyere. It, yeah. it is now my favorite cheese in the it's world. It's so stinky. It still tastes good. But, uh, but I don't know. Come on. In the realm of stinky cheeses. I'm going to go through pictures of you now. It is not. Oh. Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Oh. Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Get out Matterhorn. of here. Matterhorn. What a beautiful day. What time of year was that? Uh, that was Christmas. That was also Christmas. I was there in. Uh, not this year. I was there in no October, November of 2016. And it was not. It was. That was summer. It was it's cloudy. beautiful in the summer. Is that a monorail you were on? Um, yeah. No, that. Oh, that's just that's a, a river. Oh, that's just a weird angle. Okay. That and the gorgeous. snow. That was not summer. No, that was winter. So yeah, oh, I love that's it. beautiful. Isn't it expensive though? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, uh, it's worth it. That. <laughs> yes, I was there for three weeks and I never got a chance. But I did get to go to. I took a train to the town of Gruyere and went to the little um, cheese making facility. What do you call that? What's How that did called? you get onto that? What do you mean? How did you get onto the mountain? Onto the mountain. Talking about the mountain. Oh, because uh, there are the waterfalls reminded me of Disneyland, ah. and my fa one of my favorite rides at Disneyland is the Matterhorn. Is the Matterhorn. Well, because Butterhorn. Oh, let's go. Is named after. Yes. Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Look at that. It all comes full Which circle. Which is, and I just don't know why it's not sponsored by like the Swiss Tourism Board. <laughs> Seriously, right? Or last year I was saying Toblerone, but they've had to take the Matterhorn off Toblerone. Or the good. They did. Apparently, they need to take it off. It's like one of these European rules because of where it's made or something. Oh, for is my the face as swollen as it looks? That are holy. You're not swollen at all. Look, like, look at me. Look, 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 no, this look, camera. This cheeks. camera adds inches to our faces. You um, keep telling yourself that. I will. Oh. Super chat. What is the two pounds thing? Two, two euros. euros. Don't know what that means. Jens, Thomas, Amram, and Stefan, rock on! Rock on! I don't know what that flag is because I can't. Look up to the pirate flag. That, black. Yeah. I can't, it's black. just black. You know has a really cool, um, a really cool flag, like a national flag? Wait. It's Albania. Albania? Yeah. Why? It's like red flag, but it's got these black, like, double eagles. It's just, it's very medieval looking. You're very medieval looking. Thank you. Um, I'm very clean Michael has still not gone out. I'm worried about Michael. And Austin is at Spunky Monkey Obstacle 16 oh, of 20. Things are a changing. They're changing things so Things are fast. a changing. My lower back is changing into a back that doesn't feel good. So I'm going to move my chair up so I can sit up. Oh, He's scooching. Better. I'm sitting right on the edge of my chair on my yeah, butt bones. Yeah, I was bones. doing that. And on your butt bones? On, on your coccyx? No, no, no. My butt bones. Oh, butt bones. Fair, fair. 
I um. How can there constantly be so many people at Augustus Gloop and nobody Aww, at any Sandy other obstacle? Sandy says we both look great. Sandy uh, noted that I have brown eyes. She did. She wants to date you. I don't think she wants to date you. Sandy, do you want to date him? <laughs> oh, he's getting all embarrassed now. He's getting a little bashful. I just... You know what? Looking at Augustus Gloop, I'm like... I think it looks like fun. But you know it's not... I know it's not, but like, I just went up the backside of Mutterhorn earlier to get some footage, and there's a cargo net on that, and it's actually angled like a 45 degree angle, and that was giving me a little bit of trouble. And I'm like, now imagine being brutally tired, having to go straight up Ugh. and get water doused on your face the whole time. So, this is the point where I'm like, how do people keep going? Because yeah. if I had the option to sleep right now, I absolutely would. And that's a must complete. You know, that's the thing. There's no penalty here. It's like you either pass it or. You are no longer racing. Mm-hmm. So. Here comes a group of fellas. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> Sandy says yes. Okay, now I'm going to be really bad. Um, Good morning from Scotland. Good morning from Scotland. Don't pronounce that username. What? Suck. Oh. I did. I didn't know I heard exactly what you don't said do the thing. until don't I started. And I'm like, oh, that's what she said. She said, don't do the thing you're about to do. And I was like, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Cool. Yeah. Unless Michael's lost his uh, timing check. But even so, that would mean he, uh, <gasps> oh my gosh. Sandy wants to make me pancakes in Denmark. I would love to go to Denmark, actually. I'm not going to lie. I know very little about Denmark other than that's where Leon's from. It's pretty flat. Is it? Yeah. That's okay. I don't need elevation to have a good time. It's just, <laughs> that's a weird thing to say out loud. That's but, all uh, I know about it. It's kind of flat. Okay. Yeah. I'll be honest. If you ask me, Norway. like I'm familiar Sweden. with Denmark, I and I know it's like, because I used to watch a lot of World War II stuff, but it's like, I feel Did like. Denmark play a large part in World War II? Well, there's, well, things going through there, right? But I don't know. Like what? But I feel like. What went through Denmark? Like battles. Did it? I'm actually probably thinking of Belgium. Yeah, mips. But they have waffles too. Yeah, but she's talking about pancakes. Oh, and that's more. Uh, and Denmark. I am, I am, I am tripping up on all kinds of. Things. However, I let's will say get this. a rabbit to his pit. I'm guessing you're talking about Michael. We don't know where his pit is. To be perfectly honest. Augustine, I thought you were going to bed. Yeah. Look at that. August says good night, everybody. Then he's like, actually, hold on. Let's. He's trying to task us with things. Oh, Ooh, tell me more about this, Carlo. Well, this is usually where Will talks about, but you can be a member of our OCR Report Patreon. And what is it, $5 a month? It's the lowest membership. But the if you lowest want to give membership more, is $5 a too. month. Bring it back up. Tell yeah, me maybe. more things about it, please, Fran. Well, so the OCR Report do a lot of work providing OCR coverage from fantastic photographs from Jack Gorris to... 27 hour coverage like this and it is all privately funded and you know we kind of want it to continue absolutely want it and to it's quite difficult for it to continue with uh, very little money so if you want to support it and you enjoy watching this live feed and you enjoy watching our coverage which is pretty much weekend week out and sometimes sometimes twice on a weekend yes uh then join us on patreon uh, at the OCR report on Instagram. Use a little QR code there. Scan that little QR code there. Um, who's our model? Uh, Must be one of our Patreon members. Uh, yeah. Will can tell me exactly who that was. And yeah, support us, help us, give us a uh, give us a leg up here. Uh, I believe Soren. Flat. Like then the please explain how come we have a mountain literally named the mountain. Listen, I'm just going from what Leon told me because. And people in Denmark say it was flat. Yeah, take it up the with elevation. Leon. How do you say his last name? Kofod. Kof, 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 yeah. Anderson. Who's probably in Greece right now, right? For the Spartan trifecta. I don't think he was, no. Oh. Not that I saw. Should we get the finish line going as well? Yeah, let's get over. Well, minutes will switch over, guys. We'll be ah, switching over to the next so channel in, two in minutes, one We'll be switching minute. over to the other, the next feed. In a it's minute. less than a minute. Well, it was so two five minutes seconds. when I started. No, it wasn't. Now it's a minute. It was 40 seconds. Yep. We're going to be switching over to the next channel 
on the OCO OCR or the OCR reports, which is 480 foot tall. Okay. That was Butterhorn is 480 feet tall. No, it's not. Okay, Jason's going to move us over to the other uh, YouTube Rudy. channel because this we've hit our eight-hour maximum limit for this one. We're going to jump over, so please jump over with us. Please jump over with us. We'd love to keep you with us, and we want to know more about where everybody is from. Hour seventeen of the uh, live stream. I don't know if I could actually point to Denmark on a map of Europe. I could in seventh grade because it was an assignment that we had. But I think right now I'd have a hard time finding Denmark. But you know what? For pancakes, I would find it. I'll make you pancakes. Two offers for pancakes.